The Berkeley County Youth Fair Board would like to thank the following sponsors of this year's Youth Fair. Blue Ribbon Level Sponsors, WVU Medicine, CBP Enterprises, LLC, Valley Health Marketing and Communications, Equitable Advisors, Nicholas Abereg, and Gantz Excavating. Premium Ribbon Level Sponsors, Panhandle Homes of Berkeley County and Tropical Sioux. Reserve Champion Level Sponsors, Panhandle Dumpsters, LLC, and Tad's Dairy Barn. And Grand Champion Level Sponsors, Mays Septic and Porta Pots, LLC. Southern States of Charlestown and the Hornby Media Group. And welcome into night number four of the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. It is Wednesday evening and a big night planned for the Youth Fair tonight. Matt Crawford here with you for TV10, getting ready to send it over to our host for this week's festivities, Mary Beth Blair, before we get started with the Beef Show tonight. It is going to be a fun one, but first, I want to let you know this portion of the Youth Fair brought to you by 63rd District Delegate John Hardy, who wishes all the participants in this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair the best of luck. Mary Beth, happy Wednesday. It's good to be here. And we got a... Oh, uh, I need I a mic, say, don't I? Oh my mic. gosh. Okay, so here we are. Hello, everyone. How are you? Welcome to uh, Night 4, as Matt said. We have a huge night ahead of us. This is what a lot of people have been waiting for all week. Every show has been important and has been very exciting and competitive, interesting, full of facts, even some jokes along the way, thanks to our resident fun fact guy, Mikey Withrow. And we will have some more of those tonight, by the way. But we're going to get down to business very quickly tonight because we have a lot to accomplish before the livestock auction goes live. So we are going to bring you the coveted market steer shows here in just a second i'm going to introduce the uh chair of that uh, show to you tonight after after we do all of the beef categories tonight and and introduce all of or announce all of the awards we will have the poultry show and we'll do some more indoor exhibits so get ready get set uh, hope you have everything with you in your living room or wherever you're watching this year's virtual youth fair because we have an incredible lineup for you tonight. And as I've said, every single night that we've tuned in, we're really sad that we can't be at the youth fair grounds this year. It's certainly a different year in many respects for every event out there in the community, but I'm so honored to be a part of the vision of the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board because in spite of what is going on with the COVID-19 pandemic, they have put their heads together and they found a way to still bring a youth fair experience to Berkeley County. And also for all of the hard work and effort put in by hundreds of youth in our community, we're getting to see the fruits of their labor. And tonight's big, as we said, because the livestock auction opens, we're going to learn from that auctioneer, Drew Bohr, later. He's going to be in the studio with us and give us step-by-step -step instruction on how we can do that, break it all down so everyone who is interested in that can learn and, and get involved. Um, but I'm not going to talk anymore because we have so much to get to, and I am really looking forward to tonight. The only thing I am concerned about is how hungry I'm going to be at the end of tonight because I'm talking, this is the good stuff, right? I love my steak and all that good stuff, so I'm going to be hungry. I can just tell already. We were talking a little bit in pre-show, and I can just see it, Matt. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> it's going to be good. So let's, oh, just so you know, if anyone was looking for uh, People's Choice Award winners, we have those up to date on the website. And we are also going to announce uh, the, the most recent People's Choice Award winners. Remember, there you can go to the website right now all the way up to 1159 tonight and vote for your People's Choice in all of the various beef categories. So make sure you vote for your favorite tonight. And without further ado, I'm going to throw it over to and introduce the beef chair for this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair, and that is Scott Boyd. Scott, welcome to the studio. Okay, we've been told, well, I know this just personally. These are the serious guys. We're talking beef. We got them. We're going to, Matt and I and Mike are going to try really hard to get them to laugh and cut up tonight, but this is serious if business, right, Scott? If anybody can do Scott? it, it's Mikey. Okay, but Scott, this is all, all jokes aside, this is 
This is serious business, right? Serious business. Yes. These, these exhibitors have put in a long year. This is the longest animal project in 4-H and FFA. They, these kids start in September. Wow. Or October with their calf, and mm-hmm. they've been feeding and caring and working hair and doing all the things they so need to do. So had there not been this virtual fair, what a disappointment for that long of a preparation for these young people. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. With that being said, I'd really like to thank WRNR and you for giving these youth uh, a platform to do this on and the executive yes. committee for putting this together. It's we're, been a, been we're a great thing thrilled to be a part of it. It is important and we're so we've enjoyed every aspect of it and every minute of it. So let's get right into things. We are going to start off with the class one market steers tonight, correct? Yeah, correct. First, I'd like to introduce Mark Hostutler oh, here. Yes, that's important. Mark <laughs> has been my ringside uh, announcer for the last three or four years and it wouldn't be right doing a beef show without Mark He's a wealth of knowledge. He teaches judging to a lot of kids in this community, and uh, he just is a go-to guy when you need to know something about cattle, hogs, any species, actually. Mark Mark knows his stuff. So Thank you for joining us, Mark. Mark yes, us. Well, thank you and we look forward to learning a lot from you tonight. So, And we have a judge to introduce we as well. We do have okay. a judge. Uh, our judge this year was John R. Spiker, better known as John Bob Spiker from Jane Lou, West Virginia. He's a graduate of West Virginia University with a bachelor's degree in agricultural business and economics. He's evaluated livestock and judged livestock for over 25 years. He's a past president of the West Virginia Angus Association and current president of the West Virginia State Livestock Roundup. This is the longest running sale of its kind in the United States approaching its 90th year. Currently, he manages a herd of Angus-based commercial cattle and a flock of commercial ewes with his wife, Kate, and his five daughters. Oh, wow. Yep. John well, Bob's good. Awesome. A, what a, a great farm, judge. What a great farm family he really? comes from. Now, do we want to go ahead before we start the first class and show the award picture so we can see the coveted awards that are we're going to find out who is going to take those home tonight. So there you have it. And we are ready to get started. So let's kick off Class 1 market steers. We have seven to meet. Okay, Class 1 steers are starting out. They will uh, range in weight from 971 pounds to 1,050 pounds. Wow. The first steer we will see tonight is from Exhibitor 193, Haley McKinney from Spring Mills FFA. So, Mark, what are they looking for in when they actually judge? Well, they're looking for this steer to easily move uh, out as far as its structure and those type of things. Uh, in these lighter classes, they just want to try to take and find an animal that's the right size for putting some condition on, uh, the amount of fat across those ribs and those type of things, the amount of muscle an animal would have. Uh, so it gives a good opportunity for them to see that front and rear view, definitely an extension through that front end. You know how much overall rib you might have in them and when you're talking these lighter classes you're just not going to pick up the amount of rib and stuff that you will when we get later into the larger classes and larger weights our second uh, steer uh, is exhibitor 274 Jalen Ross from Hedgesville FFA and our third steer is Julie Snyder, I'm sorry, it's lot 280, Julie Snyder from Spring Mills FFA. When you get into these type of class, you see a steer is a little finer boned as it moves out, just because of the weight and stuff of this steer is. You can tell the steer is not carrying a lot of fat, a lot of condition there. Um, but again, it's in a lighter weight class, so we wouldn't have that expectation of that animal. When they're exhibiting right now, like for example, with her, is she is the the technique that they're using? Are they? Is, are, will we see that consistent in each one, or do they all have a different approach to what they're using their, I don't know, last night show it was, stick. okay, show, show stick, because last night it was actually 
you called it a whip. A pig whip. A pig whip. So I knew that that wasn't the same. But so will we see different you techniques? You will see standards. Standards. Pretty much the same. Okay. Because you want their feet placed a certain way, mm -hmm. one foot back from the other on. Okay. And you want to try to keep their top level and their head up. And So that's what they're trying to do with each time they're showing yes. each one. They're trying to accomplish all those things. Okay. Our next exhibitor is 321, Skylar Yates from Valley Star 4-H. I'll say, Mary Beth, first fun fact, Mark was actually my livestock judging coach when I was in 4-H. Really? Easy, Mikey. That tells a lot of age. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that just tells you his commitment to the youth of the county. I'll put it that way. If you really worked with your animal for a long time, most, a lot of kids won't even need the show stick because wow. their calf so, will walk right into that position. So we may see that throughout, like you'll, some you'll won't see have that to. Throughout. Okay. I mean, it, I mean, even on show day, even a video, even the best calf doesn't always walk the way you want them to. Mm -hmm. But in a, in a perfect world, that is what you do. Your, your showman just is able to tug on that lead, get him to walk right into his track and stop. Gotcha. Our next exhibitor is 381, oh. Reese Barrett. Spring Mills FFA. And just just like the hogs yesterday, Mary Beth, you'll actually see a lot of different color coats. I was just noticing that, yes. That's the first of that color. Exhibitor, the next exhibitor would be Exhibitor 391, Elizabeth Fox from Tomahawk 4-H. I'd like to note this will be Elizabeth's last year showing steers. She's been doing this quite a while, and uh, we're going to miss Elizabeth in the steer barn. I particularly miss her this year. You could always find her at the line dancing. So she's aging out, was. huh? Yep. Okay. Most of the ones we're seeing, are they, they've, they've been doing this a good bit, a good while? Like this is something that you've seen them doing for multiple years? Most of them, yep. Yes. Uh -huh. I think Skylar Yates was her first year so far. She was the only first year person so far. All right, our next exhibitor is 398, Kyle Roberts from Martinsburg FFA. And this is Kyle's first year showing. Okay, now I think we have some... Uh, the judge's reasonings? The judge's yes. reasons. Yes, so let's go to those. Judge was kind enough to make us a nice file, so we're going to hear from the judge himself. That's great. We're going to begin your first class with a steer that I think is the most complete steer in this class. A steer that when you get behind him, I think he's got a lot of muscle to him. He carries it down well in his lower quarter. When you look at him from the side profile, he, he balances out really nice. When you analyze him from his hind flank to his fore flank and up through his front one third, he gets out and moves well. And again, I think he's the most complete steer in this class. Moving on to your second place steer, a steer that is very similar in terms of his thickness and condition compared to your first place steer. He moves well. I guess where I separate the two is when you look at him from the side profile, he tends to get a little softer in his spine. And as you analyze him up to his front one third, maybe a little more coarse, but I really appreciate the circumference of bone that he's standing on and his overall sogginess, a good second place steer. 
our third place steer I think resembles your top two as well as anything else in the class from a thickness and condition standpoint he's really smooth sided when you analyze him from his shoulders back very smooth patterned and starting to lay down some condition and he has some muscle if I was going to change him I'd like to extend him up to his front one third and give him just a little more time on feed to get any higher in this class as we move on to your next two steers this black steer is very comparable to our top steer his lines are nice he gets out and moves well I like his skeletal makeup he's just a little little behind in terms of condition and overall thickness to get any higher but a steer with a lot of quality same can be said for the white steer I like his lines I like how he bounces out from one end to the other he looks like he's going to be sound and stay sound I just think he He's another one that needs more time on feed. He gives up a little bit of base width and overall power to get any higher in this drive. As we move on to your, the next two steers, this baldy steer that comes in next behind your white steer. This is a steer that you really like him on a profile. I love how deep ribbed he is. He's level spined. Where he kind of lets you down is when you get behind him. He needs some more base width and he's a little more frail in his bone makeup. But there is a lot of quality in that steer and as we wind up the class this is a steer that just needs more time i don't think his skeletal makeup is bad i just think he's too green to get any higher in this class he could use some more muscle and more flesh and essentially more time nice set of steers class one market steers and now awards and placings yeah okay we had in first place uh julie snyder with a blue ribbon Second place was Reese Barrett with a blue ribbon. Third place was Haley McKinney with a red ribbon. Fourth place was Skylar Yates with a red ribbon. In fifth place, Jalen Ross, red ribbon. Sixth place, Elizabeth Fox, red ribbon. And in seventh place, Kyle Roberts with a white ribbon. Well, congratulations to Class 1 Market Steers on your awards and placings. And, of course, the top one in this class will go on to the champion drive later on, correct? Correct. All right. So we'll see that one come so we'll back. We'll see Julie Snyder later. I'll say you've done so well. <laughs> You're doing so good. I'm trying early on to impress, right? So, anyways, well, we're going to go to break. We've got one class in the books, and we're going to take time to hear from our sponsors. We hope that you'll join us in just a short few minutes. This portion of the Youth Fair has been brought to you by WVU Medicine, Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Center, the best in health care close to home. Berkeley Medical Center right here in Martinsburg, Jefferson Medical Center in downtown Charlestown. Back with more from the Youth Fair next. In our present crisis, we need inspired problem solvers. Not the kind of politics we always get from the politicians who take us for granted. Daniel Bennett is running for delegate because he believes that the problems we face will be solved by the hands, the hearts, and the hard work of West Virginians. You know that there's no more hardworking individual that would work for you as your member um, in your district for West Virginia. I'm Daniel Bennett, and I'm running for delegate to give back, pay it forward, and to be your voice in Charleston. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. If you need to speak with a lawyer about an insurance claim or motor vehicle wreck, at Mansion Ferretti we rely on 100 years of combined personal injury and trial experience to win your case. There is no charge for meeting with us, and there is no fee unless we win. Mansion Ferretti excels because we are local, experienced in our courts, and always working hard to develop the personal relationship with clients that makes a difference. Call us at 304-264-8505 or go to wvjusticelawyers.com. At Mansion Ferretti, it's about seeking justice for you. 
Boyd Veterinary Service in Jaredstown is dedicated to the health and wellness of your herd, offering health and reproductive services and now scheduling flushes and donor housing for fall 2020 at our new donor facility in Jaredstown. Dr. John Boyd wants to thank all exhibitors for participating in the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair and wishes each one success with their projects. That's Boyd Veterinary Service, phone 304-279-0217. My dad, Brad Knoll, is running for the House of Delegates 60th. He needs your vote to improve the poor infrastructure exposed by the pandemic. That includes better internet, cell phone, and roads. Thanks, Laura. I also want to keep our young people like you in West Virginia. Brad Knoll needs your vote to make a difference on these issues. Remember, when it's time to vote in the fall, you need to vote for Brad Knoll. Paid for by candidate. Berkeley County Sheriff Curtis Keller wishes the best of luck to all the exhibitors in this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair and congratulates the fair board and volunteers who worked so hard to make sure we could still celebrate this important community event. Curtis Keller and his wife Becky have been longtime supporters of the youth fair and have volunteered many hours serving at this important community event. Curtis Keller has been serving this community as a law enforcement officer for more than 30 years. Please help us re-elect Curtis Keller as your new sheriff of Berkeley County. Paid for by candidate. Welcome back into the 2020 Virtual Berkeley County Youth Fair as we get ready to go into Class 2 of the Market Steers. We want to remind you this portion of the program brought to you by 15th District State Senator Patricia Rucker, who salutes all of this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair participants. Back over to our host for this week's events, Mary Beth Blair. Well, welcome again to Market Steer uh, Night, well, Beef Show Night, basically, and we are in, getting ready to start Class 2 of the Market Steers. Now, this is especially sad on tonight as far as the virtual versus the actual fair, because this was, Wednesday night was a big night at the fair, chicken barbecue night, and so we're just crossing our fingers that maybe someone is going to deliver some chicken uh, barbecued chicken here to the studio. I don't know if that's going to happen, Matt, but I figure if I say it early and often, you never know, right? They would be our best friends, <laughs> I guarantee you that. But I do want to give a shout out to um, all the people who help put that on every year. It's such a, so, so many people look forward to Wednesday night for that very reason. And uh, just want to say all the work from uh, WVU Experimental Farm in Kearneysville. We want to just thank them for their many years that they have been barbecuing for us and we're missing seeing them this year and we're going to give a shout out to each one of them here later but we're going to get right now we're going to get right back into market steers with class two i'm going to throw it back over to the guys okay well as we get into class two steers note that the weight range for class two is 1050 pounds to 1115 pounds we have six entries okay our first exhibitor is 69 hawk kindig from Scrabble Scramblers, 4-H. Our second entry is 229, Benjamin Byers, from Mount Airy Winners 4-H. I'll say, Mary Beth, I know you talked about how beef was your favorite mm. meat that we've had. Um, hamburger from one cow can actually make 720 quarter pound hamburgers. So there is a lot of meat yes. walking around this ring. Yes. I know that because I am fortunate enough to be able to purchase locally. Um, my brother-in-law has incredibly tasting beef and boy that's the one thing that we get the most of mm -hmm. is burger and there's it's incredible our next exhibitor is 283 Carson Wright from Arden 4-H wow the size of that steer next to her <laughs> yep. impressive that she has that kind of control and is in charge of it Carson's done a great job she started with a little calf her first year, and now 
and I'm sh almost sure this was a little calf as a feeder uh -huh. calf last year and she got it nice and tame and now she's brought mm -hmm. it back as a fat steer. So later in the show when we see those feeder calves a lot of them will end up in the markets uh, potentially, section. Potentially, yes. Potentially. Mm -hmm. Our next exhibitor is 283 Taylor Horn from Hedgesville FFA. Our next exhibitor is 394, Jeremiah Campbell from Tomahawk 4-H. And rounding out class two is exhibitor 397, Cody Mung from Spring Mill FFA. So that rounds out all six in that class, correct? That's correct. All right, so we have ju judges reasonings again for them? Yes, we do. Okay, yeah. let's hear what the judge has to say about these six. As we move on to analyze class two in your market steer show, I'm going to lead this class off with the chromed up steer that I think is the thickest in the class. I think he's the most balanced when you get out and look at him from a three quarter angle, how full he is in his stifle, in through his rib, rib cage, and how well he ties into his front one third. You look at him from the side, he's a deep bodied steer. I realize he's compact and and a lot of steers at this weight are I, I i think he's laying down some good condition and when the young man when he cooperates and gets out and moves it looks like he moves relatively well and has some base width just a nice combination steer to win this class we're going to follow him up with another chromed up steer with a white face i realize this steer doesn't move as as well as you'd like him to and i i think his angles are a little steep on his front one third in terms of his scapula and his forearm but when you break him down, especially from the profile, when he's standing still and look at him from behind, he's comparable to the steer that wins a class and the amount of thickness he has in the cover that he looks like he's laying down. Not quite as sound as some steers below him, but he gets around, I think, and resembles your class winner as well as any other in this class. As we move on to our next three steers, I think they're... They are pretty similar in type and kind. We're going to use this red, red steer to come in third place. I think he's very level spined. I think he's sound. I think he's functional. He's got some depth of body. Maybe not the show ring eye appeal as the two steers that win the class. Not as attractive up through his front one third in terms of the amount of leather and looseness that he has going up into his throat latch. But a steer that I think is going to look good on the rail. Has a lot of usefulness and is, has a big hip on him. As we move on to your fourth place steer, this baldy steer, I think he has a slight advantage in the amount of bone he has compared to our third place steer. Not quite as level over his hip, not quite as filled in in his flank when you look at him from the side view to get any higher, but a steer that has a lot of promise as well. As we move on to your fifth place steer, this is a steer that again resembles the two above him. His lines are, just aren't quite as good as the two steers that are above him. He slopes a little bit from hooks to pins, not quite as deep in his flank as the two above him, or standing on the, enough circumference of bone to get any higher in this class. I realize he's more attractive coming out of his chest floor and into his front one third, but I don't think he has he can get above the two, the black white face one and red white face one that beat him today. As we go into the steer that falls into sixth place in this class, I appreciate how long bodied this steer is. He's fresh in his makeup. I just don't think he has enough base width, base width, circumference of bone to get any higher in this class. I think he needs a little more time on feed and he tends to get a little bit soft in his spine not only when you analyze him on the profile, but when you set him into motion. Nice set of steers to analyze in class two. And now that we've heard from the judges, we're going to hear again the placings um, from our beef show chair. Okay, our first place uh, exhibitor and animal was Benjamin Byers receiving a blue ribbon. In second place was Hawk Kendig with a red ribbon. Third place was Carson Wright with a red ribbon. Fourth place, Taylor Horn with a red ribbon. 
fifth place was whoa. fifth place was Cody Mung with a red ribbon and in sixth place Jeremiah Campbell with a white ribbon all right well there you have class two congratulations to all of those and again the top Winner in that class will come back for the champion drive at the end of the evening or the end of the uh, market steers. We're going to go to a break right now and um, be back with class three market steers. Um, so let's hear from our sponsors again, and then we'll bring it right back. This portion of the youth fair has been brought to you by Brown Funeral Home and Cremation. Robert Fields and Sons, a full service family owned funeral home, proudly serving the area since 1880. Back with more of the youth fair after this commercial break. In our present crisis, we need inspired problem solvers, not the kind of politics we always get from the politicians who take us for granted. Daniel Bennett is running for delegate because he believes that the problems we face will be solved by the hands, the hearts, and the hard work of West Virginians. You know that there's no more hardworking individual that would work for you as your member um, in your district for West Virginia. I'm Daniel Bennett, and I'm running for a delegate to give back, pay it forward, and to be your voice in Charleston. WV Medicine joins with the community in celebrating the hard work and dedication of all the youth in our area who will be a part of the first ever Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. WV Medicine applauds the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board for making this virtual fair possible and doing their part to protect the health and safety of our community by not having a traditional fair at the fairgrounds this year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. WV Medicine is proud to be a blue ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm in new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Are you looking for a full-service web design company right here in the Eastern Panhandle? Then look no further than Pro Design LLC, specializing in web design and development, web hosting and application development. Pro Design is a locally owned company serving local clients since 1997 with a reputation of quality, creativity, and personal touch. Let Pro Design build or redesign your dream website. Find them online at professionaldesign.com or phone 304-676-9940. to the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. Matt Crawford here with you for TV10, WRNR TV on YouTube, where you can find the Youth Fair action all week long, going up till Friday evening. We'll get back into Class 3 of the Market Steers in just a moment. But this portion of the program brought to you by Democratic candidate for West Virginia Attorney General Sam Petsong. Wishing all of the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair participants nothing but success. Back over to our host for this week's events, Mary Beth Blair. Well, thank you. Thank you, Matt. We are just...
two classes into the beef show. We're starting with market steers tonight because the livestock auction opens at 7 p.m. So we want to make sure that they are all announced before you go to start your bidding online live tonight. We're going to go right now to back to our um, experts on market steers to introduce us to class three market steers. Okay, our class three market steers actually all came in at the uh, same weight of 1,200 pounds. I will note that all weights are, the exhibitor was asked to give us their best guess weight. Some exhibitors have access to scales, some do not. So it was uh, just a tool to help us break these classes. So these weights are all estimates and at the auction will be sold by the head, not by the pound. So here we go with class three steers. All right, our first exhibitor is 112, Madison Bear from Musselman FFA. I'll say your first like real fun fact for today. Um, Disneyland in California sells over 4 million hamburgers each year. 4 million hamburgers each year. Oh my goodness gracious. So I doubt you have that much beef there for you, Mary Beth, but. Hmm. Nothing like a good burger. Our second entry is 303. Nicholas Byers from Mount Airy Winners 4-H. Okay, Nicholas, is he trying to adjust his feet with that technique that he's doing right now? He is. Okay, to get him to stand the way he wants the You'd judge like to, to see him. You'd like to have those feet just straight down and square with his shoulders <laughs> at, at an even placement. He's working hard to do it. He is. Appreciate that effort. Yes, he, indeed. He's working. <laughs> Our next entry is 380, Isaac Camby, Tomahawk 4-H. I say, Mary Beth, as you're looking at them, you can see there's a lot of saliva coming out. So in a given day, the salivary glands of a cattle, they're located right underneath the tongue, mm -hmm. um, and they can produce maximum 50 to 70 um, liters in a day. That's a lot of saliva. A whole lot. <laughs> Our next entry is 385, Zachary Gano. Back Creek Valley Mountain or 4-H? Our next and last entry is 386, Austin Gregory from Musselman FFA. So that makes five in the class three market steers that we've just seen. And once we take a look at this video, we will head into judges results. Or reasonings, I should say. Thank you for correcting me. Here in Class 3, I think we have a pair of steers that come to the top relatively easily in my mind within this class. This black steer that we're going to lead the class off with, when I first looked at him, I was pretty skeptical of him. I think the young lady had him running downhill for his profile picture. I think it would have benefited him a lot to be on level ground or even slightly uphill with his front end. With that said, when she set him into motion, he kind of came together in my mind. He His top leveled out some, and he looked more flexible than what he appeared in his still picture. I love him when you get behind him. He's full of muscle, very long-bodied, and very attractive up to his front one-third. And from what I can tell, he has a big back on him and just a lot of quality in this steer. Maybe not quite as soft as you'd like to see him for one a steer like this that's that good. If he's going to change him, see him a little bit softer on his pasterns when he's moving, but he's not bad by any means. This is a high quality steer and I think deserves to win this class relatively handily. This red steer that follows him up, I could say a lot of the same things about him. 
he is very thick when you get behind him. When you look down his back, he has a lot of turn to his top. Beautiful up through his front one third and very attractive and long. And just gives you a show ring look that, that a lot of people breed for. My issue with him when you compare him to the first place steer is I don't think he's quite as deep bodied. He's not as, as deep as you analyze him back into his flank. He's a little more streamlined in his design. When you put him into motion, he moves relatively freely, but I'd sure like to soften him up on his pasterns, his front and his rear. As he walks, he seems a little rigid from that standpoint, but a very nice second place steer in this class. As we move on to your third place steer, this is another steer that has a lot of quality. He's long bodied. He's sound. I like how deep bodied he is. He just can't quite compare to your top two steers from a show ring standpoint. He's not quite as attractive in his chest floor and up through his front one third. Maybe not quite as level from hooks to pins and and just gives up a little bit when you get behind him compared to the top two steer and overall thickness. Our fourth place steer, this is a really smooth pattern steer. When you look at him from a three quarter view, he's very smooth as you analyze him down into his heart girth and through his front one third. If I was going to change him, I'd like to extend him maybe all the way around, but especially through his front one third. I also think that for the amount of body and volume and thickness he has, he could be standing on some more bone and circumference of bone for his overall makeup. I think that would benefit him. This young man's done a great job feeding this steer. As we move on to the steer that winds up the class, this is a steer that when you get behind him, you have to appreciate how much muscle he has, how deep bodied he is. My issue with him is from a structure standpoint, specifically on his front end, I'd like to see him have a little better angle to his shoulder blade, be a little more flexible and natural when he gets out in strides. I just think there's some structure issues with this steer that keep him from getting any higher in this class, but a nice set of steers to look at. Okay, so there are the judges' reasonings, and now we will hear the placings. Okay, in first place, we had Madison Bear with a blue ribbon. In second place, Austin Gregory, blue ribbon. Third place, Isaac Canby, red ribbon. Fourth place was Nicholas Byers with a red ribbon. And in fifth place, Zachary Gano, white ribbon. Back to me. That was quick. There's five. Only five I'm trying three. to respond to everyone on Facebook. Thank you for being um, engaged and asking lots of questions and for tuning in again for this amazing show that we're seeing, the market steers. We've got three classes done. We're going to come back right after this commercial break with class four. And in that class, we have six exhibitors. So we'll be right back. Congratulations to all the winners in that last class, class three. This portion of the Youth Fair brought to you by Johnny's, selling restaurant quality food at wholesale prices. Visit their two locations on Route 11 South in Chambersburg, Johnny's Express on Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg. Back with more from the Youth Fair after this. WV Medicine joins with the community in celebrating the hard work and dedication of all the youth in our area who will be a part of the first ever Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. WV Medicine applauds the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board for making this virtual fair possible and doing their part to protect the health and safety of our community by not having a traditional fair at the fairgrounds this year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. WV Medicine is proud to be a blue ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair. The historic McFarland House Inn and Restaurant is excited to introduce a fresh new summer menu and an all-new curbside menu. There are so many incredible new dishes to explore and enjoy from Chef Walden and some fan favorites that will remain by popular demand. Check out the new menus on our website at historicmcfarlandhouse.com or our Facebook page. You can dine inside our charming historic home or outside in our beautiful garden. Call 304-263-1890 today to reserve your table or to place a curbside order to go. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. I'm Natalie Tennant. 
as West Virginians, we'll get through this crisis together. We've been knocked down before, and we get back up. I've been there with you, and I'll be there again working for a better future, like I did as Secretary of State. By modernizing the office, I saved you money and gave it back, lowered fees and helped businesses create jobs, and made voting easier. We need that kind of leadership again. It takes courage, vision, and cooperation. I know we can do this, West Virginia. I believe in you. There is only one bank in the area that has been number one for nine consecutive years in the Eastern Panhandle. City National Bank has been voted the number one bank nine years in a row in the Journal's Reader's Choice poll. City National Bank has also been voted number one in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power & Associates three years in a row. City National Bank is proud to be a red ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. The City National Bank team wishes all of the youth the best of luck. Three cheers for free delivery from South Berkeley Pharmacy to your front door. South Berkeley Pharmacy Home Health Care Specialists is more than just a pharmacy. We have the best gift shop in town and nobody beats our service. South Berkeley Pharmacy Home Health Care Specialists SouthBerkeleyPharmacy.com Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. Matt Crawford here with you for TV10. This portion of the program brought to you by 63rd District House of Delegates Democratic candidate Daniel Bennett. Have a, a great youth fair and continue to strive to be your best. We head into class four of the market steer, sending it back over to our host for this week's events, Mary Beth Blair. Thank you, Matt. We are, as he said, we are getting ready to, to hear and see uh, class four market steers. It's been an um, exciting night so far. We've got a whole night of beef. Do you ever remember the commercial, Where's the Beef? Well, the beef is here tonight. It's in the TV10 studio all night long, pretty much, until we get to the 9 o'clock hour. When, did you not like that joke, Mikey? <laughs> you tell me my jokes aren't funny, and you get That really back. wasn't a joke. I don't tell jokes well. So, <laughs> anyways, I'm trying to lighten things up in here because beef, the beef show is very serious business. So, um, no, actually, these guys are fun, and they're not as serious as as they put on but anyways we're going to send it back to scott and mark to take us into class four market steers and i'm anxious to see how much these guys weigh okay well we've got <laughs> six entries in class four and they will range in weight from 1203 pounds to 1250 pounds and our first entry is 108 lindsey walls scrabble scramblers 4-h I imagine that large of an animal, if your foot ends up underneath of it at some point, that could cause some injuries. It hurts. <laughs> Ouch. Yep. I'm say that was your joke. So what do you call a cow with no legs? Tell me. Ground beef. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but -um, but -um. See, Mark <laughs> likes my jokes. <laughs> so Our funny. next entry is 196, Hannah Canby from Tomahawk 4-H. If you notice, we're starting to get some condition through that brisket mm -hmm. when the animal walks towards you. And when, right at the top of the tail head, there's, those are called the pawns, and you want them to fill out. And this steer here is starting to put some condition on. Of course, we're getting over 1,200 pounds, and you're going to see that. And they definitely want to see that condition on that rib. And it could use just a little bit more condition on the rib, but she's done a good job with this steer. Our next entry is 322 Spencer Byers. I so say you actually see Ben. That's his older brother. Um, Spencer actually is in an arm cast. You'll see him maybe here in the back corner there. Um, so his brother had to oh help him goodness. out showing this wow. year. Our next entry is 376, Abigail Horn. Hedgesville FFA. Our next entry is 377, 
Adara Rawan, Muscle and FFA. And Mary Beth, I know some viewers might say, well, why is beef that important to the fair? Mm -hmm. um, it's not just important to the fair. As a whole, beef is a $200 billion industry. Mm. So, you know, these are bringing in a lot of different marketable products, not just meat, but, mm -hmm. you know, different medical instruments, different sports equipment, recreation uses. There's a lot of things that come just from beef. Wow. I note uh, Dara, this is her first year showing, and uh, wow. she's doing a great job. Our last entry in this class is 399, Lindsay Fitch, Spring Mills FFA. You're definitely seeing a steer here. It's a little smoother through that mm -hmm. side and across that rib, as you can tell. You're not seeing hardly any ribs at all, so she's definitely starting to put some condition and stuff on this steer. And when it comes to you, of course, you can see the, how uh, full that brisket is. Oh, you said brisket again. Oh, I love brisket. Okay, so let's go to the judges' reasonings on these. We have six in class four we're going to hear about. Here in class four, this is probably the most challenging class to me because I think that all six of these steers are similar in a lot of ways. We're going to begin with a steer that, from what I can gather, is the most market ready. He's very deep bodied. He's got a lot of muscle in him and turned to his top. Has a lot of spring of rib and, and he's on a desirable size frame in my mind. When this young lady gets him out and puts him into motion, he moves well. He fills his track well. And I think he's the most market ready when you compare him to his counterparts in this class. Moving on to the second place steer, I think that he again closely follows our first place steer in the class. I think that he has a lot of quality when you look at the amount of rib he has, rib shape, and the muscle he has when you get behind him. He moves well. He's just a very well balanced steer. I don't think that he has quite the condition from what I can gather as a steer that wins a class. Maybe not quite as wide base as a steer that wins a class, but an awful complete steer in his own right. As we move on to the third place steer, it's a little hard to, to analyze him in this video, but from what I can tell, he's very similar to the second place steer. Again, he's deep bodied. He seems to move well. He's level hipped. He's got some muscle to him from what I can tell. If I'm going to change him, I'd maybe clean him up a little bit up in his front one third, his chest floor up through to his throat latch. But I think this is another high quality steer that blends right in with your second place steer especially. As we move on to your fourth place steer, this is a very well made steer. He's really beautiful in his lines. He's level spined, level hipped, very clean and attractive through his front one third. The reason I don't have him any higher in class is because I think he's a little bit behind the three steers above him from a thickness and condition standpoint. Awful nice steer that I would say just needs more time to get any higher in this class, more time on feed, but a well-designed steer. As we move on to your fifth place steer, this black white face steer, I think that he's a, a sound made steer that, that is long bodied and has, is showing some spring of rib and depth of body. Just again, behind the steers above him from an overall weight per day of age standpoint, a base width standpoint, not, he can't he does, isn't carrying enough condition to get any higher in this class or thickness. Moving on to the steer that rounds out the class. This is a steer that is probably going to outweigh your fifth place steer. But I'd sure like to see him stand on a little more circumference of bone to match his body size. I think that he's a little bit heavy in his front one third. And he doesn't balance out well as you look to his rear third. It just kind of off balance from that standpoint. Especially when you're viewing from the side profile. But I think it's a nice set of steers, especially the top three. I, I really like those steers. Matt, you keep catching me, slacking on the job. You got to pay attention. I know, I know. Well, I think it's just because I'm sitting back watching and studying all the different steers and learning from. It's really interesting, Scott, to hear and mark from the judges and watch, like listen to his reasonings and look at that animal and see what he's seeing. So I'm learning a lot and we're only in class four. So let's hear the placings um, from Scott now. In first place, we had Lindsay Walls with a blue ribbon. In second place was 
Lindsay Fitch with a red ribbon. In third place, Abigail Horn with a red ribbon. Fourth place was Adara Rowan with a red ribbon. In fifth place was Hannah Canby with a white ribbon. And in sixth place, Spencer Byers with a white ribbon. That is impressive. All, almost all girls in that class, right? Except for the last gentleman? Yep. That's I'm impressed. Got a, got a good, lot of good girl Farmers, showmen. I love that's that. Right. They are, that's incredible. Show women. Show women, yes. Congratulations, Class 4 Market Steer winners. Um, we are going to head into the break and come back again with the next class as we try to get through all of these classes before that livestock auction opens. So uh, thanks for being with us tonight for Berkeley County's first ever and hopefully only ever virtual fair. We'll see you after this break. This portion of the Youth Fair has been brought to you by Orsini's. Stop by and see PJ and the gang for all of your appliance and really home needs at their new location on Hack Wilson Way, just off of Route 9, outside of Martinsburg. Brought to you by Orsini's. Back with more of the Youth Fair after this. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Panhandle Homes has helped build Berkeley County into West Virginia's showcase community one home at a time. We're proud to be from Berkeley County, the home of the country's longest consecutive running youth fair. We were born here, we grew up here, we know many of you and you know us. Panhandle Homes wishes all of our youth of Berkeley County nothing but the best for this year's virtual youth fair. Panhandle Homes of Berkeley County, here yesterday, today and tomorrow for you. PanhandleHomesWV.com Orsini's, not just an appliance store anymore, they're your one-stop resource for all home needs, whether it's custom kitchen design, countertops or cabinets, or check out their new sleep studio with Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Stearns and Foster. For all of your outdoor living needs, Orsini's has Gladiator Garage Works, Traeger Grills, Barbecue Accessories, Barbecue Rubs and Sauces, and every flavor wood pellets. Visit their brand new 8200 square foot showroom at 360 Hack Wilson Way, 304-267-7251, Orsini's.com. Our dad taught us a lot about the law, but he taught us even more about life and people. He taught us to treat clients like family. At the Skinner Law Firm, the firm our father started here in the Eastern Panhandle, we still believe that. We also believe that everyone has the right to be protected from those who don't play by the rules. We believe it's about helping people. Call us at the Skinner Law Firm, where we treat you like family. Congratulations to the participants in the Berkeley County Youth Fair. What you are doing now is so important. You are our future. As the chair of the West Virginia State Senate Education Committee, I am working to ensure that you have the opportunity to be the best you can be. I am rooting for you. Paid for by Rucker for WV, Lynn Statton, Treasurer. In our present crisis, we need inspired problem solvers, not the kind of politics we always get from the politicians who take us for granted. Daniel Bennett is running for delegate because he believes that the problems we face will be solved by the hands, the hearts, and the hard work of West Virginians. You know that there's no more hardworking individual that would work for you as your member um, in your district for West Virginia. I'm Daniel Bennett, and I'm running for delegate to give back, pay it forward, and to be your voice in Charleston. Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. This portion of the fair brought to you by West Virginia State Treasurer Republican candidate Riley Moore, who salutes all of our youth for participating in this year's Berkeley County 
virtual youth fair. Back to our host, and I believe it's snack time, Mary Beth. Oh my gosh, tonight has officially become my favorite night, not just because, because we're talking all things beef tonight, but because there's so many great things arriving here at the studio. So I'm going to show you what just arrived. And Bev McDonald is one of the best cinnamon bun bakers in the county, if not be way beyond the county. So she has just delivered to our studio something incredible. And Mikey gets the honor of pointing out what each one are. I do. So teats and, bu teats and buns with Bev McDonald. Um, Casey and her are great supporters of the 4-H program. Um, and even leaders of them. So they dropped off the ones this here in the back, as the lovely Hannah is posing with, um, the two back oh, corners. Oh, yes. Hello, Hannah. Miss I'll Berkeley say, County Youth Fair 2019. I meant, I meant to say that. She's she, the real star right now. Yes. Um, so we have original. They have a very berry, which is a mix of raspberry and blueberry. Mm. Then they have a caramel apple. They have a lemon curd. Mm -hmm. And... I would say, Shelly Shopper's going to tell me I said this wrong, but pecan praline, or pecan praline, <laughs> however you want to say it. Um, and that was actually one of my favorites. So, so yummy. It's and, pecan, Mikey, don't worry. And, it's and, pecan. And the best part about all of that is they said they're going to cut those into little pieces so we can all sample them. So thank you, Hannah and Mikey, for showing that. And thank you, Bev, for bringing those here. So Mikey, how does that fit into Youth Fair? Does she always bring them down or is that a fundraiser she does with Youth Fair? All of the above. So she actually works a lot with a lot of the clubs in uh -huh. the area and that can be a sole fundraiser for them to raise a, quite a few hundred dollars. Sure. So Well, she has supporter. such a great reputation for everything that she does. I met Bev at Hedgesville High School and, you know, my kids were all going there and I pretty much forced my kids to take it because honestly they all said she was the greatest teacher they really enjoyed learning and how to to do things under her tutelage absolutely great and, for each uh, family uh, yes and so thank you bev shout out to you and um we'll let you know later how each one of them taste which means we have to tr try each one. So, oh my gosh, someone has to do it, right? Well, let's get right back into our beef show. We are g getting ready to meet class five market steers, and we have six to show you in this particular class. Scott? Okay, class five steers. Weight range on this is 1,254 pounds to 1,300 pounds. And our first exhibitor is 105, Lane Gosnell from Tomahawk 4-H. I say, I know we talked about recreation yesterday and today. Um, the hide from one cow can make either 144 baseballs, 20 footballs, or 12 basketballs. That's incredible. So not just steaks and burgers. Multi-purposed. All right, our next entry is 205, Reagan Barrett, Scrabble of Scramblers 4-H. I remember seeing her in the goat show or lamb show? Lamb show. Lamb show. Mm -hmm. I would say both her and the um, young man before her actually participated in both. Okay. So you'll see a, quite a lot of crossover. Okay. That's a lot of work for them, raising multiple animals. Oh, absolutely. These girls, Barrett girls... They stay pretty busy. Mm -hmm. Our next exhibitor is 285, Kayana Ross, Back Creek Valley Mountaineers. Our fourth exhibitor in this class will be 27 or 379, Eli Canby, Tomahawk 4-H. Okay, I don't know if you all heard that, but that was officially my stomach growling. I'll say it's a sign. and Like, we need to just oh go get them cut gosh. up and bring them in now. <laughs> Our next exhibitor is 282, Samuel Canby, Tomahawk 4-H. I'm not sure if it's Bev's cinnamon rolls or just the thought of all the multi-purpose things that 
these steer could put on my plate. You're definitely not saying how cute they are as you were at the goat and lamb show. No, I'm not. <laughs> and our last entry in this class is entry 400, Mackenzie Files, Springs Mill FFA. Great looking class there, and now we're going to go to the judges' reasonings. Here in class five, I think this is another class that you see a lot of variation in types and kind. I'm going to lead off with this black steer that I think is the most fault free. I don't think you can really pick on him for his design. He's level topped, he's sound when he moves. When you analyze him up through his front one third, he's very clean coming out of his chest floor and attractive through his front one third. When you get behind him and look at him, he's got some muscle. And what I really like is he's showing some fat cover around his tail head and over that 13th rib, it looks like he's starting to lay down some really nice condition. And I think he's as close to being market ready, maybe as any in this class. Just one that's kind of hard to pick apart. Moving on to your second place steer, this red steer i think that if he had a little more time on feed had a little more time to lay down some condition he probably wins the class easy he's pretty wide pinned he's pretty thick when you get behind him he's got a good amount of bone he's standing on he's deep enough and long enough just a lot of nice parts when i look at him around his tail head and over that 13th rib i think he just needs more time on feed probably has a lot to do with the type of breed he is this young man's done a nice job with him though and then it gets a little tougher for me. I'm going to use this red steer for third, this dark red steer for third. I think that he's showing a lot of condition. I think he's getting very close to being market ready, if not beyond, from what I can tell from the picture. I like how deep bodied he is. He has some muscle. I think that maybe you could straighten him up a little bit on his front one third when you put him into motion and when you set him up. Looks like he's given up a little bit from a standpoint of structural integrity. But this is a steer that brings a lot to the table from a condition standpoint. And I think he's probably going to have one of the biggest ribeyes in the class. We move on to your fourth place steer. I think your fourth and fifth place steers are very similar. I think they're more compact in their overall design. I like the fourth place steer over the fifth place steer because I think he's a little more level in his spinal makeup. I think he's a little bit more extended through his front. And, I, and especially from hooks to pins, he's a little more level. Both these steers could use a shot of bone to get any higher in this class and maybe just a nickel more frame score. As we move on to your sixth place steer, this is a steer that I love how long bodied he is. He's fluent when he moves. I think for his overall size and makeup, he needs to be wider based, have a little more bone underneath of him, and he slopes a little bit from hooks to pins to get any higher in this class for me, but Nice set of steers from one end to the other. There you have it. Judges' reasonings for uh, Class 5 market steers, and now we'll hear the placings. In first place was Mackenzie Files with a blue ribbon. Second place was Lane Gosnell, red ribbon. Third place, Reagan Barrett, red ribbon. Fourth place, Eli Canby, red ribbon. Fifth place, Samuel Camby, Red Ribbon. And sixth place, Kayana Ross, White Ribbon. Congratulations to all of those winners and um, placers. Oh, well, everyone placed, but great job, great class, and we're moving right along, Matt. And when we come back, we will have the, the next class. We have six in Market Six. Uh, we will take a look at those when we get back and see what the judges thinks of them. But right now, let's head into break. This portion of the Youth Fair brought to you by Parsons Ford. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons, they're located on Shepherdstown Pike just outside of Martinsburg. Parsons Ford. Back with more of the Youth Fair after this. WV Medicine joins with the community in celebrating the hard work and dedication of all the youth in our area who will be a part of the first ever Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. 
WV Medicine applauds the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board for making this virtual fair possible and doing their part to protect the health and safety of our community by not having a traditional fair at the fairgrounds this year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. WV Medicine is proud to be a blue ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair. I'm Rod Hawker for Johnny's, where we've been serving the community for over 65 years. That means one thing. You've been supporting us for over 65 years. So to all of our customers at our Chambersburg and Martinsburg locations, we'd like to say a great big thank you for your continued patronage. You've been there for us and we'll continue to be there for you with restaurant quality foods at wholesale prices. And if you haven't tried Johnny's yet, what are you waiting for? Stop in at either location and experience the Johnny's difference today. I'm Kathy Kunkel. I'm running for U.S. House of Representatives here in the second district. I'm not taking any corporate cash because I believe it's one of the fundamental problems in our politics today. The rest of the country does owe a debt to us here in Appalachia. For decades, we have been powering this country. We've had billions of dollars of wealth extracted from our state. Three families in our country currently control more wealth than half of the population. We need a government for the many, not the few. And that's why I'm running for Congress. I'm Kathy Kunkel, and I approve this message. Hi, this is your delegate, John Hardy. Like many of you, I have fond memories of our youth fair going back to my childhood. I know that in these trying times, this year's fair is very different. One thing that hasn't changed is the tireless effort by the committee and the dedication and hard work that our youth has put into showcasing their exhibits to bring us this year's youth fair. I'd like to wish each and every person a successful youth fair. And don't forget, if you can, please support our youth by bidding on their livestock. I'm Delegate John Hardy, and I thank you for supporting the youth of Berkeley County. There is only one bank in the area that has been number one for nine consecutive years in the Eastern Panhandle. City National Bank has been voted the number one bank nine years in a row in the Journal's Reader's Choice poll. City National Bank has also been voted number one in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power & Associates three years in a row. City National Bank is proud to be a red ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. The City National Bank team wishes all of the youth the best of luck. Hello, this is Riley Moore, Republican candidate for state treasurer. The 73rd annual Berkeley County Youth Fair is a special opportunity for our youth to showcase their talent and hard work. We can all be proud here in the region to be one of the few remaining fairs dedicated to youth exhibitors. It is particularly important during COVID-19 that we continue to support the hard work of our youth for this amazing annual youth fair. I'm Riley Moore, and I thank you for your support of our youth. Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. This portion of the program brought to you by the Skinner Law Firm, where we treat you like family. The Skinner Law Firm wishes success to all of this year's youth fair participants. Visit them online at Skinner Firm. Com. Back over to our host for this week's events, Mary Beth Blair. And we are in night four. Welcome back. Market Steer is what we are talking right now. It's Beef Show here at the Virtual Youth Fair tonight at TV10 Studios. And we have only three more classes in the Market Steers to go. And next up is class six. We have six in that class. And Scott's going to introduce us to each one of them. Okay, class six steers are going to be in a weight range of from 1,300 to 1,330 pounds. Our first entry in class six is 122, Peyton Dugan from Spring Mills FFA. And we're definitely getting into the classes now that uh, we're going to get quite a bit of condition across those ribs and you know we're going to get animals really flattened out through that hip just simply because of the amount of weight and stuff they got on. Uh, we got three, maybe even four really good steers in this class here that definitely is going to meet that choice grade. And that's what we're at looking for is the choice grade. There's prime choice select, um, but it's a little tougher to get that prime grade. A lot of times that's EPD's values, but uh, uh, we definitely got some really good steers in this class. Our second entry in this class is 133, Savannah Jenkins. I know yesterday we, we talked about having watch parties. Mark has his own watch party, but he wouldn't actually never step up and say it. So I'm going to make him do it. Who's watching for you, Mark? Oh, I have Aiden and Jacob watching me at home, and uh, they're shocked that I can't talk to them directly. So I am. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, boys. 
Our next entry is 308 Ridge Ross. And he is uh, Hedgesville FFA. I know earlier on we talked about the coat pattern being different. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually over 800 registered breeds of cattle in the world. So a lot That's of huge lot. number of options. Yes. All right, our next entry is 393 Hunter Co. Tuscarora Indians. I know Hunter. Heck of a baseball player in the spring out of Hedgesville. That's my cousin's son. Our fifth entry in this class is entry 395, Jonathan Shade, Musselman FFA. say a cool fact about um, cows in general um, it kind of mem your mimics that of pigs they can see nearly 360 degrees but they struggle to see straight in front of them and that's why a lot of times if you approach them straight on they turn their head to see you that's that wow and our last entry in class six is entry 402 K Kate and Linton from Musselman FFA that's the first one we've seen like that that's a blue roan steer. Okay. And you'll notice a lot of these steers that are groomed, uh, their hair doesn't, some of it's genetics, but some of this hair is due to a lot of hard work of rinsing and blowing that hair, training it to go where you want it. So when it comes time for a show, then you can cut the hair into the shape you want your calf to look. Sometimes, in a virtual fair, that's maybe a more of an advantage. Mm -hmm. If you had hair that you could sculpt and the judge can't get her hand on, you know, maybe that's an advantage today. But uh, a lot of hard work goes yeah. into rinsing, blowing to get a good hair coat on a on a show. Never steer. knew that before. That is so interesting. And and I guess too the question then I have is what's the difference between virtual i mean obviously there's a lot of differences that the judge can't get its hands on the steer what else are they not able to do it that by not being in the actual ring well i mean there's tons of retakes here mm -hmm. i mean the student could have done this four or five times yes uh, when it's at the fair it's for real at that, t <laughs> at that time so when you cross in that ring if there's an animal's not quite walking right mm -hmm. or whatever, that judge is going to pick up on those things. But the touching is the big one. Mm. Being able to put your hands on those ribs to determine that condition. You know, he's trying to see that based on the amount of condition on the brisket or the mm -hmm. amount of condition at the tail head. Uh, and it's just it's just a judgment call here. Right. I mean, I think I think Mr. Spiker done a fantastic job judging this judging the beef show. So well, that's good to know. Well, that was market six, and now we're going to hear from the judge and hear his reasonings behind who he placed and why. As we move into class six, I think we've got three individuals that come to the top of this class that are very competitive, that each of them in their own right would be competitive anywhere you took them. We're gonna begin with a black steer that in my mind is the best combination steer of all these in this drive. I think he's the thickest one when you get behind him. He carries his quarter down low into his lower one third as well as you could ask one. He's wide based. As you kind of get out and look at him from a three quarter view, I like how he fills in through up through his heart girth. I like how long hipped he is. He's big hipped. It looks like he's got a big rib eye on him. Um, if I could get my hands on him, I'd say I would bet he'd handle awful well. I like how extended he is through his front one third. When you get out and look at him on a profile, he just gives you a really attractive look. One that's hard to pick apart, puts a lot of pieces together that are very desirable. And when you set him into motion, he fills his track. I'm not going to say he moves perfect, but he's more than acceptable for me today. Just a really nice total package steer, one that I think this young lady's done a great job with. A good job feeding, and he's presented well, and a nice steer to win this class. As we move on to your second place steer, I really admire the collar of this steer. What a beautiful hair coat on this steer. A young lady has him presented well. This is a high quality steer that's going to win a lot of shows. He just hit a tough one in this class. I think what separates these top two in my mind is when you get behind them. I think this blue steer could be a little deeper in his twist. 
have a little more lower leg for my liking today to get any higher. But aside from that, a really high quality steer that fills his track when you ask him to move. He's going to have a big ribeye on him, I think. Just a lot of high quality parts of this steer that just hit an awful tough one. As we move on to your third place steer, this is a steer that on the standstill you initially think that maybe he's going to win the class. I love how big bodied he is. I like how big backed he is and the turn to his top. He looks like he's got a good amount of condition on him, probably the right amount of condition on him. You get behind him, he's very thick, very deep legged. My issue with him is when you set him into motion. I think he gets a, a little rigid in his hawk. I'd like to see it flex out better. His knee wants to go forward just a shade. And I think those two areas would have to be improved to get any higher in this class. But a high quality steer. A young lady's done a nice job with him. Moving on to your fourth place steer. This is a steer that resembles a top three as well as any in this class from a thickness standpoint. To me he looks pretty square and pretty deep and has some muscle in the center portion of his quarter. He's pretty deep bodied. Just not quite as attractive through his front one third to get any higher in this class. Doesn't quite have the show ring eye appeal as the three above him. But this is a good steer. As we move on to your fourth place steer, this is a, again a steer that hit an awful tough class. There's not many holes in this steer. I don't think he's quite as thick as the ones above him to get any higher, but I do appreciate how smooth patterned he is. I appreciate the fat cover he's laying down. He seems to move well. I love the angle to his pasterns. Just again, not quite enough power there to get any higher in this particular class. As we move on to the steer that, that winds up the class, this is a steer that I'll say it again, hit an awful tough class. He's long bodied, he's smooth patterned. When you put him into motion, he likes to get up underneath himself a little bit on his back too, dropping his pin set. Not wide enough base to get any higher in this class, but I think this steer will have a nice product in the end though. Good set of steers to analyze. Okay, there you have the judges' reasonings, and Scott is going to go back and tell us the placings again. Okay, in first place in class six, we had Savannah Jenkins with a blue ribbon. Second place was Caitlin Linton with a blue ribbon. Third place was Peyton Dugan with a blue ribbon. Fourth place was Jonathan Shade with a red ribbon. Fifth place was Hunter Coe with a red ribbon. And sixth place was Ridge Ross with a white ribbon. So that was Market uh, Steer Class 6, and congratulations to everyone in that class. We only have two more classes to go before we get to the Champion Drive. We'll be back with Class 7. There are five steers to take a look at in that class. And, hey, don't forget, People's Choice Award, you can go online to our website to vote for that. We also have Tuesday's winners already up on um, our website, and I'm going to show you. This is... One of the awards that our People's Choice winners is going to receive. And inside of that are all kinds of goodies. I don't even know. It's, it's packed full of stuff. But a special note to Chick-fil-A of Martinsburg for a gift card that they've put in some of these. And also to Dairy Queen, who has also put some, a gift card in others. So just I'm not sure which one you'll end up getting, but it's full of great stuff for our People's Choice Award winners. Thank you to those two establishments for making those awards possible for you. And um, at some point tonight, I'll give a shout out to last night's People's Choice winners. Um, but just make sure that you go on and vote for your favorite tonight in the Beef Show. And we'll be back after this word from our sponsors. This portion of the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair brought to you by the Berkeley Morgan County Health Department. They're at 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg. If you have any questions, you can phone them at 304-263-5131 or visit them online at bchealthdept.org. Back with more of the Youth Fair after this. In our present crisis, we need inspired problem solvers, not the kind of politics we always get from the politicians who take us for granted. Daniel Bennett is running for delegate because he believes that the problems we face will be solved by the hands, the hearts, and the hard work of West Virginians. You know that there's no more hardworking individual that would work for you as your member um, in your district for West Virginia. I'm Daniel Bennett. 
and I'm running for a delegate to give back, pay it forward, and to be your voice in Charleston. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. Boyd Veterinary Service in Jaredstown is dedicated to the health and wellness of your herd, offering health and reproductive services and now scheduling flushes and donor housing for fall 2020 at our new donor facility in Jaredstown. Dr. John Boyd wants to thank all exhibitors for participating in the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair and wishes each one success with their projects. That's Boyd Veterinary Service, phone 304-279-0217. The historic McFarland House Inn and Restaurant is excited to introduce a fresh new summer menu and an all-new curbside menu. There are so many incredible new dishes to explore and enjoy from Chef Weldon and some fan favorites that will remain by popular demand. Check out the new menus on our website at historicmcfarlandhouse.com or our Facebook page. You can dine inside our charming historic home or outside in our beautiful garden. Call 304-263-1890 today to reserve your table or to place a curbside order to go. Our dad taught us a lot about the law, but he taught us even more about life and people. He taught us to treat clients like family. At the Skinner Law Firm, the firm our father started here in the Eastern Panhandle, we still believe that. We also believe that everyone has the right to be protected from those who don't play by the rules. We believe it's about helping people. Call us at the Skinner Law Firm, where we treat you like family. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. Welcome back into the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair 2020. Hopefully, first and only time that this fair has to go virtual. It's pretty much been the message. Absolutely. Been the message of the week first so far. Only. First yes. and only. This portion of the Youth Fair before we get back into Class 7 of the Market Steers. This segment brought to you by West Virginia Secretary of State Democratic candidate Natalie Tennant, who was all of the youth participating in this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. All the success they deserve. Back over to our host and the voice you just heard, Mary Beth Blair. Thank you, Matt. And I'm so encouraged by all the people chiming in on our social media. Um, thank you, Chris Carter, who said all you young people did a great job. I echo that amazing job, not just a good job, an amazing, well, he said great job. So, and then Connie Emmerich wanted to let us know that she loves watching all the species. She's been there every night that her family has watching everyone. And then I've been getting some texts from my friend, Barbie Frankenberry, who has been giving me information, but also encouraging me along the way. And she said, even those of us who've been around for a long time are learning a lot this week during the virtual fair. And I think that's one thing that we'll take away from this year's youth fair that maybe has never been a possibility is that many people are going in different directions at the fair and they don't get to see all the shows or they're so busy in the concession stand that they don't get to hear all these facts and and see all the hard work of the youth in our community so there you have it the virtual fair is going to accomplish something that the actual fair cannot so we're all going to have a greater appreciation for the berkeley county youth fair next year and i'm predicting we're going to see a lot more folks involved and coming out and seeing the shows I know I, for one, can't wait to see these shows in the ring. I want to see these youth handling them. I want to see how different it is. I want to see the showmanship uh, judging, too. I've learned so much about that. So here we go. Uh, we're, we're, if you've just joined us, welcome. And we are 
doing the um, we're tonight is beef show night and right now we are at class 7 market steers we have class 7 and class 8 uh, to go before we get to the champion drive and right now Scott is going to introduce you to five great exhibitors uh, with uh, class 7 okay class 7 steers are coming in with a estimated weight range of 1,349 pounds up to 1,400 pounds, five entries. All right, and exhibitor one will be number 20, Brianna Jenkins from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H. I'll note that a lot of these steers, they go to a lot of shows. They don't just come to the Berkeley County Youth Fair. Now, will they? this be their final fair where they actually sell and they don't this, show again? Yeah, this is the terminal show. Okay. This is where the end of the line for the steer. The, everything all year has been building to reach the out, optimum weight and uh, finish uh, for this fair. So is going to the other shows part of a preparation it's a preparation and it's a to learn how you can improve it's, it's a hobby i mean it's a lifestyle for a mm -hmm. lot of people they like to get out and go to shows sure. and, and their jackpot shows you know so what does that, that mean i've heard that, that means said a lot this week there's a, a prize money oh okay out there are five hundred dollar for the grand champion thousand dollars for the grand champion various shows so they travel they get out and go it's a good family experience mm -hmm. good good family fun and uh it's a great, great way to get out and be together. Yeah, I can see that. Our second exhibitor in Class 7 is Summer Weberling, Musselman FFA. And she's 323, is that correct? Mm -hmm. 323. And just to add to what Scott brought up, you know, a lot of kids are putting so much effort in this, and that's why, you know, you hear us joke about it and call it it's its own sport. It truly is, and the an amount of effort and time some of these exhibitors put into these animals, it truly is their sport. I'm glad you said that because I was, it almost came out of my mouth, sport, but I I'll say backed it. off the hobby. <laughs> I'll say it. The third entry is 336, Andrew Bohr, Tomahawk 4-H. We'll have to pick on Andrew here a little bit. He normally has the red and white steer for us, and he's kind of uh, tricking us here this year with he's pulling out his black and white calf. So, If you look at the hind leg on, on these steers, you can see how the hair is pulled and glued and to make that uh, bottom of the leg wider. You want that to be on a steer. You want a big base on your steer. So... If you got to do an optical illusion with it, with hair, all the better. Mm -hmm. But that's, if you've noticed that all evening, that's what that's about. Our fourth entry is 392, Hunter Brock, Musselman FFA. I'm still trying to imagine these young people working with their coat. I, I've never heard that before, that they actually blow dry mm -hmm. and cut and groom a steer. I did not know that. Yeah. That's For hours a day. They're it's not just a one thing. At least thing. twice a day, sometimes three times a day. Rinse, blow, comb. Always comb the same direction. Always get it going. And, and I can really notice it on this one. Maybe it's just the coloring. The blacks also look really yep. sheer when you see their coat. But this, was that considered brown or red? It's red. Red, I thought. Okay, so it just really shows the, 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 the coat well. And it takes a, a, a groomer with a really fine hand with clippers to get mm -hmm. that all clipped and are they doing it. the clipping as well a lot of our exhibitors uh -huh. do their own yes wow. some Very have impressive. helped but at our fair the kids either do it or have somebody there with them and they're happen. allowed to that they're doesn't allowed. have to be done no. all by right. them okay they, they just have to be participating okay our last exhibitor in this class is 396 caleb fox back creek valley mountaineers 
and we talk about how popular beef is and the reason why is you know six ounces of beef has all the protein you need for mm -hmm. a whole day you know it's a complete protein um, so that means it has all the amino acids that you need to re you know repair body tissue that type of stuff so I mean it is a great thing to consume for those reasons mm -hmm. What would you say the percentage of young people who are showing at this level um, go on to have be involved in this in some type of a career in their future? Um, I'd say a good many. I have personal experience. My mm -hmm. son showed for years. His uh, uncle and grandfather showed for years mm -hmm. and got us into it. And uh, because of his love of beef, he's now a veterinarian and working with only right. beef cattle so there's a lot of kids that this just becomes a way of life, way of and, life. and they end up you know raising cattle passion, raising, yeah. raising hogs you know wow all right so it's time for class seven judges reasonings as we move into class seven i think we have two steers that rise to the top that you can make a case for either one of them. I think both of them are very high quality steers, but with that said, they're both different in their own right. I'm going to begin with the red steer. I absolutely love a still shot. I think when you look at that still picture, it's just really hard to, to not love that picture. When I look at the video, I think that he, he doesn't disappoint you when you put him into motion. You still love the volume that he has and the thickness. If I'm going to change him, I think he's a little bit short coupled. When I look at him as he moves from hooks to pins, I don't think he's quite as long as I'd like to see him over his hip compared to how long he is in the back. I'd sure like to dress him up just a little bit in his throat latch, but with that said, he sure brings a lot to the table that's desirable from a show, show ring standpoint, from a thickness and condition standpoint, and again, I think he moves really well. That's an awful nice steer. As we move into your second place steer, this is a larger statured steer, bigger frame calf, but boy, his still shot is, is stunning. That's a really longer pattern steer than the steer that wins a class he's longer through his front one third i think he might even be a little longer hip but with that said i think his pin sets just a little bit low not quite as soggy in his flank as the steer that wins a class but again if a guy wanted to argue between those two steers i don't think that you could i think you could make a case for either one is what i'm trying to say both these are good steers i think that the red steer is a little deeper flanked a little more level hipped little cleaner in his chest floor. That's why I'm going to use him today, but I do love this black white face steer. As we move on to your third, fourth, and fifth place steers, these steers are very similar in their makeup. I think the third place steer is the thickest steer of the bunch. I think he resembles a top two as well as any when you look at how square he is over his hip and how far he carries his quarter down. I like his rib cage. I like him down the top, the turn to his top. I'm going to dress him up some. I'd like to clean him up in his chest floor. I don't want to see his forearm have any straighter of an angle, I'll say that, but I love him from his shoulders back. As we move on to the fourth place steer, this is a steer that is fault free on the profile. A lot of nice pieces. He gives up a little bit of thickness and a little bit of bone to get any higher in the class, but that's an awful nice steer in his own right. I'll say the same thing about the yellow steer that winds, winds up the class. This is a steer that's long, has a lot of nice parts, he's hard to pick apart. He's just not quite as thick as the ones above him. Doesn't quite give you the show ring look to get any higher in this class. A very nice set of steers. And that was Class 7, Matt, um, of the Market Steers. And we're going to go to Scott to tell us the placings. Okay, in first place, we had Hunter Brock with a blue ribbon. Second place was Andrew Bohr with a blue ribbon. Third place, Caleb Fox with a red ribbon. Fourth place, Summer Weaverling with a red ribbon. And in fifth place was Brianna Jenkins, a white ribbon. Great job everyone in class seven. We have one more class to go in the market steers, correct? Correct. I need to clear one thing up. Oh, though. yes, please. <laughs> Before you I, get in trouble. I noted that uh, my son's uncle and uh, grandfather were steer show people, but uh, note that his mother 
was also quite a beef showman as well. I will never look at Tammy the same way again. I'm going to have, well, I've always had admiration for her, but gosh, that's impressive too, Tammy. You saved the best for last. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Well, here we are almost through the market steer uh, section of the beef show. We have one more to go, class eight. And I understand there's some really big steers in this one. Actually, just three, right? Yeah, three. Three in this. Three this heavyweights. One. Three heavyweights, they call them. So we're going to head out to commercial and come back and check these out. This portion of the youth fair has been brought to you by Hagerstown Ford. They are changing the car buying experience. See their full list of inventory and check out what they're doing in Hagerstown at Hagerstown Ford at FordofHagerstown.com. But if you type in HagerstownFord.com, it will take you to the exact same spot. The internet's an amazing thing. Back with more of the Youth Fair after this. WV Medicine joins with the community in celebrating the hard work and dedication of all the youth in our area who will be a part of the first ever Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. WV Medicine applauds the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board for making this virtual fair possible and doing their part to protect the health and safety of our community by not having a traditional fair at the fairgrounds this year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. WV Medicine is proud to be a blue ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. If you need to speak with a lawyer about an insurance claim or motor vehicle wreck, at Mansion Ferretti we rely on 100 years of combined personal injury and trial experience to win your case. There is no charge for meeting with us and there is no fee unless we win. Mansion Ferretti excels because we are local, experienced in our courts, and always working hard to develop the personal relationship with clients that makes a difference. Call us at 304-264-8505 or go to wvjusticelawyers.com. At Mansion Ferretti, it's about seeking justice for you. I'm Natalie Tennant. As West Virginians, we'll get through this crisis together. We've been knocked down before, and we get back up. I've been there with you, and I'll be there again working for a better future, like I did as Secretary of State. By modernizing the office, I saved you money and gave it back, lowered fees and helped businesses create jobs, and made voting easier. We need that kind of leadership again. It takes courage, vision, and cooperation. I know we can do this, West Virginia. I believe in you. When you overlook the ridge of our mountains, paddle down our rivers, or talk to our people, you can see how much potential West Virginia has. I'm running for governor to bring new and fresh solutions to the problems holding us back. My only agenda is West Virginia people, which is why I will always put people before politics. I will bring transparency to Charleston and am dedicated to preserving the liberty and freedoms of all West Virginians. I am Erica Kalenich, the Libertarian nominee for governor, and I hope to earn your vote in November. Congratulations to the participants in the Berkeley County Youth Fair. What you are doing now is so important. You are our future. As the chair of the West Virginia State Senate Education Committee, I am working to ensure that you have the opportunity to be the best you can be. I am rooting for you. Paid for by Rucker for WV, Lynn Statton, Treasurer. Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair, brought to you by second congressional Democratic candidate Kathy Kunkel, who wishes the best to all of this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair participants. Back over to our host of this week's events, Mary Beth Blair. But Mary Beth, before I send it back to you, okay, yes. I do have a question for our beef experts to my left. It's coming directly from the top, station owner Mike Hornby. We talked yesterday about how certain breeds of hogs taste it a little bit different is it the same way with steers or cows in general i would say no okay it all depends on how you cross an animal out the marbling that you get inside the muscle 
is determine the flavor and the palatability. Mm -hmm. So as long as these animals, especially these last couple classes, you're gonna have a condition you need to get that marbling in there. So that's what you would want. So there you go, Mike. I, well, then I'm going to ask a question, follow up from Mike's question to you guys. Since you said the word marbling, we were talking about that earlier. I was sharing with you my experience and knowledge of, of uh, buying a beef. And how, does, how do these young um, people who are raising these animals, how do you get better marbling? Is that through, you say, the word conditioning? And how do they, wh what's the process? Uh, is it what they eat? Is it how they exercise them? What? Well, I mean, all of it really plays into it. Genetics is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. So a student needs to select an animal that is going to have the genetic profile. Okay. Um, they may select those from a visual presentation or they may select it from a, a genetic point. Okay. Um, so there's expected progency difference. And in that expected progency differences, there's marbling scores. So wow. okay. bulls and stuff that are selected are selected for marbling counts so that we ended up with choice grades. Uh, there's bulls that you select that have prime and obviously those are a lot more expensive. Most of the bulls and the things going to be used for a lot of our kids for their um, fair projects are more of what they would call club type bulls, uh, club calf bulls. Mm -hmm. And that's where you'll see a lot of these really fancy big hip type uh, cattle, very flat made, mm -hmm. uh, big ribbed, uh, wide chested and they're able to move. The big part of all of it is they need to select first on structure. Make sure that animal can walk because think about you're selecting a 400 pound animal mm. and it needs to finish at 1300 pounds. And of course, Scott and all the people at the fair, they do a great job of getting our kids to understand where they need to have these animals targeted at. Mm -hmm. So a student that has an animal that finished out at 1,000 pounds, 1,100 pounds, may know that it's not gonna fit, have the marbling that that animal at 1,300 pounds is gonna mm -hmm. have. And of course, our judge knows that, uh, Mr. Spiker grades cattle and everything else. So uh, when you do that, you wanna try to hit that 1,300 pound. The problem with a hitting a 1,300 pound class is if you had 12 or 15, 20 animals at 1,300, there's only one gonna win that class. So right. you still have a child in the, in the 900, 1,000 pound range, they win a class, you know? And sometimes you have those animals a little shorter in stature. Mm -hmm. You have a small, medium, and large framed animal. So mm -hmm. when you do that, you just kind of select there and figure out where you're gonna finish. And they ask their chairs, you know, where do I need to finish this animal out? And of course, Scott would say, well, this is a larger framed animal, so you better be pushing close to 1,400 pounds mm -hmm. to get it to a choice grade. How do they push it? It's through feed. Feed, feed. Yep, okay. through feed, yep. Got it. And then if you get overfed whatever then the exercise comes into play you yep. got to keep them moving yes. keep okay. them exercising and what, what what would be typical exercise just walking the ring walking a ring mm -hmm. a, a hillside alleyway where you go up and down a hill mm -hmm. We've, so there's a lot more goes into these oh. Uh, they, yeah. I don't even like you, when you say a project it's not really a project no, but it, <laughs> oh my god it's gosh. a lifestyle it's a yes. passion and, so. and when Scott said a moment ago, he said something about glue, and, and some may not know that. I mean, I, I, and Miss Frankenberry, please forgive me, but I'm not going to call this a beauty contest. But in a way, <laughs> it is for these steers. You know, you're trying to get an animal where it needs to be. So uh -huh. you may have to take and add some glue and stuff and add some hair to lower that flank down to make this animal what it needs mm -hmm. to be. It's all part of the process. And the students that really step up and go to other shows, jackpot shows and stuff, the um that Scott's talking about. Yeah. It's amazing what they learn over a period mm -hmm. two, three, four years. So your second, third year member here, by the time they're a fifth, sixth year member, it's really impressive to watch them be able to take and walk at Styrian and it will stop on a dime mm -hmm. and just almost set itself up. And it's just, it's just a pleasure to watch these kids grow into these projects. Absolutely. And I guess too, when you're at the beef show, it's a progression through the night. So oh, you're yeah. seeing the start to kind of finish yes. um, uh, process. So learning a lot here at the virtual fair gosh are you adding all these things to my quiz i would say mark is literally the most like knowledgeable man i know mm -hmm. so like anytime i'm around him like i'm always like taking notes taking i'm like well notes. he said You're that taking one notes tonight absolutely okay. all right well let's move right on class eight market steers let's see hear the weights on those scott okay the weights for class eight are the re estimated weight range is 1,450 pounds That's to 1,607 big. pounds. That's big. And our first entry in class eight is 145, William Bear, Musselman FFA. This will be Willie's last year showing. He's aging out and he's been uh, a constant in the barn for a number of years. So 
He was one, on one of my state winning livestock judging teams and went to the nationals and competed. He is from a wonderful family. Our second entry in class eight is 387, mm -hmm. Blaine Barkas. All right, I'm going to correct you. From Hedges Little Superchargers. I know Please that because it's my family. Okay, it's I'm Barges. Sorry. Barges, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Blaine. I, now, see, it with that camera angle, I can see how shiny and well-groomed that that one is. It's all in the videoing, so you can see different things, I think, too. I, and I actually can, I mean, I really, I can see the, no other way I can describe it, massive difference between the first class all the way up to this class. These are big guys. Blaine would love for you to buy that. <laughs> I bet. Our last entry in this class is 389, Connor Long from Blue Ridge Helping Hands 4-H. I'll say, or you could buy a pretty one and, you know, get its hide <laughs> turned into a rug. <laughs> yeah. Extra purposes other option, than just me. Right? That'd make right. a nice looking rug right there. It would make a nice looking <laughs> rug. I never thought of it. That, uh, yeah, I never thought of that. I have to start telling uh, my brother-in-law when I get my beef, I want, I want a rug out mm -hmm. of it too, not just the meat. <laughs> All right, there are, that's our three class eight market steers, the big ones. And we're gonna hear from the judges reasons. I've been corrected in the studio. I don't know why Mikey just now told me that I've been saying it wrong all night. Sorry, it's not reasonings, it's the judges reasons. So I think I picked it up from him. No ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's hear. As we move into Class 8, I don't think any of these three steers disappoint you at all when you look at them from a structure standpoint, a thickness standpoint, condition standpoint. To me, the red and white colored steer comes to the top from a standpoint of overall thickness, especially in his hip. This is a big hipped steer that has a lot of muscle in the center portion of his quarter when you're behind him. He gets around and seems to move with some flexibility. I think the thing that separates him to me from the white steer is in his heart girth. I think he fills out a little bit better, especially on the profile as you analyze him from hind flank to fore flank. This white steer is a good steer. He's very long bodied. I like the angles to his legs. He's got some muscle to him. A lot of good in him. Even at that weight, I don't think he's he's too overdone from what I can tell in the video. These are two good steers. And as we move on to the third place steer, this is a really smooth pattern steer. His weight, to me, is a little bit beyond what I would call ideal, but with that said, he's a bigger frame steer that can handle it well. These are three awful good steers, and you can switch them around however you like and probably make a case for it, but that's how I see him today. I'd like to congratulate each of these guys. Okay, and let's hear the placings one more time. In first place was Connor Long with a blue ribbon. Second place was William Bear with a red ribbon. And in third place was Blaine Barges with a red ribbon. Congratulations. And remember, out of those three, the, the second place actually will, um, well, I guess if the top guy, I was thinking about, I'm trying to get ahead of, ahead of myself. And no, I was trying to impress everyone. I'm not going to try to do that anymore with my knowledge. But <laughs> we, we know that the top ones all go into the champion drive. So if this one would win, in the grand, which I have no idea. I don't know any of the winners other than what I pick myself because I'm trying to figure these things out. That the first and second in any class could potentially be in the running for top two. Second that is, is what I meant to say. And with that, we will be back after this break with that champion drive of the uh, market steers. So stay with us. This portion of the Youth Fair brought to you by WVU Medicine, Berkeley, and Jefferson Medical Center, the best in health care close to home. Berkeley Medical Center right here in Martinsburg, Jefferson Medical Center in downtown Charlestown. Back with more from the Youth Fair. We'll have our grand champion steers next.
In our present crisis, we need inspired problem solvers, not the kind of politics we always get from the politicians who take us for granted. Daniel Bennett is running for delegate because he believes that the problems we face will be solved by the hands, the hearts, and the hard work of West Virginians. You know that there's no more hardworking an individual that would work for you as your member um, in your district for West Virginia. I'm Daniel Bennett, and I'm running for a delegate to give back, pay it forward, and to be your voice in Charleston. I'm Rod Hawker for Johnny's, where we've been serving the community for over 65 years. That means one thing, you've been supporting us for over 65 years. So to all of our customers at our Chambersburg and Martinsburg locations, we'd like to say a great big thank you for your continued patronage. You've been there for us and we'll continue to be there for you with restaurant quality foods at wholesale prices. And if you haven't tried Johnny's yet, what are you waiting for? Stop in at either location and experience the Johnny's difference today. Hi, this is Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10's Rob Mario. My family first stayed at La Bella Vita at Deep Creek Lake in Maryland several summers ago, and we've gone back every summer since. La Bella Vita is owned by Martinsburg residents who've meticulously decorated and furnished this amazing mountaintop vacation home with breathtaking lake views that is only two hours away, featuring five bedrooms, five and a half bathrooms, a fireplace, a large family room with an 85-inch TV, a hot tub, and multiple decks. There's lots more of the La Bella Vita experience to enjoy, including Deep Creek Lake itself, a 3,900-acre lake with 69 miles of shoreline. It's a great combination, and it's waiting for you. So take it from somebody who's been there multiple times. You are going to love staying at La Bella Vita at Deep Creek Lake. For more information, visit the Facebook page or contact Taylor Made Deep Creek Vacation vacations and sales or call 301-750-2182. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price, and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Welcome back into the virtual 2020 Berkeley County Youth Fair. This portion of the program is brought to you by 60th House of Delegates District Democratic candidate Brad Knoll, who wishes all the best to this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair participants. For the uh, big awards now, we're going to send it back over to the host of this week's events, Mary Beth Blair. Let's see if I can get this right. So there have been eight classes. We have eight of the top placers it was the well the eight top placers the top one in every class we're going to reintroduce you to those eight um here in just a second and they are all up for grand champion market steer and once we um know who that is then we will also hear from the judge about the reserve champion and this year tonight we're going to do it a little differently we're going to let the judge do the announcing of his picks, and I think it's going to be interesting to hear all of that. So, Scott, would you reintroduce us to our champion drive? Sure. I'm going to let uh, Mark have the honors of doing that. Oh, okay. Right. Mark. From class one, <clears throat> we have number 280, Julia Snyder from Spring Mills FFA. Class two is 229, Benjamin Byers from Mount Airy Winners. From class three, 112, Madison Bear, Musselman FFA. From class four, 108, Lindsey Walls, Scrabble Scramblers, 4-H. Class five, Exhibitor 400, 
McKenzie Files, Spring Mills FFA. From Class 6, Exhibitor 133, Savannah Jenkins, Scrabble Scramblers 4-H. From Class 7, Exhibitor 392, Hunter Brock, Musselman FFA. And from our last class, Class 8, Exhibitor 389, Connor Long, Blue Ridge Helping Hands 4-H. Okay, well now we're going to hear from our judge. Give me just one second, make sure I get the right file in there. Okay. I'm trying to make sure I get, because I know we have the reserves reasonings along with the, uh, the grand champion reasonings. See, you said it. I've passed that along. Sorry, Matt. I did, yeah. You... It's reason, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> that felt good to correct him <laughs> since you corrected me. <laughs> Matt, you're doing an awesome job. This is a lot. Got to get it right. Absolutely, and I think I have it. Pretty sure that, because this is the uh, file you sent me, correct? Right before? No, all right, we're on different wavelengths then. All right, try and find the audio for the grand. And while he's looking for that, let me just say that as we get to the end of this uh, market steer show, that means we will be heading into getting closer to the hour of when the livestock auction will open. It's a big deal tonight. It opens at 7. You can start your bidding. You can view. I saw a preview on Mikey's phone here earlier, and you'll actually see a picture of the market animal. You're going to know the name of the exhibitor. And so it's, it's very self-explanatory. You're going to go into that and not have any problem navigating and finding um, just shopping. So we really want to encourage you to do that. And coming up after this big announcement, Drew is in the studio somewhere down the hallway. He's going to come and join us, and he's going to talk about the auction specifically and answer any of your questions if you, of course, were to send me those questions. Maybe he'll answer all my questions. But I think we're ready. We do have the judges' reasons for the uh, champion drive. Before I start talking about the steers in this grand drive, I'd like to first compliment these kids for the work they've done getting these animals ready and taking going through the extra effort it takes to, to show these animals in unique circumstances. Looks like there's families working together and friends helping, and, and that's a really good thing. And my hat's off to the fair committee and all the advisors or whoever has helped put this on. This is a, a good thing to give them a chance to show and and it's, it's good to see him working through this, and they'll be better for it on the other end. It looks like a really hard-working group of kids that have done an excellent job. These are hard projects. A lot of these projects started over a year ago, and, and they've put a lot of time and effort and money and work in these, and they should be commended for that. With that said, I'll try not to babble on too long. When I look at these class winners out of this market steer drive, there's four that I like awful well, and they come out of two classes. In class six, I really like your first and second place steer. And in class seven, the first and second place steers. I think those four steers, you can kind of make a case for any of them to win this show. And probably a lot of them in a lot of different areas, they just walk right through the county fair and, and win it. Um, I, I would love to see them in the arena and, and be able to compare them, compare their hip height, compare the condition by getting my hands on them. Um, unfortunately, that's not an option, so I'm going to do my best to analyze condition and thickness and soundness from what I see on the screen here. And But with that said, there's no doubt in my mind these four steers are awfully competitive, and I think the best here. I don't want to leave out the Class 3 winner. I think that's an awful good steer. I, it's a, kind of hard to look at him not being on a level surface, but there's no doubt in my mind that steer has a lot of quality too. Not quite as good as these four, but he's he'd be a close fifth. Excuse me. But getting down to it, I, when I say the four steers come out of two classes, that boils down to two steers to look at for grand champion. Um, we'll begin with a class six describing him some. This is a steer that hit me hard in class. He beat two awful good steers in that class. Um, this is a steer that, that combines a lot of things you want in a fat steer. I think he has an enormous amount of true muscle in him when you get behind him. 
it carries down deep into his lower quarter and he's got plenty in the center portion of his quarter he looks like when you look at him from the side view that he's got plenty of muscle into his stifle looks like he's got a big back on him and his condition looks fresh to me I think that he's extended he's filled in well over at 13th rib from what I can see and and when he gets out and moves he fills his track I'm not going to say that that like I said in class he doesn't move perfect I think he tends to maybe want to get a little bit bow-legged and not quite as fluent as the other steer we're looking at in this drive but there's a lot of quality in this steer I like when you get him on the side view how he comes up out of his chest floor into a pretty extended front end he's got a good angle to a scapula just a lot of quality in this steer I think the young lady did a good job getting him ready and and feeding him the whole nine yards with that said that move on to describe your winner out of class seven this red steer I think I don't think that you could get a better still shot of one he takes it he took an outstanding picture and and initially when you see that picture I think that um, if we just had to go on pictures that one you wouldn't have to think about it too hard that's an outstanding still shot there's not much you change from that it changes a little bit when we look at the video um, the steer still has a lot of quality and a lot of good about him I don't think he's quite as extended as he appears in the picture when you look at him navigate around the yard I question how long coupled he is he looks a little bit short from hooks to pins and he can be dressed up some up through his throat latch he's not quite as extended through his front end and pretty in that area but wow what a what a pretty hair coat a good job this young man's done getting a good hair coat on him this steer moves well I like how he gets out and flexes from what I can see on the picture a lot of quality in this steer too completely different than the other steer we're looking at I think I think there's differences in types and kind probably a little more fluent in his joints not quite as extended through his front one-third as a black one but he gives you a really soft look the black steer I think is a little longer hipped and a little more attractive up through his throat latch and probably fresher in his overall condition and design I think when you look from behind on these two steers the black steer has a little more true muscle especially in the center portion of his quarter he's a little fresher in his overall makeup for being a finished fat steer and he's a little more extended and cleaner up through his front one-third for that reason I would use a black one to win this show the black steer will be your champion out of class six so that brings in a good one to choose to compare to your red one the blue one that was second in class to your black steer that's an awful nice steer too I think that when you analyze him from the side profile he maybe is a little bit bold towards it towards his front one-third wants to get a little bit crusty but you take that away and look at him he's got plenty of body plenty of bone he's got a lot of hip to him and a big back could be a little deeper in his twist I think when you get behind him but that's a good blue steer like I said there's four steers that could win this show but I don't think you can leave the red one out of the hunt I would make him reserve champion and congratulate all the kids from one end to the other especially these top four because I think those are outstanding steers so your black steer will be champion out of class out of class six and your red steer that wins class seven will be your reserve congratulations well there you have it grand champion and reserve champion market steers they were fine looking animals right Scott absolutely wow what a great show just so now we're gonna maybe do you want to read those again the names of it because sure. we only went by the numbers so I'd love to say their names now and okay. congratulate well, congratulations them. congratulations to our grand champion market steer that goes to Savannah Jenkins good job Savannah congratulations Savannah Scrabble Scramblers 4-H great job and with that she's gonna get some awards she's gonna get a $25 award sponsored by Walt's Vault Service she'll get a Grand Champion Trophy sponsored by Arden Equipment Repair she's gonna get a jacket sponsored by Patriot Auction Center a banner sponsored by Windy Rock Farm George and Brenda Miller and the rotating plaque that gets her name put on it for in per, per, perpetuity <laughs> she'll be there forever uh, the Ned Morrow Memorial Berkeley County Farm Bureau plaque so congratulations to Savannah Jenkins 
And our reserve champion today was Hunter Brock. Congratulations, Hunter. Great job. He'll receive a $10 award from the SC Beard III Memorial. He's going to receive the reserve champion trophy from Arden Equipment Repair. He'll receive a jacket from Matco Tools and a banner from Jefferson Security Bank. Matco Tools is also J.R. Barrett and Christina Barrett. They sponsored that. We'd like to thank all these sponsors for making this happen for these kids. Uh, they put in so much hard work, and it's nice that you acknowledge that uh, the work that goes into that with these awards. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Well, one of my questions was answered. I was thinking about this when we got to the champion drive. You, are the biggest always, you know, do they always finish at the top? And that's not the case. So it's not it's not a weight issue, you know, or a, a, in the class issue. It's not the biggest necessarily. Yep. There's so much more that goes into that. So, I mean, I kind of figured that, but um, I was thinking that in my head that I was going <laughs> to see how it all shook out. But congratulations. Those were great looking animals and now in just a few minutes i should say seven o'clock hour those will be up for bid actually pretty much all of those that we saw tonight so far should be up for bidding later on and we're going to hear a little bit more about that here in a second uh scott did you want to say a few more words well i just wanted to thank you all the the exhibitors especially mm -hmm. they had to make a choice to participate in this mm -hmm. this year so it was a big deal with working a whole long year feeding these things. And sure. They had to decide whether to enter this virtual fair or we're going and try to and butcher are, it or yeah. do whatever. So There are a uh, lot th that participated, so, really. You know, I know all these kids and um, appreciate them making the effort to participate in this virtual fair. Yes. Great job with your videos. Great effort. So impressive. Um, and with that now being announced we will go into our break thank you both oh you are coming back a little bit later we're going to bring drew in to talk auction stuff and then we're going to actually we have a whole bunch more where that came from for the beef show um if i'm correct we have the angus show coming up at 6 45 so stick with us we have several different shows to go we uh, actually we're going up to the nine o'clock hour with cattle and beef the beef show so it's beef beef all night long until we get to the poultry show. Right, Matt? Absolutely. Looking forward to another yeah. fun-filled night of fair It's already activities. been great, yes. This portion of the fair has been brought to you by Brown Funeral Home and Cremation. Robert Field and Sons, a full-service family-owned funeral home, proudly serving the area since 1880. Back to talk the auction part of the evening with the Youth Fair next. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. WV Medicine joins with the community in celebrating the hard work and dedication of all the youth in our area who will be a part of the first ever Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. WV Medicine applauds the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board for making this virtual fair possible and doing their part to protect the health and safety of our community by not having a traditional fair at the fairgrounds this year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. WV Medicine is proud to be a blue ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair. Orsini's not just an appliance store anymore. They're your one-stop resource for all home needs, whether it's custom kitchen design, countertops or cabinets, or check out their new sleep studio with Tempur-Pedic Sealy and Stearns and Foster. For all of your outdoor living needs, Orsini's has Gladiator Garage Works, Traeger Grills, barbecue accessories, barbecue rubs and sauces, and every flavor wood pellets. Visit their brand new 8200 square foot showroom at 360 Hack Wilson Way, 304-267-7251, Orsini's.com. Panhandle Homes has helped build Berkeley County into West Virginia's showcase community one home at a time. We're proud to be from Berkeley County, the home of the country's longest consecutive running youth fair. We were born here, we grew up here, we know many of you, and you know us. Panhandle Homes wishes all of our youth of Berkeley County nothing but the best for this year's virtual youth fair. Panhandle Homes of Berkeley County, here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for you. 
PanhandleHomesWV.com. My dad, Brad Nall, is running for the House of Delegates 60th. He needs your vote to improve the poor infrastructure exposed by the pandemic. That includes better internet, cell phone, and roads. Thanks, Laura. I also want to keep our young people like you in West Virginia. Brad Nall needs your vote to make a difference on these issues. Remember, when it's time to vote in the fall, you need to vote for Brad Nall. Paid for by candidate. Berkeley County Sheriff Curtis Keller wishes the best of luck to all the exhibitors in this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair and congratulates the fair board and volunteers who worked so hard to make sure we could still celebrate this important community event. Curtis Keller and his wife Becky have been longtime supporters of the youth fair and have volunteered many hours serving at this important community event. Curtis Keller has been serving this community as a law enforcement officer for more than 30 years. Please help us reelect Curtis Keller as your new sheriff of Berkeley County. Paid, Paid for, for by, by candidate. candidate. Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. It's time to talk auctions. But before we do that, I want to remind you this portion of the program is brought to you by 63rd District Delegate John Hardy. who wishes all the best for this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair participants and wishes them the best of luck as well. Now back over to our hosts and let's talk some, uh, let's talk some auctions right now, Mary Beth. Okay, Matt. Well, we are ready to get educated on be how to become a market buyer. So that's something I want to learn tonight, how my company can become a buyer. I've never done that before. And many of you um, at home, maybe you're saying, wow, I've never had an opportunity to do that. Whether you're just too busy at the fair and you've never been able to sit in on a show and be a buyer, or you're watching the fair and you never even knew this opportunity existed. Um, now we're going to learn how we can do that. And in the studio with us, um, is the gentleman who is going to teach us everything we need to know about the uh, livestock auction, who is running it, and I guess you're actually an auctioneer too. I am licensed. Yes. So yes, you're going to do you're going to do some auctioneering for us tonight. Well, and... I mean, if we have to, if that's part <laughs> of the get to get it done, we can. But it's very impressive. Um, we're going to actually bring up the website here in a second. But first of all, welcome Drew. Um, Drew Bohr is with us, and he is going to talk, walk us through. And we're going to do two segments, so don't feel rushed. You know, and, and the great thing is, is you can watch this again. This will be on tomorrow as a repeat, right, Matt? Yep. And of course, archived on YouTube, so you can go back and watch it. If you get online, maybe tomorrow, and you're struggling, you'll be able to go back and and hear this and watch this all again. But we were talking before we started, Drew, and you said 183 lots, which means animals for sale. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That, that is correct. 183 lots. They're going to consist of 44 steers. 86 hogs, 29 lambs, and 24 goats. So they're all going to be up for sale. The sale opens tonight. Okay. And it will close on Friday. Now we'll get into that part when I say close here in a little yes. bit. Because that's a little different to some people. But let's talk about where you can find it at. Okay. You'll be able to find it either on the Berkeley County Youth Fair website. Okay. Or at www.juniorfairauctions.com. Okay. So if you go right there, Matt, if you can scroll over to events, I don't know if you can do that from here or not. Right there it is. Look at there. That's so easy. It's so easy. Yes. If you want to register to top, right there in the middle, log in or register to bid. So someone had asked that earlier. They said, do we have to be a buyer to see it? And no, that, you don't. They don't it, so. is, it is an open sale, so you don't have to register. You can go in and, and see all the lots, see mm -hmm. what everything's doing. If you wish um, to purchase or bid, you do have to go in. That's just our format letter. Tells you a little right. bit about what's going on in the frequently asked questions by the WINT group. So here in about uh, 40 minutes, the sale will go live. They're back here in the back room now, finishing up the steer results, getting the lineups done. Yes. Exciting sale, exciting week here at the fair. Mm -hmm. So we're really happy to be able to put this on. This was just a grassroots efforts to try to get things off the ground. I mean, mm -hmm. with the COVID situation, we have to get these kids out. They're essentially small businesses. Yes. You know? I'm so, learning that this yep. week. Wow. Yes. So we're really happy to be able to get this together. Got a tremendous set of livestock, an awesome set of kids. 
So we're really looking forward to it. It really is an investment into the youth in our community. They've worked so hard in doing something that they are passionate about and just learning a skill, a trade perhaps for the future. But if nothing else, even if you didn't want the animal for um, purposes of you know, eating the animal or and 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 having it processed, just being a a biz, someone in the community, whether you're a business or just a family member or a friend or just someone who's watching this and saying, I really just want to do something for these young people and reward them. This is what you can do. You can yes. show them how proud you are by bidding on one of their animals. I love that the kids can go in and actually see how their animal's doing because this is a marketing yeah. uh, sale point too. Yes, I mean, I've seen the kids already. I've seen you guys. I've seen your post on Facebook and you're out there. You're, you're marketing your animal and you need to keep doing that because as it's going to be open three days. It will. And yes. so we want you to get the best um, sale price out of your animal. So let's see what you got in the next couple of days to market that animal. And um, tell us a little bit more um, as about the increments. You were talking about it's going to be a little bit different. There's going to be set opening bids. There's, yes, correct. There's going to be set opening bids. So we'll just go in the order which they're going to be okay. sold at or the catalog order of how they'll be run. Okay. We rotate every year to fair, you know, so no animals always sell first or nobody's always last. We okay. rotate top to bottom. So with that, the steers will start at $1,200. Mm -hmm. Now that's just an opening bid on all these. So don't, you know, it's, don't get too hemmed up on that. Mm -hmm. It's a start. Right. All the hogs will start at 250. The lambs and goats will start at 200. Mm -hmm. So usually when we're in a live sale setting, we're selling by the pound. Okay. Now we're selling on whole head pricing. So that $200 is for the whole animal. Mm -hmm. So your bid increments will be $25 up to 1000 Okay. Once that animal crosses that $1,000 mark, it will be on fifty dollars. Okay. So your steers that are starting at twelve hundred, mm -hmm. next bid will be twelve fifty, then thirteen, and thirteen fifty. Mm -hmm. After an animal reaches a three thousand dollar mark, it goes to a hundred dollars bid increments. Okay. So where we're typically by the pound asking for ten cents or a quarter, mm -hmm. now we actually have whole numbers that we can work off of. And, and buyers can do, see. Yeah. You have to do that because you couldn't actually weigh them and get the actual weights. Right. It just so, wasn't allowed. It right. Just didn't work out. And I think for any, I mean, obviously the, there are those of you out there who this is, you do this every year or you're, you've participated in other auctions. So you don't really need any instruction just how to get on the website and start bidding. But if you've never done it before, um, I think it's important to, to someone to think when you're thinking about say the steers mm -hmm. and they think wow twelve hundred dollars but you have to tell 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 the the viewers or the what all they're getting i mean that's actually it's not it's, a lot of money when you think of everything no, that you're going to get processed no, out of that you, one steer you've got a you've got a year's worth of meat for mm -hmm. a whole family typically a family yeah. of four right um, and we have processing facilities that are dedicated to berkeley county youth fair with spots reserved Everybody remembers what happened in April. They couldn't find hamburger. You couldn't find steaks. Right. You couldn't yeah. find this. This is a way to lock it in, and we've got space reserved. If you call these same processors this mm -hmm. evening, tomorrow morning, they're going to tell you the soon as they can get to you is February. Wow. And what would you do if you bought an animal and they, you couldn't process it till then? Freeze you'd, it? You'd, I mean, have to hold on. you'd have you just, to hold on to it. You'd tie uh -huh. it up in your backyard. or Oh, so you couldn't yeah. slaughter yeah. it is what you're saying. So you, we don't want that happening. <laughs> yeah. I do, no animal. No, I do not need <laughs> We're going to let it go in her yard we don't, again. We don't need yes. that. No, 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 no. But so, gotcha. but, you know, we have that set so, and it's locked right. in. So I think that if you were a new to the buying market, right. you might say, well, gosh, I don't know what to do after I get the animal. What's the next step? And so... You, that you've just solved that problem We've for everyone. Solved that problem for everybody. Everything is lined up. And we have the option if if they're just buying to support a kid and they maybe don't want the meat or uh -huh. they don't want they can resell it. We will haul it to a local stockyard of mm -hmm. their choice, Winchester, Hagerstown, or Greencastle, and mm -hmm. have it reconsigned, and it'll, those stockyards will send them a check. So wow, it, yeah, and that's a service that the fair. That's takes something care that of. the yeah. fair okay. takes care of. Yes. Okay. Totally voluntary. Learning a lot here, Matt. I'm trying to think of other questions. Do we want to take a break and we'll gather some a few questions? Hey, if you are watching and you need, you want to ask a question of Drew. 
Uh, you want to ask a question of Drew? Uh, send it to send it online. We're we're watching pretty much all the different sites. We have people watching, so shoot us a question for him, and we will make sure he addresses that if we get it in time. So we'll be right back after this word from the sponsors. This portion of the Youth Fair has been brought to you by Johnny's, selling restaurant quality food at wholesale prices. Visit them at their two locations on Route 11 South in Chambersburg and Johnny's Express on Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg. Back with more of the Youth Fair next. In our present crisis, we need inspired problem solvers, not the kind of politics we always get from the politicians who take us for granted. Daniel Bennett is running for delegate because he believes that the problems we face will be solved by the hands, the hearts, and the hard work of West Virginians. You know that there's no more hardworking individual that would work for you as your member um, in your district for West Virginia. I'm Daniel Bennett, and I'm running for a delegate to give back, pay it forward, and to be your voice in Charleston. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. When you overlook the ridge of our mountains, paddle down our rivers, or talk to our people, you can see how much potential West Virginia has. I'm running for governor to bring new and fresh solutions to the problems holding us back. My only agenda is West Virginia people, which is why I will always put people before politics. I will bring transparency to Charleston and am dedicated to preserving the liberty and freedoms of all West Virginians. I am Erica Kalenich, the Libertarian nominee for governor, and I hope to earn your vote in November. Hi, this is your delegate, John Hardy. Like many of you, I have fond memories of our youth fair going back to my childhood. I know that in these trying times, this year's fair is very different. One thing that hasn't changed is the tireless effort by the committee and the dedication and hard work that our youth has put into showcasing their exhibits to bring us this year's youth fair. I'd like to wish each and every person a successful youth fair. And don't forget, if you can, please support our youth by bidding on their livestock. I'm Delegate John Hardy, and I thank you for supporting the youth of Berkeley County. Boyd Veterinary Service in Jaredstown is dedicated to the health and wellness of your herd, offering health and reproductive services and now scheduling flushes and donor housing for fall 2020 at our new donor facility in Jaredstown. Dr. John Boyd wants to thank all exhibitors for participating in the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair and wishes each one success with their projects. That's Boyd Veterinary Service, phone 304-279-0217. Floodwaters can spread E. coli bacteria. Here's Bill Kearns from the Berkeley County Health Department about what to do if your well is tested positive. If it's just a one-time contamination, you can superchlorinate your well, which we have instructions at the health department they could call and talk to us. You're providing uh, an excessive amount of bleach down the well. Then you do a runoff to get that out of the system to get the bleach through your lines, get any contamination out of there. You do a runoff of so long, and then you can have it tested again. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg. Call 304-263-5131. Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. This program of the fair brought to you by Libertarian candidate for West Virginia Governor Eric Kalinich, who encourages all of us to support the youth participating in this year's youth fair. Back over to our host and talk some more auctions, Mary Beth Blair. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, if you're just now chiming in, we have been we've been in, talking about beef all night. We had the market steer. Uh, classes that we we announced what I think there were eight right we had eight that we've already we've already um, announced all those winners and we we've, we've been talking about the auction we had to get those all announced so we could get everything up on the website because the livestock auction opens at 7 p.m. and just so you know after this 
segment where we answer some questions about the livestock auction. We will be kicking off the 645 uh, time frame with the Angus show and several others after that. So just a heads up on that. Um, but Drew Bohr is in the studio as well as Judy Secrets and Mikey Withrow. And we are going to answer some questions related to uh, the auction. And we were talking about it in the break. And we want you guys to realize that these uh exhibitors, these youth who are raising these animals and now selling them, you need to look at them as small business owners. They have bought their animal. They have uh, taken care of it. They have fed it. I mean, Mikey is going to tell you about how he actually requires them to budget and plan and then show a profit at the end of the year. Um, so we want to talk about that whole equation of it's not just, oh, that's a cute animal. I think I'll, this is this is a business. So tell us more about that. Whoever wants to chime in first. I'll take first stab at okay. it. Okay, I'm um, not surprised. So regardless yeah. if it is a 4-H or an FFA member, mm -hmm. um, both of them are required to keep accurate records in their record book. Um, we talked a little bit about an SAE uh, for the FFA side, a little bit about the animal projects, but the actual guide is where they are budgeting whether what mm -hmm. is, you know, does what I put into this project and what do I get in my income? Am I making a profit or a loss? Okay. And what am I doing with that profit or loss? Got because it. a lot of these, you know, exhibitors take the money that they would get from this year's profit mm -hmm. and put it into their animal for next year. Which so, starts in September. <laughs> absolutely. Some of them already have them for next oh, wow. year. You know, these mm -hmm. market steers are a year round project. Got it. So a lot of kids put a lot of time and effort and mm -hmm. thought into their buying. So, you know, they want to make sure that they're feeding quality feed. They want to make mm -hmm. sure they have the right equipment. Um, you know, all of these things add up. Mm -hmm. And we want them to understand that, you know, it's not necessarily just a money-making game. You know, right. we want them to have that expense. We want them to show what they put into it. But also, what do they gain from it? Mm -hmm. Both in knowledge through their project books and classes, but as well as financially. Right. So that's, you know finding an equal balance mm -hmm. of them understanding the value of both sides of it. Got it. And so that makes it ever important for them to market at this yes. point. It's really now's the time to market your animal for sale. That's an important part of any business is marketing. Absolutely. And we <laughs> encourage all of our exhibitors to go out and find their buyers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't want buyers just, you know, as graceful as we are that they mm -hmm. do show up. We want to make sure that our kids are putting in the legwork. You know, we want them right. to go and say, hey, this is my pro this is my product. This right. is what I have to offer and invite them to come bid. Sure. And um, we, want to, we want to thank those sponsors who've been faithfully absolutely. showing up to the youth fair every year. This is a tradition for so many businesses in our community, banks, um, the funeral home, the, I'm trying to think, car dealerships, families actually who go together. That was one of our questions. Can we go together and purchase an animal? Absolutely, you can go together. I did answer that question, you did. Mikey. Good job. And I remembered that one. But it's so important. I know that even in times that we are in, there are a lot of businesses that still, ha there are no events. So let's just put this out there. I'm a business person. We There are no events going on that we can invest back into we the community, not. but this is something that we can invest in. And what a great investment to, to invest back into the next generation in our community. And you wanted to share a little bit about that as well, Drew. Yeah, we've had tremendous success with our livestock sales in the past, and we owe it all to our buyers. Without mm -hmm. them, we couldn't do it. It wouldn't be near successful. As, you can't have it. They're right. just super successful. They're super great people, and we truly appreciate everything mm -hmm. they do. Last year, we had 199, so we're down a little bit this year on ex exhibitor not numbers not by much not really. by much it was really close yeah and last year we had 74 different buyers 74. on those 90 mm -hmm. on those 199 animals so just a tremendous statement and testament mm -hmm. to the surrounding businesses that have helped support our youth it's just incredible Thank you to all of you who are market buyers. We tried to recognize them, recognize all of you on the Facebook page over the month of July, just appreciating you for faithfully coming out year after year and buying animals and supporting the young people who are exhibiting. And it really does make a difference and really does help them t in their careers. And what else would we like to encourage? Anything else? Are there any other questions? There are. So okay. I do have a couple questions, questions that Here have we come go. in. Um, <laughs> one that just came in is how will kids know who their buyer is? A little bit different this year. When you're on 
bidding on juniorfairauctions.com, you will be assigned a bidder number. Okay. And that bidder badge is going to protect that buyer. So it's not going to show to everybody. Okay. We're yeah. currently working away, uh, whether it be after closing ceremonies mm -hmm. or later on Saturday, to make sure those buyers get the recognition they need. Oh, definitely. So that's a little bit of this learning curve, this online sale. Mm -hmm. it, it's been... Uh, it's been different. Mm -hmm. We're getting there. We're making it happen. But it's not going to be as looking across the room and seeing who's going down to get your picture taken with that winning buyer or hearing it sure. announced. It's going to be a little hidden. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that there will be a way. We can definitely oh, uh, yes. put that out there on social media and on the website. And we definitely will make sure that all the buyers are recognized and honored and thanked, um, not only from the Berkeley County Youth Fair, but I'm sure TV10 will help us get the word out. They've been so great to partner with the youth fair in bringing the virtual fair. And we will recognize all of last year's market buyers on Friday. That's part of oh, the good. program on Friday. We're going to recognize everybody that was a market buyer last year. Right. Okay, great. Any, uh, any closing thoughts as we um, segue out of this and head back into our beef show? Are there any other questions or any other things, Drew, that you think, Judy, is there anything as the livestock chairperson that you would like to say about the auction to the people watching tonight and maybe just emphasizing how important it is? It's very important mm -hmm. for, you know, the kids. They've been out marketing all week. Yes. They sent letters out. I know some of them took them two weeks ago. They've been really marketing on Facebook asking for the support of the buyers and right. it's just an overall effort for everybody okay well we did have one more question come in and i know this is going to be hard to pinpoint exactly but someone wants to know about processing fees and you know if they've never bought before what's a ballpark or what how does that get figured into the price of above and beyond what they're paying for each animal Sure. There's, there's a lot of variables in the processing fee, mm -hmm. whether you would want it wrapped in a, a vinyl wrap, a paper wrap, mm -hmm. you want it you know, vacuum packed. So there's you have your options with mm -hmm. these custom processors that we have. They will do whatever you want. Got it. If you want hamburger in five pounds, if you want hamburger in one pound, they'll make patties. They can do whatever. So there's a lot of variables to mm -hmm. that. Um, if I had to shoot from the hip and, you know, don't take this to the bank, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to look to get a steer process somewhere in that seven to $900 mm -hmm. range. Right. In a pig, I would get, say in that three to 500 range. Okay. And again, Berkeley County Youth Fair does provide transportation of your market animal purchases mm -hmm. to those. Mm -hmm. So one thing real quick on the, to anybody that might be listening, that would be a buyer. Uh, when you register, please have your cell phone number there. After the close of the sale, we will be reaching out to you. Okay. We want to call. We want to make sure we get these animals moved safely and quickly and efficiently mm -hmm. so they can go to their new homes there for a little while, if mm -hmm. you will. So we'll be reaching out to you there Friday night, early okay. Saturday morning. Got it. If you have any other questions, just hey post them to the facebook page and we will we will be keep it we will definitely be promoting the livestock auction all week so if you have a question look for that post on facebook and we will address them i don't know can is there a way they could ask you questions yes too? actually on that if when you're at junior fair auctions mm -hmm. and you look and click down through yeah. you'll see the berkeley county site there's actually a number of phone numbers there yep. mine's included uh judy's Mikey Withrows mm -hmm. and Matt Linton, our third vice president, all of our cell phone oh, numbers. Please reach out no to us if you have for questions. With questions. Yeah, don't ask your neighbor, Got ask it. us. And I think there's a bunch of uh, FAQs on the website, there, too. There are. <laughs> so there are. hopefully yeah. everything will be covered in that. But if not, definitely give somebody in that um, on that page a call who's listed. And um, yeah, so there you go livestock auction. Countdown to, to auction opening in about another 20 minutes. And again, no rush tonight because it, do, it is open until 7 p.m. on Friday, correct? correct. Yes. 7 p.m. And um, we might even address it tomorrow and Friday as well a little bit. I think Friday we actually are going to be talking auction during the live show. So there's that. Thank you so much for being here and shedding some light, showing how easy it is just to get online and do that. Um, and encouraging people to buy. And we're looking for, I, I'm just going to say it, let's look for a record year of buyers because you're sitting at home with nothing else better to do than to bid on some animals, right? 
I like that your attitude. Good? That is a great, great <laughs> attitude to have. Well, you know, I'm all about the youth, the next generation. So. As, you, as you should be this week, yes. as everybody should be this all week. All the time. That's how I feel. So let's go to break and let's come back. We're going to come back. We're going to um, go down and I'm going to say a, a no pun intended, but we're going to wrangle up Scott and Mark, and we're going to get them back here in the studio so that we can move on in the beef show. And as I said earlier, we are going to kick it off with the Angus show. So we'll see you back in a few minutes. This portion of the Youth Fair brought to you by Orsini. Stop by and visit PJ and the gang off Hack Wilson Way in Martinsburg, just off of Route 9, just outside of town. PJ, a big supporter of everything local. He is yes. big into everything that is Martinsburg. And yeah, absolutely. So Just stop by there. new dishwasher from there. It's made my life heaven. So stop by that new <laughs> showroom where I guess Sorry, it's I had st- to plug him. still new to them. It's not necessarily brand new anymore for that new <laughs> showroom off Hack Wilson Way. We'll be back with more of the youth for after this. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price. And we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it. Period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times than a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. I'm Rod Hawker for Johnny's, where we've been serving the community for over 65 years. That means one thing, you've been supporting us for over 65 years. So to all of our customers at our Chambersburg and Martinsburg locations, we'd like to say a great big thank you for your continued patronage. You've been there for us and we'll continue to be there for you with restaurant quality foods at wholesale prices. And if you haven't tried Johnny's yet, what are you waiting for? Stop in at either location and experience the Johnny's difference today. In our present crisis, we need inspired problem solvers. Not the kind of politics we always get from the politicians who take us for granted. Daniel Bennett is running for delegate because he believes that the problems we face will be solved by the hands, the hearts, and the hard work of West Virginians. You know that there's no more hardworking individual that would work for you as your member um, in your district for West Virginia. I'm Daniel Bennett, and I'm running for a delegate to give back, pay it forward, and to be your voice in Charleston. I'm Kathy Kunkel. I'm running for U.S. House of Representatives here in the 2nd District. I'm not taking any corporate cash because I believe it's one of the fundamental problems in our politics today. The rest of the country does owe a debt to us here in Appalachia. For decades, we have been powering this country. We've had billions of dollars of wealth extracted from our state. Three families in our country currently control more wealth than half of the population. We need a government for the many, not the few, and that's why I'm running for Congress. I'm Kathy Kunkel, and I approve this message. Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. Going to get back into some more steers or some more cows or beef or whatever you want to call it. It is the beef it's show. The we beef will go show, Matt. until nine o'clock tonight when we get into poultry. Exactly. Then we will have some indoor exhibits from 9:30 until we sign off for the evening. Have Mikey come back in and be the star of the show from 9:30 till 10 like he was last night got a lot of exhibits in last night looking to cram some more in tonight as we can try to get all those indoor exhibits 
featured this week. This portion of the program brought to you by 15th District State Senator Patricia Rucker, who salutes all of this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair participants. Back over to our host for this week's events, Mary Beth Blair. Thank you, Matt. And so the first part of the beef show was our market steers. Now we're heading into the breed show is what they explained to me earlier in the night. And we're going to kick it off with the Angus show. And I'm going to throw it over to the guys who know everything. I know nothing about this. So I'm just going to throw it over to them to just teach us all and share with us all these great exhibits, exhibitors that um, we have tonight in these categories. So Scott and Mark, take it away. Okay, well, we're going to get started here. This is the Angus Breed Show, and Mark's going to introduce our first class, which is a senior heifer calf. All right, in our first exhibitor, we have a single entry in this class, uh, Exhibitor 120, Page Knot, uh, Scrabble Scramblers 4-H. And the Angus cattle originated in Scotland. Um, it was actually in the county of Aberdeen. And then in 1873, the first five Angus bulls were brought over to America by Georgia Grant. So they've been in the United States for, a, you know, considerably a, a long mm -hmm. amount of time. Okay, that's a single entry. Um, I have verbal written reasons to give on these from the judge. I do not have the audio file. So I'm going to go ahead with uh, his uh, description of this heifer. He says, another nice single entry that brings a lot to the table. She is sound with a lot of extension and has nice depth of body for a heifer this age. Thank you, Paige. And we'll go to class 11 and then after class 11 you'll actually talk about the placings at that point for these two classes? Yes. Okay, so class 11 junior yearling. So in class 11, we have two entries. Uh, our first entry is number 41, Cooper Knott. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the reason on this one. It is, this is a high quality Angus female that has all the right parts in an attractive package. If I was going to improve her ever so slightly, I would make her a little neater in her chest floor. That is Cooper Knott. Our second entry in that class is Exhibitor 120, Page Knott. <laughs> there you go, Page. Here we go. The mm -hmm. judges, John Bob Spiker says, a very nice pair of heifers that are hard to separate. <laughs> Both of these heifers Heifers represent the breed very well. Both are long-bodied, very opened up in the rib shape, and carry back through their underlines to a nice deep flank. I think this heifer, from what I can see, has an advantage in her chest floor compared to her counterpart. Great work. Okay, thank you, Paige. All right. All right, so now, we get into picking uh, the grand champion Angus Heifer first. So we'll have our class 10 senior calf winner, Paige Knott, against Paige Knott's junior yearling heifer. So she's competing against herself? She is <laughs> at the fair when that happens because both calves would need to come into right. the ring. Another exhibitor would be able to bring in the other calf gotcha. and, That's and good show to know. it for her. So, so with Paige being in the ring with both, the judge has selected the junior yearling heifer as your grand champion Angus heifer. Great job. Okay, so then we are picking between Cooper Knott's junior yearling heifer and Paige Knott's senior heifer calf for reserve champion Angus. And the winner of that would be Cooper Knott's junior yearling heifer. So with that being said, they would also, since we have no cows, usually you would have a cow champion if there was an Angus cow being okay. shown. So the cow and the heifer would square off for overall champion of the Angus breed. So being no cow to compete, the Angus 
heifer of Paige Knotts will be the grand champion Angus of the breed. Cooper Knotts uh, Angus heifer will be the reserve champion of the breed. So this is brother and sister, I'm assuming, or cousins. What are what are the, the brother, and brother and sister? Brother and sister. Okay. So did these animals grow uh, are are raised together in the same farm on the same farm? I assume. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So. And okay. we would definitely like to thank uh, the Windy Rock Farm, George and Brenda Miller. Uh, for the uh, champion Angus is $15, and they also sponsored the reserve champion, and that individual will get $10. Thank those individual, George and Brenda Miller. Yep. Thanks a lot, George and Brenda. Thank you, yes. And so that completes the Angus show portion of the um, beef show. Is that correct? That's all. Yeah. Do you have any fun facts about Angus before we move on? I do. So the breed registration began in 1917. Okay. Um, and originally it was only black Angus because um, the coloring is either red or black. Black mm -hmm. is the dominant gene. Um, so red is the recessive gene. Uh, but if, now if you look into it, they're actually considered separate breeds with two different breed associations. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, as just, again, someone who, who's not in the industry, that's what I hear every time I go into a restaurant. You always hear that Black Angus burger mm -hmm. or, or whatever. That's the, I don't hear, I'm looking at the shows ahead and I've never heard any of the others before my hamburger. <laughs> agreed, agreed. So this must be the best, I, I mean, there must be a reason that they must taste better or maybe they're just the ones that are marketed. Mark, come yeah, on, you look a, like you have an answer to tool. that. It's the a Angus Association <gasps> is really good at marketing. They're good. Well, have I can handle that as a marketing person. That's good. It's what we're in business to do. So anyways, that should just be um, a, a good uh, example to the other uh, breeds that they need to hire me to do their marketing. I there don't you know. go. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> all right. Mary I think Beth Blair for I, hire on is, all your cattle needs. <laughs> this show is not about me. It's about the youth. So let's get back to that. And we'll be back with the next show. Um, and the uh, beef show is the Herefords. When we come back, Thank we'll you. see you after the, after the, this commercial break. This portion of the Youth Fair has been brought to you by the Berkeley Morgan County Health Department. They're located at 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg. Give them a call at 304-263-5131 with all of your health department questions, which I'm sure are plentiful at this point of the, uh, the pandemic world we're living in right now. Or for a lot more information, visit bchealthdep.org. Back with more of the Youth Fair next. In our present crisis, we need inspired problem solvers, not the kind of politics we always get from the politicians who take us for granted. Daniel Bennett is running for delegate because he believes that the problems we face will be solved by the hands, the hearts, and the hard work of West Virginians. You know that there's no more hardworking an individual that would work for you as your member um, in your district for West Virginia. I'm Daniel Bennett, and I'm running for a delegate to give back, pay it forward, and to be your voice in Charleston. The historic McFarland House Inn and Restaurant is excited to introduce a fresh new summer menu and an all-new curbside menu. There are so many incredible new dishes to explore and enjoy from Chef Walden and some fan favorites that will remain by popular demand. Check out the new menus on our website at historicmcfarlandhouse.com or our Facebook page. You can dine inside our charming historic home or outside in our beautiful garden. Call 304-263-1890 today to reserve your table or to place a curbside order to go. The Eastern Panhandle Conservation Division has a goal in Morgan, Jefferson, and Berkeley County to provide for and promote the protection and conservation of West Virginia's soil, land, water, and related resources for health, safety, and general welfare of the state's citizens. To contact the EPCD about floods and blockages in streams near you, contact 1-866-823-5663. Or for other inquiries, visit them at wvca.us or call them at 304-558-2204. Three cheers for free delivery from South Berkeley Pharmacy to your front door. South Berkeley Pharmacy, home health care specialists, is more than just a pharmacy. We have the best gift shop in town, and nobody beats our service. South Berkeley Pharmacy, home health care specialists, southberkeleypharmacy.com.
Are you looking for a full-service web design company right here in the Eastern Panhandle? Then look no further than Pro Design LLC, specializing in web design and development, web hosting and application development. Pro Design is a locally owned company serving local clients since 1997 with a reputation of quality, creativity, and personal touch. Let Pro Design build or redesign your dream website. Find them online at professionaldesign.com or phone 304-676-9940. Hello, this is Riley Moore, Republican candidate for state treasurer. The 73rd annual Berkeley County Youth Fair is a special opportunity for our youth to showcase their talent and hard work. We can all be proud here in the region to be one of the few remaining fairs dedicated to youth exhibitors. It is particularly important during COVID-19 that we continue to support the hard work of our youth for this amazing annual youth fair. I'm Riley Moore, and I thank you for your support of our youth. Welcome back to the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. Matt Crawford here with you for TV10, this portion of the program. Brought to you by Democratic candidate for West Virginia Attorney General Sam Petsonk, wishing all of the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair participants nothing but success. Back over to our host for this week's events, Mary Beth Blair. Thank you, Matt. And we just finished the Angus show in our bre- in the beef show, and we're moving on to another breed, and that would be the Herefords. And it looks like we have a few in this class, or maybe just a couple. Actually, this is a smaller group too. Just two. Um, telling us all about this group is Scott and Mark. Okay, we're going to start off here with the Hereford Show. I want to note that um, in order for there to be a breed show for Angus, Shorthorn, whatever, there must be two, at least two entries or the fair does not have that as a technical show. Okay? okay. They would, if there's only one entry, they would fall into a class called All Other Breeds. Oh, and and we're going to hear, hear about yes. them later. So right. for now, we have two Herefords in this class, so we do have a breed show. We'll let Mark introduce them. All right. From Class 10, our senior heifer calf, uh, number 17 exhibitor, Blake Puffenberger from Swan Pond 4-H. All right. The judge comments here are a very good natured little Hereford heifer that's a little green in this video, but very sound and starting to show some good rib shape. He's been awarded a white ribbon. I'm saying the breed as a whole um, is actually where they originate is quite unclear. Um, they know it was somewhere in the kind of European England area, um, you know, but it's documented first case in Herefordshire, Herefordshire in the 1700s, um, and that makes it actually the first English cattle to be recognized as a true breed. And since we had a single entry, that Blake would be the uh, get a first place in that class. In our next class, uh, junior yearling heifers, class 11, our exhibitor is 336, Andrew Bohr from Tomahawk 4-H. Okay, our judge, John Bob Spiker, notes that this is a very easy fleshing female, almost to a fault, because I think she is carrying a little extra condition. I do like her depth of body and the look she gives you from behind. She is very deep in her twist, and if you want to get really picky with her, you might extend her front one-third and give her a little more angle to her shoulder blade. With that said, I definitely think her positive attributes outweigh her negatives by far. And she was awarded a blue ribbon by the judge. And the great thing about the purebreds, you know, Angus, Hereford, whatever they might be, most of the students that take these as purebreds, they learn a lot about that project. Mm -hmm. They learn a lot about the animal, the species, and, you know, and and the breed, and they're very happy to know that. And they're very proud to show their their uh, breed-specific animals. So obviously, Andrew would be the uh, class winner in class 11 junior yearling heifer okay with two single entries in each class those two come back to compete for grand champion hereford heifer 
And the judge has selected Andrew Boers, junior yearling heifer, as the grand champion Herford Heifer. And Blake Puffenberger will be your reserve champion Herford Heifer. And being no cows to uh, compete for the overall Herford breed champion, Andrew Boer will also be your grand champion Herford of the breed and Blake Puffenberger will be the reserve champion Herford of the breed. Great okay. job boys. Yeah. And we would like to thank Matt Ware for being the sponsor of our champion and reserve uh, for the Herford champion and reserve champion. Uh, the champion received $15 and our reserve received 10. Thank you again Matt Ware. Thanks Matt. Well there you have it. That's the Herford show and it's all wrapped up and finished. Great job. Um, with those two exhibitors and um, we are going to come back after this break and we're going to have the shorthorn show uh, in that breed and I, I wanted to ask Mikey when they were talking you talked Mark about how they really get a chance to know that breed when they choose this you know uh, type of animal so as a part of their end of the season project or when they do their turn in all their information so what do they actually will they actually turn in what they I mean do they have a report or how does that work what do they document to you so a lot of what they're documenting is their record keeping so okay. what are they what is the expense of mm -hmm. the project um, but one of my favorite aspects that they turn in in their record guide um, is actually their story okay um, because in that um, you really get to see their depth of knowledge okay um, they're talking about what they're feeding they're talking about where it originated mm -hmm. or why they chose that passion um, some of them to read you know they show this breed because they're, you know, going back five generations, that's what they've always shown. And then you have some, they're like, well, my family showed this and I didn't like it, so I showed this. <laughs> um, so you kind of get yeah. to see, you know, how each child kind of goes about being able to pick what they want mm -hmm. to show in that project. And also, so in this, these type shows in the ring, are the judges asking questions in the ring as well to them to test their knowledge on that particular breed? No. So they it was would on for the showmanship. Showmanship. Yes. Okay. I knew that there was a at some point. Yes. It, yeah. Okay. Very and good. Showmanship is more about how the person themselves are getting that animal ready. They want to mm -hmm. get, get that animal looking the best. Mm -hmm. We're going to test their knowledge of the beef industry as well as knowledge of, you know, the market side of it or the breeding side of it. it. It might get very specific in mm -hmm. the questions that are being asked. Okay. All right. Well, just a little bit more information there for you if you're taking notes and learning all you can about beef. And we will be back right after this break with our Shorthorn Show. This portion of the Youth Fair has been brought to you by Parsons Ford. They're located on Shepherdstown Pike just outside of Martinsburg on Route 45. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons, back after this short commercial break. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. Floodwaters can spread E. coli bacteria. Here's Bill Kearns from the Berkeley County Health Department about what to do if your well is tested positive. If it's just a one-time contamination, you can superchlorinate your well, which we have instructions at the health department they could call and talk to us. You're providing uh, an excessive amount of bleach down the well. Then you do a runoff to get that out of the system to get the bleach through your lines, get any contamination out there. You do a runoff of so long, and then you can have it tested again. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg. Call 304-263-5131. When you overlook the ridge of our mountains, paddle down our rivers, or talk to our people, you can see how much potential West Virginia has. I'm running for governor to bring new and fresh solutions to the problems holding us back. My only agenda is West Virginia people, which is why I will always put people before politics. I will bring transparency to Charleston and am dedicated to preserving the liberty and freedoms of all West Virginians. I am Erica Kalenich, the Libertarian nominee for governor, and I hope to earn your vote in November. 
Berkeley County Sheriff Curtis Keller wishes the best of luck to all the exhibitors in this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair and congratulates the fair board and volunteers who worked so hard to make sure we could still celebrate this important community event. Curtis Keller and his wife Becky have been longtime supporters of the youth fair and have volunteered many hours serving at this important community event. Curtis Keller has been serving this community as a law enforcement officer for more than 30 years. Please help us re-elect Curtis Keller as your new sheriff of Berkeley County. Paid for by candidate. My dad, Brad Nall, is running for the House of Delegates 60th. He needs your vote to improve the poor infrastructure exposed by the pandemic. That includes better internet, cell phone, and roads. Thanks, Laura. I also want to keep our young people like you in West Virginia. Brad Nall needs your vote to make a difference on these issues. Remember, when it's time to vote in the fall, you need to vote for Brad Nall. Paid for by candidate. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Welcome back into the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair for 2020. Hopefully, one and only virtual youth fair. Hopefully, back at the. F- oh, I, I'm kind of getting sad about that. I thought about that today. Am I? I'm going to be sad at the end of this week. I'm going to invite, I'm personally inviting you to come out okay. and announce all the shows. I did ask, I actually asked last night before I left, I said, can I have like a parking pass and like be a part of your official team for the youth fair? Because after this week, I'm going to just feel like I'm really a You're part gonna of the You're going to feel like family. a member of the team? Mm, yes. I already ask do, and you actually. shall receive. <laughs> it has really been rewarding. I, I guess that's the biggest or the best uh, adjective I could say about this week as far as I'm concerned is I had... I had high expectations, Matt, for what we could help them pull off, but it's way far exceeded what we expected. That A lot of that goes credit to everyone here at, at TV10 for the hard work and just excellence that you guys put in behind the scenes. Um, but th- this has been amazing. It really has. I feel like we've really done something special for the community, so I'm really honored to be a part of it. I think what's made it so much fun, again, not over yet, it's just Wednesday. We're still right? Thursday and Friday and the rest of tonight. Exactly. But nobody really had an idea what this was going to look like going in. And so that's you, sometimes good, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> you went in without a blueprint, or you, you had a bit of a blueprint, mm-hmm. but didn't really know how it was all going to going to run together. And I think it has exceeded a lot of people's expectations. Right. I think that when you heard virtual, you're going, all right, how is this going to work? Right. The, the fair is a very in-person thing. Exactly. Hands-on. How and the heck is I this going to happen? <laughs> this has exceeded a lot of expectations. Well, I'll tell you what. When the youth and when young people are at the heart of something and you your your goal is to basically showcase something like this, I don't see how we could have gone wrong. I, even yep. if we had blundered and had lots more hiccups or if it was rough, I, it, it still would have been about them. So that's what makes it so special. And I think that's why people tuned in to, to, to support them. They didn't know how, know how good it was going to be. We didn't know how good it was going to be and how much fun and how much we were going to learn and how we were all going to be different after this one and only virtual fair week. So thank you guys in the community for all your support. I will have to say, when I go home at night and I read all your encouraging comments, it really warms my heart. And so it's made this, re- week, this week so rewarding, and I really appreciate that and have enjoyed every single second of being here. Even, I mean, you think about it, six hours a night behind yeah. the microphone. Not- six hours <laughs> straight on, as somebody who's done two straight on air in a studio and then up to, upwards of six doing a, game, a football game broadcast. It's a long time to be on the air straight. It so is. it's it's and again credit to Mikey who's been here pretty much every day <laughs> on the air with us. Judy who's the past two days had been on the air Amazing from start to people. finish. It is a it's a tough thing to have uh, people who aren't used to this come in and do because it's not easy for. Right. The, I mean, Mary Beth, you've done enough of these parades and everything. I've been on air enough yes. that it's not easy to do when you're used to it. So for Mikey and Judy and everybody that's been involved this week, it's been a true team effort to put this yeah. on. It's been great. I just had to take that commercial break for the goodness of 
Youth Fair Week. So yep. let's get back into beef and the beef show. And we are in breeding the breeding show at this point, and we are getting getting ready to see some short horn beef uh, exhibitors. So Scott and Mark, take us away. Okay, we've got uh, two entries in our short horn show, and we'll let Mark introduce those. All right, from class eleven, our junior yearling heifers. Uh, number 207, Taylor Barrett. She is from the Scrabble, Scrambles 4-H. Okay, our judge's comments are that it's, this is a very nice single entry that could stand some competition. Very attractive, sound, and feminine. That moves very well. And she's been awarded a red ribbon. I'm saying something about this breed, the shorthorns were developed as a true dual purpose breed. And what that means is they were not only developed as meat animals, but also as dairy. Um, and you also can add a third wheel in there. Uh, you can actually have work cattle. Um, and they're gonna be a little bit more broad shouldered and actually be used to move heavy amounts of material around in a field. So the shorthorn was truly developed as a dual purpose animal. More of a working animal than so more than a eating da animal. Dairy and meat are its specialty <laughs> uh -huh. um, right there in the uh, 18th century in northeast of mm -hmm. England. So, okay. again, very old breeds coming very. through. Very, okay. And our second short horn will come out of class 12 senior yearling heifers. That is Reagan Barrett, number 205, from Scrabble Scramblers. There's Reagan again. Here she comes. <laughs> and the judge says another nice single entry that has a lot of extension and travels well. It's been awarded a red ribbon. And something you'll notice with these breeds uh -huh. is they have very distinct uh, patterns. So all shorthorn cattle are going to be colored red, white, or roan. Um, and roan is the preferred coloring pattern. And okay. we saw a steer with that roan pattern, very detailed, um, kind of that feathering back mm -hmm. through it. Um, and that's kind of what some of these, you could expect to see in some of these short horns. There is white short horns though, um, but they have been bred <laughs> for that genetic uh -huh. to be white. And they're actually known as white bred short horns. Okay, so we have two entries, a junior yearling and a senior yearling. And they will compete for the grand champion shorthorn heifer of the show. And the judge has selected Taylor Barrett's junior yearling heifer as the grand champion shorthorn heifer. So that makes Reagan Barrett. She will be our reserve champion shorthorn heifer. I know Miss Taylor too. Yeah. We once again like to thank Matt Ware for his sponsorship of the uh, champion and reserve champion uh, Shorthorn. Our champion receives fifteen dollars, and our reserve champions receives ten. Thanks again, Matt. We really appreciate it. Okay. They are also the Shorthorn champion and reserve champion of the whole breed and the heifer. So there were no cows to compete. So congratulations to the Barrett young ladies. Good job, girls. Those are some great looking animals. You guys showed them very well. That was the Short Horn Show and another uh, of the breeding class in the book. And we are going to come back and the next show we're going to see is called All Other Breeds. So that'll be a combination, correct? No? no. That's um, it. So if you don't have an identifying breed, then you are AOB, All yes. Other Breed. If you are a purebred, but we don't have enough to constitute a, a class. To constitute a God. class. That's oh, that's right. You yeah. just explained that. I should. We'll we'll have a Cenotal and a main and Jew competing in the oh, okay. in the all the so breeds two, when we come when back. When we come back, okay. Well, I want to hear more about those two when we come back. We are going to take a quick commercial break, and then we'll be back with the those two breeds that all other breeds show. This portion of the youth fair. Has been brought to you by the Skinner Law Firm, where we treat you like family. The Skinner Law Firm wishes success to all of this year's Youth Fair participants. Visit them online at skinnerfirm.com. Back with more from Youth Fair next. In our present crisis, we need inspired problem solvers, not the kind of politics we always get from the politicians who take us for granted. 
Daniel Bennett is running for delegate because he believes that the problems we face will be solved by the hands, the hearts, and the hard work of West Virginians. You know that there's no more hardworking an individual that would work for you as your member um, in your district for West Virginia. I'm Daniel Bennett, and I'm running for a delegate to give back, pay it forward, and to be your voice in Charleston. I'm Rod Hawker for Johnny's, where we've been serving the community for over 65 years. That means one thing, you've been supporting us for over 65 years. So to all of our customers at our Chambersburg and Martinsburg locations, we'd like to say a great big thank you for your continued patronage. You've been there for us and we'll continue to be there for you with restaurant quality foods at wholesale prices. And if you haven't tried Johnny's yet, what are you waiting for? Stop in at either location and experience the Johnny's difference today. Orsini's, not just an appliance store anymore. They're your one-stop resource for all home needs, whether it's custom kitchen design, countertops, or cabinets, or check out their new sleep studio with Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Stearns and Foster. For all of your outdoor living needs, Orsini's has Gladiator Garage Works, Traeger Grills, Barbecue Accessories, Barbecue Rubs and Sauces, and every flavor wood pellets. Visit their brand new 8,200 square foot showroom at 3. 60 Hack Wilson Way, 304-267-7251, Orsini's.com. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. WV Medicine joins with the community in celebrating the hard work and dedication of all the youth in our area who will be a part of the first ever Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. WV Medicine applauds the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board for making this virtual fair possible and doing their part to protect the health and safety of our community by not having a traditional fair at the fairgrounds this year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. WV Medicine is proud to be a blue ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. Everybody trying to squeeze in a snack in between breaks here as it is a long night, six hours on the air as we were talking about. You can't yell at us yet. Again, and a big part of the fair is what? <laughs> fair food. food. Fair food. That's a huge part of the fair. It is. So nothing Let's be honest. If, if everybody out there watching right now would be honest, and they'd say one of the favorite things that they do at the fair every year is fair food you know they look forward to just indulging and doing eating all the wrong things and not that all of them all are of the, the wrong right things. things yes right things but <laughs> yeah, if you only eat it for once a week it's not yeah. bad or one week a year yeah it's not too bad again tonight was supposed to be chicken night i know chicken dinner oh well huh? young farmer sausage sandwich myself yes that's someone said that last night someone texted in and said they were having them they they like to tell us what they're eating at home which yeah. is fun so yeah keep telling us if you're eating all those cool things i actually saw on facebook today an ad for is it jd's in inwood is JT's. that JT's. JT's. jt's i'm sorry jt's and they were having i was so impressed i was like well if i wasn't doing the show that's where i would be because they had they said they had seven TVs watching the fair. We're on seven TVs. So let's give a shout out, everybody. Wave. Matt, wave. So we're, we're giving a shout out to JT's in Inwood for supporting the fair this week, watching us on your seven TVs. And I heard you had cotton candy tonight. But you could only get it if you were there. Like, I was really bummed that, you know. But anyways, they have all kinds of fair food. And I think a lot of people were going to watch. I think Beth said she yes, was going I'll to watch tonight. So there Beth, is if you're a there, large hello. watch party right now going on. They've had one every night this week. Yes, so. at, at that yes, at restaurant. Jesus. They are great. Talk about someone who supports the community. They are always supporting the community during the entire pandemic. They were feeding school children. They were feeding the hospital workers. Every time I turned around, 
they were doing something for our community. So shout out to you guys because you really um, are a great example to others in the community. So we're back here with the um, first ever and hopefully only uh, virtual youth fair show. We are in the middle of the beef show tonight and Scott and Mark, our experts in the beef show, are going to take us into the all other breed show right now. Okay, well, as we start the all other breeds, uh, this class is defined by any um, entries that there's only one entry of a actually papered breed. Okay. That being the case, we had one Simital entry and one Maine Anjou entry, so they will fall into this class called All Other Breeds, and Mark will introduce this class. All right, so our Simital entry is Exhibitor 336. That's Andrew Bohr. And our okay, John Bob Spiker's comments are that this is a beautiful scimitar heifer that gives you a good first impression due to her level lines, depth of body, and fresh condition. He's awarded her a blue ribbon. And this scimitar breed comes from Switzerland, um, and it's actually known for its longevity and it's actually one of the oldest cattle types in the world the oldest wow and again dual purpose breed so known for meat and milk production huh. and our second entry in this class is 381 reese barrett with her main anju judge's comments are I think this heifer has a lot to offer. She doesn't move quite as well as I would like her off of her hind pasterns and is carrying plenty of condition for this stage of her life. I will say that she appears to have a really nice skeletal makeup underneath though. Judge Spiker has awarded a red ribbon. And then this main as you breed is, is a very French domesticated breed and um, it's commonly raised in the Pays de la Loire region. Um, in northwestern France. Okay, the judge has selected as your grand champion AOB heifer, Andrew Boers, junior yearling heifer, to be the grand champion. AOB heifer and the AOB champion of the breed, Reagan Reese Barrett, sorry, Reese Barrett's Reserve champion AO will be the reserve champion AOB heifer and the reserve champion AOB of the breed. Great work. Congratulations to both of those individuals. Uh, we would like to thank Shepherdstown Pharmacy for sponsoring our champion and reserve of all of the breeds. Our champion receives $15 and our reserve champion received 10 Again, thank you to Shepherdstown Pharmacy for their support. Thank you, Chris and Luke. We appreciate that. Yeah. Great work. Thank you to our sponsors. And that does it for the All Other Breeds show. We're going to come back after this break, and we are going to bring you the Crossbred show. And I think there's about seven all together in that, in two different classes within that show. Right, gentlemen? Yep. All yes. right. Okay. Well, we will look forward to that and learning about those um, in that show when we get back after this word from our sponsors. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors, right, Matt? I mean, they're the ones who we get the fun part of putting the show on, but the sponsors, they put their money where their mouth was. Yeah, without them this week is not possible, and that goes exactly. for our sponsors, the youth fair sponsors, yes. a total team effort total. this week. Yep. This portion of the program brought to you by Brown Funeral Home, a full-service funeral home proudly serving the area since 1880. Back with more yeah. from the Youth Fair next. Three cheers for free delivery from South Berkeley Pharmacy to your front door. South Berkeley Pharmacy Home Healthcare Specialists is more than just a pharmacy. We have the best gift shop in town, and nobody beats our service. South Berkeley Pharmacy, home health care specialists. SouthBerkeyPharmacy.com They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. 
seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. Hi, this is your delegate, John Hardy. Like many of you, I have fond memories of our youth fair going back to my childhood. I know that in these trying times, this year's fair is very different. One thing that hasn't changed is the tireless effort by the committee and the dedication and hard work that our youth has put into showcasing their exhibits to bring us this year's youth fair. I'd like to wish each and every person a successful youth fair. And don't forget, if you can, please support our youth by bidding on their livestock. I'm Delegate John Hardy, and I thank you for supporting the youth of Berkeley County. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. Boyd Veterinary Service in Jarridgetown is dedicated to the health and wellness of your herd, offering health and reproductive services and now scheduling flushes and donor housing for fall 2020 at our new donor facility in Jarridgetown. Dr. John Boyd wants to thank all exhibitors for participating in the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair and wishes each one success with their projects. That's Boyd Veterinary Service, phone 304-279-0217. Welcome back into TV 10's coverage of the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. This portion of the program brought to you by West Virginia State Treasurer Republican candidate Riley Moore, who salutes all of our youth for participating in this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. Back over to our host for this week's events, Mary Beth Blair. All right. Well, this has been one incredible evening of with the beef show and so much to learn, so many different breeds, so many um different shows within a show. I didn't realize that there would be so many, but I made an error and I have no problem admitting that. When I went to break, I said seven. I knew the guys were over there counting and they were like uh, nervous when I said it. So I knew I had to be probably wrong, but that's okay. Um, we didn't turn the page. We actually have nine coming up in this show, but different classes. So we're going to get right into that crossbred show and uh, Scott and Mark. Take it away. Okay, to start off the crossbred show, we have two entries in the junior heifer calf. All right, so in class nine, uh, we the two entries are Bo Dugan, number 15. Comments are a nice, sound moving heifer that is long bodied and it extended through her front one-third. She has level spine with some thickness when you get behind her and has been awarded a blue ribbon. All right, our second entry in that class is Exhibitor 41, Cooper Knott, and both these individuals are from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H. Another nice, attractive, sound-made heifer that moves well. Not quite as trim in her underline or level from hooks to pins as her counterpart, but a heifer that should have a very bright future and has been awarded a red ribbon. So first in that class will be Bo Dugan. Second in class will be Cooper Knott. Bo Dugan's crossbred junior heifer will come back for overall heifer crossbred heifer. 
So that was class nine. We have class 11 next, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Take All right, away. our next yes. class here is class 11. Um, our first entry in class 11 is exhibitor number eight, Amelia Dugan. One thing I've noticed is a lot of the families' names um, yes. repeat. So there's a lot of farming families out there. Yes, right? there are. Ooh. Great sign, great sign. When you see all these animals and these names, just think how much work they have to do the week of the fair. They have this whole line of cattle, they have hogs, they have, they're busy at the fair while they're there during that week. So. The judge on Amelia Dugan says this is an attractive long-bodied heifer that also gives up some weight per day of age and some overall depth of flank to get any higher in this class. But I do appreciate her flexibility and feminine characteristics and is awarded a red ribbon. Our next entry is Exhibitor 41, Cooper Knott, and he is from Scrabble Scramblers 4-H. And Class 11 is our junior yearling heifers. I think I forgot to mention that. Judge's comments are that this is a really nice junior yearling that offers everything you want in a heifer this age. She is attractive from the side, long bodied, and balances out really well from her chest to her rear flank. She appears to move well and exhibits a good balance of form and function. And I know <laughs> some of the viewers may be wondering, like, what does crossbred mean? Crossbred is when you could have some Simmental, some Angus. They have been, the breeds are mixed. And, you know, when you do cross up your breed, you get what they call heterosis, which is you get exponential growth sometimes with your, with your meat characteristics and things. So that's why people do cross up their breeds. Mm. Our next entry. One thing. I'm sorry. Um, Cooper was awarded a blue ribbon. Our next entry is Exhibitor 120, Page Knot, and that's from Scrabble Scramblers. Okay, this baldy heifer, judge says that this is a high performing heifer in the class, a good bodied one that is very long and level hipped. I'd like to make her more attractive through her front one third though and was awarded a red ribbon. Our next entry is 137. That's Cheyenne Stickles, and she's also from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H. Judge's comments are, this is a nice free-moving heifer that has some really nice thickness and depth of body. I think that she could use a little more weight per day of age for this division. And, and I would like to see her level out better from hooks to pins and was awarded a red ribbon. Our last entry in this division or class is Exhibitor 214, Leland Shoemaker. And Leland is from Swan Pond 4-H. Okay, the judge's comments are that this is a heifer that takes a really nice video. I like the live version better than the still shot. She moves well, has some muscle and depth of body, and also a unique color. From the still shot, it looks like she could be a little more level in her spinal makeup and gives up a little overall performance to the two females that he's going to place that place above her today. So that concludes the class 11 junior yearlings, the placings on that. Go in first place, Cooper Knott. In second place, Paige Knott. In third place, Leland Shoemaker. In fourth place, Cheyenne Stickles. And in fifth place, Amelia Dugan. Our first place entry, Cooper Knott, will come back for grand champion heifer of the crossbred class. And that drive's coming up after the break, correct? We're going to do two, what, I think another um, class of, class 12 is coming up next after the break? Yeah, we've got another. 
and 14. Yep. Yeah. Two more classes after the break. So, yep. and then those drives will be announced. So, great showing of five. And then the one before that <clears throat> that had two. Great job. Great work. We're nearing the end of, uh, no, we are. We have another couple pages, don't we? Oh, my goodness. Are we going to finish? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's like, I think I just had um, a moment, like, where it, like, all hit me, like, I don't know. Is it catching up to us, all these beef and cattle in one night, Matt? Um, we are going to head into a break just I think, really I think we're quick. staying right here. We are? With, okay. Yeah, I think we're well, staying right here. On that right log, here. it showed a break at the end. Well, I think we're going to stay here and do Class 12 and give that the grand good. and reserve champs before we go to our next Yeah, break. that makes better sense instead of breaking it up like that since they all go together and they're all competing together. It would be good to see them. So we'll just make a modification right here to the schedule. Class 12, Senior Yearling next. All right, and in Class 12, we have a single exhibitor, Exhibitor 207, Taylor Barrett. And she's from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H. I've seen Taylor a couple times this week as well, so oh. she's one of those ones with multiple animals. I guess most of them have multiples, don't they? I can't imagine. That family, yes. Yes? Absolutely. Okay. Another nice single entry that has a lot of extension and travels well. Comments from Judge Spiker. Anna has awarded her a red ribbon. I will say I just got a comment coming in or asking if Baldy is a breed. Baldy just indicates that it's a white on black cattle. Is there white, white usually face. two? Is there a certain usual breed that makes up a baldy? A lot of times when you cross an Angus and a Hereford, you get a baldy. Scimitals also can have that just as a natural trait. Okay, then we're going to move into. The uh, cow class. Well, first, we, do we need to pick our... Champion and reserve yeah. heifer. We need to go pick our heifer champions. Yes. Yes. So we, will, we have three entries, three individuals um, from <clears throat> class 9, class 11, and class 12. From our class 9, we have Bo Dugan. That's exhibitor 15. And from class 11... We have Exhibitor 41, Cooper Knott. And from our last class, which was Class 12, Exhibitor 207, Taylor Barrett. Okay. The judge has selected as your grand champion and crossbred heifer, Exhibitor 41, Cooper Knott. Congratulations, Cooper. Yeah, congratulations. We will we will pull back the second individual from that class, which was Page Knot, Exhibitor 120, for the opportunity of reserve champion. Okay, Thank she's you. competing against the other two class winners, and the judge's pick for reserve champion is Page Knot with the junior yearling heifer. Congratulations, Paige. So now we're gonna move into the crossbred cow show. We have a single entry. All right, All right so our single entry in uh, class 14 is exhibitor 41, Cooper Knott. He has a lot of animals. <laughs> The judge's comments are a good crossbred female that is moderate in her frame size and fresh in her makeup. Very sound and should be in production for many years. With a red ribbon, but a single entry, she becomes the grand champion crossbred cow. So now we'll go into picking the overall crossbred female of the crossbred show. And our entries for that would be um, Exhibitor 41, Cooper Knott. And our ex cow. Uh, cow class, Class 14, that Exhibitor is 41, also Cooper Knott. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I'm just going to guess. I think I know who wins this. <laughs> okay. So the grand champion um, crossbred of the show would be Cooper Knotts, junior yearling heifer, which okay. is the one you have on the screen. Right. There we go. So coming back. Coming back uh, in, our, in that class, will be our second in that class, uh, will be Paige Knott, Exhibitor 120 to be possible reserve champion. And there you have it. The judge did pick Paige Knott as the reserve champion crossbred of the show. So congratulations to Cooper and Paige with your crossbred heifers. And we would like to thank uh, Natasha Van Dyne and uh, LT Puffenberger for their sponsorship of the champion and reserve champion uh, crossbreds this evening. Uh, our champion receives $15. Our reserve will receive $10. And uh, just a shout out to LT. We, you know, really appreciate and have prayers for you and your family right now. And we, LT is one of those people that's been with us a long time and used to uh, do a lot of the work in the ring and stuff as uh, when his dad was a beef chair. So again, our prayers for the Puffenberger family. Thank you, LT and Natasha. Appreciate that. Yes, thank you to all our sponsors. And, you know, we talk about the sponsors that we're going to go to right now in the commercial break, but there's all of these names that you're hearing throughout the week that sponsor the awards. And there's so many. I can't even imagine in my head tallying up all the people that are involved. This community that we are a part of is really amazing. And I love hearing all the different names and people that are involved and people that do support the Berkeley County Youth Fair. If you have never done that and you're interested, you should check out their website, berkeleycountyyouthfair.org, and find out how you can be a part of this amazing organization. And at, while you're there on the website, if you've been watching all night long, how about going over to scrolling down to the bottom where it says People's Choice Award. And if you've seen an exhibitor tonight that just really shines and you really want to get your vote in for them, you can do so. That's what the People's Choice is all about. And and we are getting lots of responses to those every night. And so I just want to shout out to that. And we will be back in just a few minutes. And when we come back, we are going to, um, guys, what are we going into next? Help Female me out. Female the show. The, oh, so that's a big one, right? That's a big deal. Oh, big okay, deal. so big deal coming up. we got a big drive coming up. We're looking forward to that. Uh, Matt, take us into the break. This portion of the show is brought to you by WVU Medicine, Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Center, the best in health care close to home. Back with more from the youth for after this. In our present crisis, we need inspired problem solvers, not the kind of politics we always get from the politicians who take us for granted. Daniel Bennett is running for delegate because he believes that the problems we face will be solved by the hands, the hearts, and the hard work of West Virginians. You know that there's no more hardworking individual that would work for you as your member um, in your district for West Virginia. I'm Daniel Bennett, and I'm running for a delegate to give back, pay it forward, and to be your voice in Charleston. WVU Medicine joins with the community in celebrating the hard work and dedication of all the youth in our area who will be a part of the first ever Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. WVU Medicine applauds the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board for making this virtual fair possible and doing their part to protect the health and safety of our community by not having a traditional fair at the fairgrounds this year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. WVU Medicine is proud to be a blue ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. 
Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Panhandle Homes has helped build Berkeley County into West Virginia's showcase community one home at a time. We're proud to be from Berkeley County, the home of the country's longest consecutive running youth fair. We were born here, we grew up here, we know many of you, and you know us. Panhandle Homes wishes all of our youth of Berkeley County nothing but the best for this year's virtual youth fair. Panhandle Homes of Berkeley County, here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for you. PanhandleHomesWV.com. Is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rear view mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times than a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. Matt Crawford here for TV10. We are flying through the evening as it is already 7.45, just about two hours and 15 minutes left to go, and we're 45 minutes in to the auction, Mary Beth. Oh, my gosh, I didn't even think about that. It's been open for 45 minutes, and we just saw Drew. Did he give us an update to say that people are getting online? The number the $10,000 came out in some capacity. I know that. There's been $10,000 in bids already placed. That's awesome. So cool. What a great testimony to um, this community. And you know what? Before we jump into this really important drive, since we have a few minutes on the schedule, we have not gotten any, like, stumping fact from you, Mikey. I think it's time for you to just, like, lay one on us. Like, do, what kind of fact do you want, though? I don't know. You're supposed to know what to, to dish out. Do you have any, you have any youth fair facts? Just on the youth oh, yeah. fair as a whole. You've given us individual animal and exhibit facts. That wasn't on my radar, <laughs> so I didn't do my homework on the youth How fair. How long have you been involved with the youth fair? You don't have one story, fact, anything? Mark's been there longer than uh, I have. Okay, I have a question. Well, we're not asking Mark me, right now. Maybe you guys know. You, Scott, Mikey. you might know this. Maybe you might know it, Mikey. But me. when did um, it move down to Harry Shiley Park? I'm not that old, y'all. That's so I should oh, be exempt. Oh, well, so the rest of us are because I remember saying, going to the one at Martinsburg High School. Let me throw you under that and bus. And so do you I mean when was I it what was it? it all happening, but years Like what decade age. was it in the 70s? It wasn't the 8. Well, would have been in the 90s? It would have been Cuz the 80s I would have been 80s. going to the fair there, but I can't remember. I'm guess, oh, I'm I guess in late 80s. I guess that's how old we are. We can't even remember. 1991 someone's is that what you're saying no, that's, that's when how... i was born so i don't oh, know these gosh. answers <laughs> all right well so we're gonna somebody... 1981 okay. from the peanut gallery okay i was gonna say someone surely is gonna text you the answer <laughs> yes, so we moved quit. to down to the fairgrounds where they are now in 1981 81. drew board there's your fact about the berkeley county youth fair drew could have just walked down the hallway and stuck his head <laughs> in and hollered it in he had to text it it does feel like, it, I don't know if it, it kind of feels like we've been there for a long time where they are, which that is a long time, but longer. I don't know. Going but, on almost 40 years, 40 mm -hmm. years next year. That is a so, long time. Yeah that's, yeah. that's not a short stint. Yes. So this year the ground is just getting that time to just rest and there's nothing going on out <laughs> there. And so anyways, enough of all that. Let's move into the big drive that's ahead of us here in the beef show. And Scott and Mark, tell us who made it to the female show, um, the Grand Champion Drive, right? Okay, well, this is the big one. This is called this is Female of Show. So we're going to pick the female of show, and she comes out of all the Grand Champions from all the breeds. So Mark's going to introduce those for us. So from our Angus show, uh, we are looking for the Exhibitor 120, Page Knot. Give me, give me one second here. I think I may have uploaded the. Uh... Oh no, that was the right one. Okay, I was looking at the wrong, wrong label on the uh, the file. We're good. And from our Hereford show, we are looking for exhibitor three three six, Andrew Bohr. Three 
from our Shorthorn Show, Exhibitor 207, Taylor Barrett. And from our All Other Breeds, AOB Show, we are looking for 336, Andrew Bohr. And our last would be from the Crossbred Division, and that individual would be 41, Cooper Knott. Okay. So now we're going to hear from our judge. He's got the placings and going to tell us who's going to be the female of the show. I think that you guys have a really nice set of females to choose from in this Grand Champion Drive. I think each of them represent the breed extremely well and, and bring a lot to the table and, and these kids have done a great job with them in a in a trying year. Um, one comes to the top for me I think from a freshness standpoint and an overall design and and just a unique female that I, I like first impression especially of this heifer. Um, I'm going to use the AOB to be your Grand Champion overall. I really love how level she is out over her hip and down her spine, how she ties into her front one third. I like how deep flanked she is in comparison to her chest floor. And when she, when it, the young man gets her out and moves her, she seems to move pretty well too. And I just think this is the best complete package that we have to choose from in this final drive. For the reserve, it gets pretty tough for me. I think two females come to the top. I really like this Angus female that we use to win the show, and I like the reserve in that. Angus show too. I also like his crossbred awful well. I think both of these you can make a case for, for either one of them not only for reserve but you could have made a case for grand champion. Today I think that the crossbred heifer is the best heifer to fall in the reserve spot. I think she brings the most to the table. I think when I separated her from the Angus to be reserve I think I, that the angle to her shoulder blade is better compared to the Angus female but both of them have a lot of positive attributes and I think it had bright futures but today I would use a crossbred for reserve really nice set of females to choose from in this drive Sorry about that, folks. Uh, the great thing with this female show, this is for the bragging rights, and it just happens to be that our, our champion overall was a Semitol, and it were, the grand champion received $25, and it received 25 from M&M Semitols. That's the Jim Moore family. Also receive a banner from Shanghai Grocery, Harry and Dorothy Snow. Our reserve champion will receive $10, and that's from Windy Rock Farm, George and Brenda Miller. And the banner will come from the Knott family, uh, farm and at Shepherdstown Pharmacy. Again, we'd like to thank all of our sponsors of the show uh, for our 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 female part of the show. Um, we just could not do this without you. So again, thanks to all of you. Well, congratulations to all of them. And tell us what we have coming up when we come back. To explain the class that's coming up. It's the feeder calf, correct? That's correct. And feeder calf. That is a calf born from January to June. Of this year. Of this year. Um, they must weigh 250 pounds and no more than 600 pounds when they bring them. And so these are future market steer projects. Okay. And future freezer beef. Okay. Well, when we get back after this break, we will go into the feeder calf class. So stick with us. We're not done the beef show yet, and we'd love for you to see it out to the end. And then after that, remember, we're going to have the poultry show and some more indoor exhibits. So we still have a lot more to go. Don't go anywhere.
We're Sini's, not just an appliance store anymore. They're your one-stop resource for all home needs, whether it's custom kitchen design, countertops, or cabinets, or check out their new sleep studio with Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Stearns and Foster. For all of your outdoor living needs, Orsini's has Gladiator Garage Works, Traeger Grills, barbecue accessories, barbecue rubs and sauces, and every flavor wood pellets. Visit their brand new 8200 square foot showroom at 360 Hack Wilson Way, 304-267-7251, Orsini's.com. WV Medicine joins with the community in celebrating the hard work and dedication of all the youth in our area who will be a part of the first ever Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. WV Medicine applauds the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board for making this virtual fair possible and doing their part to protect the health and safety of our community by not having a traditional fair at the fairgrounds this year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. WV Medicine is proud to be a blue ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair. I'm Rod Hawker for Johnny's, where we've been serving the community for over 65 years. That means one thing, you've been supporting us for over 65 years. So to all of our customers at our Chambersburg and Martinsburg locations, we'd like to say a great big thank you for your continued patronage. You've been there for us and we'll continue to be there for you with restaurant quality foods at wholesale prices. And if you haven't tried Johnny's yet, what are you waiting for? Stop in at either location and experience the Johnny's difference today. Panhandle Homes has helped build Berkeley County into West Virginia's showcase community one home at a time. We're proud to be from Berkeley County, the home of the country's longest consecutive running youth fair. We were born here, we grew up here, we know many of you, and you know us. Panhandle Homes wishes all of our youth of Berkeley County nothing but the best for this year's virtual youth fair. Panhandle Homes of Berkeley County, here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for you. PanhandleHomesWV.com. I'm Natalie Tennant. As West Virginians, we'll get through this crisis together. We've been knocked down before, and we get back up. I've been there with you, and I'll be there again working for a better future, like I did as Secretary of State. By modernizing the office, I saved you money and gave it back, lowered fees and helped businesses create jobs, and made voting easier. We need that kind of leadership again. It takes courage, vision, and cooperation. I know we can do this, West Virginia. I believe in you. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons goal of financing for all, and Parsons famous above market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair and TV10's coverage and WRNR TV on YouTube of the Youth Fair. This portion of the fair brought to you by Hagerstown Ford. They are changing the car buying experience. See a full list of inventory at FordofHagerstown.com. Back over to our hosts this week, Mary Beth Blair. So we realized when we went to break that we did not officially announce the two big winners at the end of that drive. We let the judge tell us some things, but we want to go back to that before we move on. Scott, and tell us who those grand okay. and reserve winners were. The female of the show went to Andrew Bohr with his scimitar heifer, and the reserve female of the show went to Cooper Knott with his crossbred heifer. Okay. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. Yes. Nice Great job. Great achievement. Awesome job. And now we are going to go into the feeder calf class. Ready okay, for that one? feeder calves. We've got we've got eight entries, and I'm going to let Mark start off with our first one. All right. So the first entry uh, in class 18 feeder calves would be 108 Lindsay Walls. Judge's comments are, I realize this steer resembles our two first steers an awful lot, but we don't have him saw this. <laughs> he has a lot of muscle in that clubby lot. With that said, I'd like to see him a little more level spine, especially from his hooks to pins. When he moves, he seems to be more rigid, especially on his back too. 
I'd also like to turn his hocks out just a shade. I do like the potential in his hair coat and the chrome wheels. Mm -hmm. Chrome wheels indicate the white on these feet there. When a calf has white on him, mm -hmm. he's considered to have chrome. Got it. Oh my gosh. And you can just tell the age by the frolickiness, like compared to the older um, ages, they were very like stoic in their presentation. <laughs> and the judge has awarded a Lindsay a red ribbon. Our second entry, uh, Exhibitor 120, page not. The judge says that this is a steer that has a lot of good about him, especially from a commercial standpoint. He is long-bodied and looks like he will reach a desirable frame score. I think that if you were going to improve him, it would be in his front one-third. He tends to get a little deep in his chest floor and steep in the angles of his shoulder blade and forearm. He's been, uh, Paige has been awarded a red ribbon. Our third entry is 146, Zachary Pike, Swan Pond 4-H. Um, the judge says that he has, that he's long-bodied with an adequate amount of depth and thickness. He tends to be a little soft in the center of his spine and even though he fills his track well on the move he could be a little more flexible on his back too and has been awarded a red ribbon our fourth entry in this class is 205 reagan barrett This is a steer that is a little bit of a disadvantage from an overall condition standpoint. I think that he has a lot of nice pieces from a structural standpoint. He is just a little green today and narrower based than the other feeder calves. And has been awarded a red ribbon. Our fifth entry is 207, Taylor Barrett. Okay, so that this um, is another steer, much like the other one above him, that's a little too green and narrow base today to get any higher in this class, and has been awarded a red ribbon. Our sixth entry, 252, Donald Moss. He is Mount Aries 4-H. He has a lot put together in a very moderate package and he likes his overall makeup. All right, our next entry is 316, Seth Painter. This is a steer that doesn't hit you hard when you first analyze him, but with that said, he doesn't have many holes in him either. His angles seem to be right, and he has an adequate amount of bone on a desirable size frame. He doesn't... That's it. And has been awarded a red ribbon. And Seth is with the Wetomka 4-H. Our last entry in this class is entry 340, Blake Butler. The judge says that this is a really complete feeder calf, and he's going to begin the class with this one in the first placing. I think he is laying the groundwork for being a really nice fat steer. When you get behind him, he has a nice turn to his top and carries into his hind quarter. When you view him from the side, he gives you a good look because he is really extended in his front, and he's showing good rib shape for this stage of his development. When he gets out and moves, he looks to have plenty of flexibility. All right, so now we have the placings. In first place is Blake Butler, Exhibitor 340. In second place 
Exhibitor 252, Donald Moss. In third place, Exhibitor 316, Seth Painter. In fourth place, Okay, in fourth place, we have 108, Lindsey Walls. And in fifth place, 146, Zachary Pike. And in sixth place, 120, Paige Knott. In seventh place, Exhibitor 205, Reagan Barrett. And in 8th place, Exhibitor 207, Taylor Barrett. So with that said, our first place in this class will be our grand champion feeder calf, Blake Butler, Exhibitor 340. Our reserve champion feeder calf will be Exhibitor 252, Donald Moss. Nice job, feeder calf exhibitors. Look forward to seeing those next year as market steers. And uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors for the Feeder Calf Show. Um, our grand champion uh, sponsor is Horse Run Farms. Our grand champion Feeder Calf will receive $25. A banner from Hilltop Feed uh, and the Pension. And our reserve champion will receive $10 from Horseshoe Run Farm and a banner from Hilltop Farm, the Morgans. We want to thank all of our sponsors today for all of our beef shows. Uh, we just could not do this without all of you. And again, thanks for everyone for all the support. And the big thing I would like to have a shout out is to thank the radio station and, and Matt and Mary Beth and, and Mikey and everyone that's helped with this this week and, and all the people at the fair that's put this on hundreds of hours. You've all done a tremendous, tremendous job and, and our community owes you a huge debt. Thank you so much. Scott, any closing words at the end of the beef show today? Oh, I'd just really like to echo what Mark just said. Just the platform you've given these used to show their hard work has been an outstanding radio station, and you've done a great job. And once again, back to these exhibitors, though, uh, thank you for participating in the virtual fair. Uh, you all made it happen. So thanks for the great job, the hard work you did all year. It really shows. And... Uh, Hope to see everybody back next year at the Beef Show. Yes, absolutely. So congratulations to all of the Beef Show winners and exhibitors. You all did an amazing job. Thanks to uh, Scott and Mark for their excellent job all night commentating and announcing all the winners. And we did get a, a already after just 23 minutes. So this was earlier given to us. So this is, I'm sure it's totally outdated by now but just to give you an idea that 23 minutes into the live auction and we had already received 153 bids um, from 18 bidders and with a total of over $27,000 already bid on these uh, 183 animals so good job Berkeley County keep it going keep bidding and uh, don't give up and keep uh, Keep up, keep up the good work. So thanks again for being a part of this year's 2020 virtual beef show. And when we come back after the break, we're going to head into the poultry show. And um, after that, we'll get started on some more indoor exhibits. So we still have a lot left, Matt. We have two hours. Yeah, just about. We rolled through yeah. the, uh, the cattle show and the beef show. So... Uh... Yep. We well, have some, some time to spare, and we should be able well, to get a lot yeah. of indoor we'll, exhibits yes. in tonight. Yes, we'll catch up, because last night yes. we got a little bit behind on those, so that'll give us some time to, we'll make some ground on those tonight. So stick around for the poultry show coming up next. This portion of the Youth Fair has been brought to you by the Berkeley Morgan County Health Department. Stop by and see them at 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg, or go ahead and give them a call at 304-263-5131, online at bchealthdept.org. Back with more of the Youth Fair after this. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. 
And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price, and we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it, period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. Our dad taught us a lot about the law, but he taught us even more about life and people. He taught us to treat clients like family. At the Skinner Law Firm, the firm our father started here in the Eastern Panhandle, we still believe that. We also believe that everyone has the right to be protected from those who don't play by the rules. We believe it's about helping people. Call us at the Skinner Law Firm, where we treat you like family. Hello, this is Riley Moore, Republican candidate for state treasurer. The 73rd annual Berkeley County Youth Fair is a special opportunity for our youth to showcase their talent and hard work. We can all be proud here in the region to be one of the few remaining fairs dedicated to youth exhibitors. It is particularly important during COVID-19 that we continue to support the hard work of our youth for this amazing annual youth fair. I'm Riley Moore, and I thank you for your support of our youth. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. Boyd Veterinary Service in Jarridgetown is dedicated to the health and wellness of your herd, offering health and reproductive services and now scheduling flushes and donor housing for fall 2020 at our new donor facility in Jarridgetown. Dr. John Boyd wants to thank all exhibitors for participating in the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair and wishes each one success with their projects. That's Boyd Veterinary Service, phone 304-279-0217. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. My dad, Brad Nall, is running for the House of Delegates 60th. He needs your vote to improve the poor infrastructure exposed by the pandemic. That includes better internet, cell phone, and roads. Thanks, Laura. I also want to keep our young people like you in West Virginia. Brad Nall needs your vote to make a difference on these issues. Remember, when it's time to vote in the fall, you need to vote for Brad Nall. Paid for by candidate. Three cheers for free delivery from South Berkeley Pharmacy to your front door. South Berkeley Pharmacy Home Health Care Specialists is more than just a pharmacy. We have the best gift shop in town and nobody beats our service. South Berkeley Pharmacy Home Health Care Specialists SouthBerkeyPharmacy.com Hi, this is Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10's Rob Mario. My family first stayed at La Bella Vita at Deep Creek Lake in Maryland several summers ago, and we've gone back every summer since. La Bella Vita is owned by Martinsburg residents who've meticulously decorated and furnished this amazing mountaintop vacation home with breathtaking lake views that is only two hours away, featuring five bedrooms, five and a half bathrooms, a fireplace, a large family room with an 85-inch TV, a hot tub, and multiple decks. 
place. There's lots more of the La Bella Vita experience to enjoy, including Deep Creek Lake itself, a 3,900-acre lake with 69 miles of shoreline. It's a great combination, and it's waiting for you. So take it from somebody who's been there multiple times. You are going to love staying at La Bella Vita at Deep Creek Lake. For more information, visit the Facebook page or contact Taylor Made Deep Creek Vacations and Sales or call 301-750-2182. Are you looking for a full-service web design company right here in the Eastern Panhandle? Then look no further than Pro Design LLC, specializing in web design and development, web hosting and application development. Pro Design is a locally owned company serving local clients since 1997 with a reputation of quality, creativity, and personal touch. Let Pro Design build or redesign your dream website. Find them online at professionaldesign.com or phone 304-676-9940. Panhandle Homes has helped build Berkeley County into West Virginia's showcase community one home at a time. We're proud to be from Berkeley County, the home of the country's longest consecutive running youth fair. We were born here, we grew up here, we know many of you, and you know us. Panhandle Homes wishes all of our youth of Berkeley County nothing but the best for this year's virtual youth fair. Panhandle Homes of Berkeley County, here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for you. PanhandleHomesWV.com. Welcome back into the 2020 Virtual Berkeley County Youth Fair. Matt Crawford here with you for TV10. We sped through the beef show, so we're going to change up the order tonight. Just for your, if you're following along on what is supposed to be going on tonight, we were supposed to go right from the beef show into the poultry show. The poultry show was not supposed to start until nine. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of indoor exhibits to fill the half hour we have. Do the poultry show, then come back and close out That's the way right. we were anticipating and we yeah. will do some more indoor exhibits. But first, we have some awards to give out, Mary Beth. Yeah, I like that. It shakes things up a little bit. We have a little bit of indoor exhibits, then we're going to go to the poultry show, then we'll go back to the indoor exhibits. So, I mean, because we wouldn't want to have Mikey on the air for an entire hour by himself, right? Absolutely not. I think he could fill an hour. <laughs> Yeah, no, he could. And actually, here to help him with the indoor exhibits is going to be Miss Youth Fair 2019, Hannah Alt. Hannah, welcome back to the studio. She is here with us. And we are going to, you'll see her here in a second. So what I want to do now, I haven't had a chance to do this all evening, and I want to make sure, I, it is up on the website, but I want to just let you know who last night's uh, People's Choice winners were. And also to remind you, if you want to vote for People's Choice for the Beef Show, you can do so until 11.59 tonight. So no emails will be accepted with votes after that time. But hey, it's only 8.17, so you have till 11.59 to get those votes in. So yesterday was day three and Tuesday's winners of the People's Choice. There's several, so I'm gonna read through it. We'll start with the animals and for Market Hog, the People's Choice is Exhibitor 198, Joseph Lynch. Congratulations. Um, the Swine Guilt, it was a tie. That it was. It was a tie. So the tie goes to each person will receive award. Exhibitor 76, Jacob Phoebus, and Exhibitor 62, Garrett Glassford. So two winners for the People's Choice in the Swine Guilt. Um, and let's see, we're going to go down to the indoor exhibits. Engines and tractors, the People's Choice went to Exhibitor 316, Seth Painter, congratulations. Indoor exhibits management, Exhibitor 309, Riley Flint, you're the People's Choice. For indoor exhibits, another tie. We got another tie, guys. Natural resources and environment, the tie goes to... Uh, well, there's a tie between Exhibitor 405, which is Mark Hunter, and Exhibitor 428, which is Peyton Bowers. Congratulations to Mark and Peyton. You were the people's choice. And finally, in indoor exhibits, miscellaneous, Exhibitor 350, Grayson Anderson. He was the people's choice. Now, I think that this was the uh, last night I received a note, too, that not every... 
um, thing that we saw in last night's show, there was not a uh, submission for every single category. So we only counted what categories um, names were submitted for. So if you're saying, well, what about this or the mm -hmm. hog? I guess, can you, there was no market hog that was people's choice. Let's pick a people's choice but between the three of us. I, I don't remember them all though. I'm trying to think if I had a favorite because I did by the end of the night. I was like, uh, I say you really liked the shiny pig that won. I did. See, I picked that. I you thought, did pick that. And honestly, I didn't know to pick it for structural reasons or knowing the nope. actual things that the judges would have picked it for. I just thought the pig looked good. I mean, I thought the pig shot was shiny and really well kept. And so I was judging on presentation, which obviously is part of what the judges see. But I didn't know any of the other things. So... I was proud of myself for, for picking that. So I will just, you know, that could be. Yeah, absolutely. See, I have a different favorite. Okay. What so was your favorite? My favorite. Um, so all the exhibitors kind of got a little out of whack when we first uh -huh. announced that it was, you know, virtual. Yes. And I completely understand because yeah. I'd have been right there with them. Right. Um, but some of our exhibitors kind of took that leap of faith mm -hmm. and started enrolling in virtual shows. Oh, wow. Um, so I'm going to pick mine based fact. on some facts that I know. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pick my kind of people's choice as Sierra Knight. Okay. Um, because she actually won grand champion from a virtual show. Prior Where was that to virtual our fair. show that she competed in? I do not know, but I guarantee you, Vicky will uh -huh. text, text me us. here in just a minute. Her and Michael let me know. Uh -huh. um, but I think the that shows resiliency. Sure. Um, in what our kids are doing, you right. know, they're not afraid to take that leap of faith and kind of jump off the deep end um, <laughs> without knowing what's going to happen. Sure. And to know that our kids not only did that but excelled on it uh -huh. across a national level. Yeah. Shows that, you know, we have some very high quality kids mm -hmm. that are putting a lot of effort, time, resources, you know, right. into these projects. You know, it's sure. not just to fill out my little book and be done with it. The, this is hours upon hours of work. Right. And, I, and I've, I said it once tonight and I'll say it again and I'll fight anybody that wants to say it's <laughs> not. Showing livestock is a sport. Yeah. Oh, I believe that and agree with that after watching all that I've watched this week. It's impressive. And just hearing in earlier when... Um, Scott and Mark were talking about how long these those exhibitors in the beef show work with their Absolutely. animals. I mean, it's not like some of the other, I mean, not, not to take away from the mm -hmm. other animals, but the fact that they are working with their animals almost an entire year. So pretty much it after the year. show, it yeah, so after year. this show is over, literally anyone who is going to show next year or compete in the beef show, the work begins from buying and then beginning to raise that um, market animal or exhibit animal. Yep. So that's that's just so impressive. That's a, that is commitment. So I, as is all of, I should say not is as are all of the exhibitors this week. Just such effort, time put into these um, various things. And we're loading up pictures and um, so we can get the exhibits together to show you. Which one are we going to see here in a few seconds, uh, Mikey? I believe we are starting with Class 17. Okay, um, and what would that be? be? Class 17 indoor exhibits is what you're going to see in the next segment. It should start with Class 1, which is This is 4-H. Okay. So we will either see the exhibitor with the project. Okay. We may see just a project. Um, this is kind of our introduction to 4-H. So we give oh, wow. them a lot of creativity gotcha. to take it and run. Okay. So if you're out there and you've been waiting for this indoor exhibit section, class, whatever we call it, section? Uh, Division, Division 17, class Division 1. Division 17, class 1. I think we're ready, Matt. Are we ready? Let's go for it. All right. Well, let's bring in Hannah, too. Hannah, are you ready to help us with this? I'll try All my right. best. All right. <laughs> we got to get you ready because you're going to be helping Mikey on Friday. So here you now, go. Mike, Mikey's ditching us on Friday. Oh, that's right. I'll, I'll be here gonna... for the beginning. Okay. I'll be here for the beginning. <laughs> Get her started. Yes. And okay. then I'm full on, I'm going to ditch her. So I'm going to read well. part of these and then I'm going to actually hand my official okay. paper over to Hannah and let her right. give her hand at announcing. Well, let's get started on our indoor exhibits. Go. So do you have a exhibitor number 12 first up? By golly, I do. I'm telling you, he is a good man. I'm just so, going to sit back and relax and let you yeah, guys take, take this the off. microphone. We got okay, this. Okay, I'm going to watch. I'm going to enjoy all these. I may come up to the mic and, you know, give my two cents if that's okay. But. And you make it sound like you have to come a, a far way for the mic. It's literally <laughs> two feet. Yeah. Don't yeah. bring it to me. Yeah. So right now we have Division 17 Class 1. This is 4-H, the opening project that every first year 4-H member must take. Come in first at exhibit number 12, Austin Jordan from Tomahawk. And again, this is a completion project, and every exhibitor will get a green ribbon. 
Coming next is exhibitor number 18, Mr. Brady Collis, coming from Valley Star 4-H. And as you can see, a lot of them choose one of their favorite photos to put on the front of these. So again, awesome job on this first year project, and he will be receiving a green ribbon as well. How old do you have when you say this is your first year 4-H? Is it a certain age you have to be to be in 4-H? Nine to be in 4-H. Okay. But first year members, as you will see by some of these, um, are all the way up to 20 years old. So one of the things I wondered too is the, the I always I always heard a lot growing up about the 4-H camp in the summertime. So you didn't get to have 4-H camp. So I'm sure that was a big oh, huge me. bummer. Maybe I shouldn't have brought that up. You might see me cry yeah. on camera. Were there a lot of tears for no, having no camp this year? Well, I from a lot of people that I know, they were very upset yeah. that they didn't get to go this year. I actually have never gotten the opportunity to oh, go wow. because it's always the same week that I have prior commitments going on. Gotcha. So I've never gotten to go, but okay. I heard it's a lot of great fun. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, back to you, Mikey. You wiped those tears away. I know. I finally <laughs> got through it. Finally got through it. So next should be entry number 67, Gunner Knight from Back Creek Valley. And again, you will see he is one of the, he's Sierra's little brother that I announced earlier and Madeline's little brother. So coming in there, Mr. Gunner Knight. Next entry should be entry number 71, Henry Stuckey. And he is hailing from the Tomahawk 4-H Club. Again, participants will be receiving a green ribbon. Next is entry number 94, Miss Catherine Peach. And she again comes from Bat Creek Valley Mountaineers. Next, you will hear a familiar last name, entry number 110, Miss Madeline Knight. She also comes from Back Creek Valley Mountaineers. I'm saying Maddie is known to sing a time yes, or two, so beautiful voice there. Aww. Next should be entry number 143, Mr. Wade Glassford, coming from Mount Airy Winners 4-H Club. Next entry is number 148, Allison Quintana from Scrabble Scramblers. Next entry, number 153, you will see an older version of a first entry project. So mm -hmm. he went a little bit more in detail with his woodworking. Very um, deep, much detail. Number 153, Mr. Brian Long, you will see him again tomorrow during the Dairy Show. He is in the Mount Airy Winners. So is this project a requirement of first yes. year? Yes. This is the okay. only project that we require you to take. Only your first year? Only the first year. And then after that, it's totally Free volunteer. Free reign. Yep. Got it. Okay. Next, we have number 178, Mr. Wyatt Serball from Scrabble Scramblers. All right, I want to ask Hannah. <laughs> Tell us what the four H's stand for in four age. H. Isn't that funny how we say it? Like we say four age. But it's really 4-H, right? I've never messed it up. It's 4-H. Okay. Sorry. I guess it was just My job me. depends <laughs> upon it. I've never messed that up either, Mary Beth. <gasps> Uh, so what's that? I said I'm not sure I've ever messed it up either. Oh, so it's just me who says I, think that was just I just kind of roll it off my tongue for age. I'm, I, I'm, I think it might just be a you. Okay. I was saying here's a picture of Sierra. That's why she was my best of choice. Anyway, coming up next is number two fourteen, Mister Leland Shoemaker from Swan Pond. Again, Leland, we saw him with his lamb the other night. Exhibitor number two forty, Colton Flint. 240 Colton Flint comes from the Tuscarora Indians 4-H Club. Exhibitor number 261, Miss Faith Reiner, coming from Southern Cross 4-H. And again, you will see a variety of projects, yeah. pictures, all sorts of cool things that these kids are doing. Exhibitor number 293, Miss Maggie Reiner, coming also from Southern Cross 4-H. Wait a second, did she make a cake? She did make a cake. Do you all get to eat that? I wish. <laughs> now, if she had been at the fair, would she have brought that as her project? Absolutely. So we have all kinds oh, of projects man. that show up from edible products. Um, some of them end up in my office, which I think is hilarious. Now, where is your office? Where's the 4-H Extension Agent Office at? The Extension Agent Office. Um, so WVU <laughs> Extension has a presence at 400 West Stevens Street, okay. which is also known as the Dunn Building. Yes. So we're yes. in suite okay. 302 on the third gotcha. floor. So officially okay someone called you the 4-H extension agent but you're actually WVU extension yes. so agent. so I'm West Virginia University 4-H and youth development extension agent. Okay so that it's all of that. Yes it's, okay. a, it's a mouthful so a lot of people just call me the 4-H agent so <laughs> okay. but yes yeah, so I am agent technically Mikey, a WVU right? faculty member. Okay oh wow okay. So next will be number 309 Riley Flint 
coming from Tuscarora Indians. Coming up next, Mr. 325, Mr. Timmy Lease, coming from Valley Star. Entry number 327, Mr. Trent Dunham, coming from Bat Creek Valley Mountaineers as well. So you will hear him and his sister's name, Grace, quite often in these indoor projects. Oh. Great, great jobs. Okay. Next in is 349, Mr. Grant Boyard. He is coming from the Tuscarora Indians. His family is actually where I got this awesome hat that I've been wearing all week. Um, <laughs> they were nice enough to notice that it was dirty the first night, so Julie hooked me up uh, with a new... I think I saw that on Facebook. They did, yeah. It was a big ordeal, so I got a nice, crisp Appalachian orchard hat. Um, so that was clean and white, and I got it on tonight. All right. Coming next is number 350, Mr. Grayson Anderson from Arden 4-H Club. Very cool and you know intriguing yeah. project there. Next, number 351, Miss Hannah Shanoltz from Blue Ridge Helping Hands. And as you said, all of these get a green ribbon. It's a participation yes. ribbon. Okay. And again, we will have bags available for them to pick up at okay. the fairgrounds, yes. and we will release that date. It'll, it's later on. Um, okay. It'll probably be a Saturday, but they will pick them up from the fair. Okay, great. Next is number 352, Mr. Henry McIntosh, coming from Valley Star 4-H Club. Next is number 354, Miss Kira Gillians, coming from a newly formed club, the Appalachian Clovers. Next is number 369, Miss Rowan Lombardo from Arden 4-H Club. This is a very skilled first-year member. She also takes part in our 4-H um, Shooting Sports Club. So very intriguing how they jump into the program and see so many different things. I know. that Just their interpretation and what, yes. what their expression of it is. I like that. It is that. amazing. I love the variety. Next is number 427, Mr. Nathan Lark Jr. Avery, his sister from Southern Cross as well, also was the one that commented on our YouTube a little bit earlier. Oh, yeah. So. I just got another question. I'm trying to find out the very answer, involved. Avery. Next is number 460, Miss Justine Burtz from the 4-H Horse Club. I have a feeling these two are related. The next one is 464, Parker Burtz, also from 4-H Horse Club. I know both of them. And rounding out that class should be entry number 488, Deshaun Smith from YLA, which is Youth Leadership. Gotcha. All right. Well, that is it for that section. And we're going to head into a break. But before we do, I just wanted to bring up something that we had talked about earlier. Um, I want to make sure I say someone's name right. So when you, I'm going to point to this for Mikey so he can help me say his name right. But I want to go back to, you remember earlier in the night, I said Wednesday a fair night is always the chicken barbecue night at the fair, which so many people enjoy and look forward to. Plan, if they make one trip to the fair, it's usually for that night because that, they just love that. But so this, I just want to have a shout out and thanks to plug those that help make this chicken barbecue night a success each year. This is usually sponsored by Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit. And I've been told that they are huge supporters of the fair because if there's anything that is needed, Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit will supply it. They give t-shirts to the exhibitors, sponsor the chicken barbecue, and they've supplied the bags that everyone's awards will be packed in this year for distribution. So a huge shout out to Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit. And then also I told you I would come back and I wanted to name the guys who cooked the chicken barbecue who are from the WVU Experimental Farm in Kearneysville. We want to thank them for their many, many years of service. They've been barbecuing for the Berkeley County Youth Fair. They're miss Everybody is missing seeing your faces this year. And those individuals are Dennis McGacky. Yep. I did it. I thought I knew that last name. Jim Gator Locke, Troy Hollis, Dave Leach, and Tim Winfield. Thanks, guys, for all your dedication over the years. We miss seeing you. But next year, we'll be seeing you back down at the youth fairgrounds. And now we're going to head into break, and we'll come back and bring you up to speed with whatever we're going to do next. It's going to be a surprise. I'm not sure what we're going to do when we come back, whether we're going to do indoor exhibits or poultry, but you, you have to stick around to find out.
This portion of the Youth Fair has been brought to you by Orsini. Stop by and see PJ and the gang at their new location, new showroom off Hack Wilson Way, just off of Route 9 in Martinsburg. Back with more from the Youth Fair next. I'm Rod Hawker for Johnny's, where we've been serving the community for over 65 years. That means one thing. You've been supporting us for over 65 years. So to all of our customers at our Chambersburg and Martinsburg locations, we'd like to say a great big thank you for your continued patronage. You've been there for us and we'll continue to be there for you with restaurant quality foods at wholesale prices. And if you haven't tried Johnny's yet, what are you waiting for? Stop in at either location and experience the Johnny's difference today. The historic McFarland House Inn and Restaurant is excited to introduce a fresh new summer menu and an all-new curbside menu. There are so many incredible new dishes to explore and enjoy from Chef Weldon and some fan favorites that will remain by popular demand. Check out the new menus on our website at historicmcfarlandhouse.com or our Facebook page. You can dine inside our charming historic home or outside in our beautiful garden. Call 304-263-1890 today to reserve your table or to place a curbside order to go. Floodwaters can spread E. coli bacteria. Here's Bill Kearns from the Berkeley County Health Department about what to do if your well is tested positive. If it's just a one-time contamination, you can superchlorinate your well, which we have instructions at the health department they could call and talk to us. You're providing uh, an excessive amount of bleach down the well. Then you do a runoff to get that out of the system to get the bleach through your lines, get any contamination out of there. You do a runoff of so long, and then you can have it tested again. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg. Call 304-263-5131. There is only one bank in the area that has been number one for nine consecutive years in the Eastern Panhandle. City National Bank has been voted the number one bank nine years in a row in the Journal's Reader's Choice poll. City National Bank has also been voted number one in customer satisfaction by J.D. Power & Associates three years in a row. City National Bank is proud to be a red ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. The City National Bank team wishes all of the youth the best of luck. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Boyd Veterinary Service in Jarrettstown is dedicated to the health and wellness of your herd, offering health and reproductive services and now scheduling flushes and donor housing for fall 2020 at our new donor facility in Jarrettstown. Dr. John Boyd wants to thank all exhibitors for participating in the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair and wishes each one success with their projects. That's Boyd Veterinary Service, phone 304-279-0217. Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. This portion of the program brought to you by second congressional Democratic candidate Kathy Kunkel, who wishes the best to all of this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair participants. Back over to the host for this week's events, Mary Beth Blair. Welcome back into the 8.30 hour, 8.37-ish. And so if you remember a little bit ago, I asked a question about what does 4-H stand for? And one of my watchers, a friend of mine, Janet O'Connell, whose daughter was Miss Youth Fair back in, I don't know, whenever she was, but I, she sent me a picture to remind me of Jillian. She was a Miss Youth Fair queen. So anyways, uh, her mom, uh, sent this to me so I could read it over the air, or she didn't tell me to, but I want to. So the pledge for 4-H, which embodies the four H's, I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. See, it's no wonder I love 4-H week. Absolutely. 4-H week, youth fair. All those things, those are so incredible. I didn't know those. Thank you for sending that to me, Janet. Appreciate that. And we are back with more indoor exhibits. We are continuing in section 17. I don't know if that means anything to you, but that's what section it is. And to help me introduce each exhibit is the reigning Miss 
Youth Fair, Miss Berkeley County Youth Fair 2019, Hannah Alt. Hannah, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Hannah, you know where you want to start? Mikey, do you have, do you want to explain what this section is? Yeah. So self-determined is just that. It is them themselves mm -hmm. determine what they want to do. Oh, I'm going to like this category. So you will see a multitude of different areas. You yeah. will see some videos. You will see some just single pictures. Um, it truly just depends on what the child wanted us. It has to be okay. educational. Okay. Um, it has to be something that they can exhibit. Okay. And, you know, outside of that realm, if, there, if there's a project mm -hmm. that covers that material they have to do that project book. okay so if they want to do a hiking project they have to do hiking okay level one first mm -hmm. um but once they max out of what they're doing that is when self-determined comes into play oh. so we see a lot of sports we see a lot of um different um charities we okay. see some hobbies um all sorts of different things. Great. Well, get to it. Hannah, start introducing them. Okay. Up first, we have exhibitor number 316, Seth Painter from the Wetumpka 4-H. And he will be receiving a first premium for this project. Very nice. Very well displayed. Up next, we have exhibitor number 337, Ashley Mullis from the New Seekers 4-H. I like that. And she will also be receiving a first premium. I imagine that's a good thing to hang on your door it during 4-H <laughs> week. Up next, we have number 437, Connor Chansey from Arden 4-H. And he also has a first premium. I like the tight font you used. Good job. And you'll notice in other classes, you only heard one first premium. Since they do cover a vast amount of knowledge, we put them into subcategories. Oh, so there okay. can be a first premium in each of those subcategories. Uh -huh. So you could have up to 20 some odd first premiums in just self-determined. Wow. Up next is number 451, Camden Fry. He is also from Arden 4-H. And we have another first premium. Nice job. And he also has a video. Let's see it. Hello, my name is Cameron can we hear Fry, me? and this is my third year in 4-H. So he did his this project. Year, I, I can tell you what it is. I've listened to all of these. <laughs> um, he did his project on his family history. Family. So he went out and took different pictures and did different kind of interviews with his family. And he equates it to an, a peach tree, I believe, um, because just as a peach tree would grow, so do families. Aww. So very, very interesting, very cool project. Very creative. Next is number 458, Jackson Haddock from Appalachian 4-H with another first premium. And again, he did his on beekeeping. And it looks like if that's him, he even got in a beekeeper yes. suit. So we always, we have a couple that usually continually do bees. Um, so we've even had some actually bring display hives. Um, it's very interesting to see what all these kids come nice. up with. <laughs> as long as there's no bees. There isn't. Okay. Number 122, Peyton Dugan from the Scrabble Scramblers 4-H. And she will be receiving a second premium. Then we have number 436. And I'm sorry if I say this name wrong. Is it Camiana Ketterman? Camiana. Okay. Good job. From Four Fingers 4-H with another second premium. Very well done. Then we have number 440, Kennedy James from the Wetumpka 4-H, also receiving a second premium. That's fun. Number 100, Kelsey Payne, also from Wetumpka 4-H, will be receiving a blue ribbon. Number 157, Cheyenne Grove from Valley 4-H, will be receiving a blue ribbon. Casey Payne, number 284, from Wetumpka 4-H, also with a blue ribbon. And you'll notice in these, so there's a pair of sisters, and they have uh -huh. very similar products in that they are both home canning. Okay. So home canning used to be a separate category, mm -hmm. um, but with the decline in kind of the home preservation, um, it has now been brought into kind of that self-determined. So oh, okay. you will see multiple 
-hmm. canyon-esque type projects yeah. in this category. Up next, number 286, Caden Grove from New Seekers 4-H with a blue ribbon. That's a good project right there. I'm trying to find <laughs> 286. Giving you a hard time there, Matt. I promise this picture does not look as good I don't think as that what the project picture is. Right there is <laughs> promise. What was the uh, name on this? Caden Grove. Caden Grove. I have a Parker Grove. That would be the sibling. Parker Grove just wet. But this one doesn't have a number on it either so we're going to take a shot in the dark here and go with this as their project what was the number 286 286 there, there we go. go there we go <laughs> playing Good roulette job. And one. wow and Very up impressive. next will be parker grove number 306 from new seekers receiving a blue ribbon as well So I know that we had questions earlier about when is cake decorating. So cake decorating is technically a self-determined project, okay. but it is judged usually by the same judges that do all of the indoor cooking projects. Mm -hmm. um, so they would have submitted multiple photos just like this. It's a cross section. And you'll see this when we announce section 15 on Friday, I believe. Okay. Um, the cross section is how they can tell texture. Mm. Up next, number 369, Rowan Lombardo from Arden 4-H. Also receiving a blue ribbon. Now, with the cooking category, typically would they have had to taste? But this year yes. they can't because they can't submit so it. So usually all of the cooking categories, including the cakes, they will take a small slice mm -hmm. out of the opposite focal side mm -hmm. um, and all that all those fancy terms mean they turn it around and take a slice yeah. from the back um, or they will eat um, one of the cookies out of the three or one okay. of the brownies out of the so three. So this year in lieu of that what do they do? Just look for texture, look for presentation? So we usually try to find judges that know and understand mm -hmm. what they're actually looking at. Okay. Um, so a lot of times you can look at a you know a cross section and mm -hmm. say oh it looks dry or it doesn't look like it had any leavening mm -hmm. in it. Um, and that is where this year's mm -hmm. projects, how they were judged. Wow. Very good. Up next, number 273, Jamie Dixon from the Superchargers 4-H with a red ribbon. And then last, we'll have number 447, Mariana Hartman from New Seekers 4-H receiving a red ribbon as well. So what she's explaining is her project that she made. Um, so she goes in detail that includes what is on the outside as well as what is in the inside. Good job. So we got through another section. That is class oh. three of miscellaneous, which is the first part of self-determined. Okay. All right, so we're going to take a break here, and we're going to come back. It's um, 8.47, so are we going to do a few more indoor exhibits? Yep, before? We, have, we have one more section in Section 17, okay. which is section or class number four. We're so we will do that, that we out back. and then go to and the poultry. And then we'll go to the poultry so, show. So if you're waiting on the poultry show, just a few more minutes away, uh, we'll be there. And we also are working, I, I know several people have asked, what's the quickest way to get to the livestock auction website to place your bid we are working on getting you a button on our website berkeleycountyyouthfair.org so you can just go quickly without us having to tell you another website since you already know that one so well so stay tuned we'll let you know when that's there we'll be back It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson.
WV Medicine joins with the community in celebrating the hard work and dedication of all the youth in our area who will be a part of the first ever Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. WV Medicine applauds the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board for making this virtual fair possible and doing their part to protect the health and safety of our community by not having a traditional fair at the fairgrounds this year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. WV Medicine is proud to be a blue ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair. I'm Kathy Kunkel. I'm running for U.S. House of Representatives here in the 2nd District. I'm not taking any corporate cash because I believe it's one of the fundamental problems in our politics today. The rest of the country does owe a debt to us here in Appalachia. For decades, we have been powering this country. We've had billions of dollars of wealth extracted from our state. Three families in our country currently control more wealth than half of the population. We need a government for the many, not the few. And that's why I'm running for Congress. I'm Kathy Kunkel, and I approve this message. The historic McFarland House Inn and Restaurant is excited to introduce a fresh new summer menu and an all-new curbside menu. There are so many incredible new dishes to explore and enjoy from Chef Weldon and some fan favorites that will remain by popular demand. Check out the new menus on our website at historicmcfarlandhouse.com or our Facebook page. You can dine inside our charming historic home or outside in our beautiful garden. Call 304-263-1890 today to reserve your table or to place a curbside order to go. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. Hello, this is Riley Moore, Republican candidate for state treasurer. The 73rd annual Berkeley County Youth Fair is a special opportunity for our youth to showcase their talent and hard work. We can all be proud here in the region to be one of the few remaining fairs dedicated to youth exhibitors. It is particularly important during COVID-19 that we continue to support the hard work of our youth for this amazing annual youth fair. I'm Riley Moore, and I thank you for your support of our youth. Welcome back in to TV 10's coverage of the 2020 Berkeley County Youth Fair. Matt Crawford here with you for TV 10, getting ready to finish out Section 17 of the indoor yes. exhibits. This portion of the Youth Fair brought to you by the Skinner Law Firm, where we treat you like family. The Skinner Law Firm wishes success to all of this year's Youth Fair participants. Visit them at SkinnerFirm.com. Now back over to the host for this week's events, Mary Beth Blair. So uh, before the break, I said that we were working on getting you a quick link to the livestock auction, and I didn't realize it, but Brian over at Pro Design, he's so quick, he already had it done. They came running down the hallway to tell me, as you can see, I don't know if I got the glare right, but you can see there, see that red button, online auction? That is on the Berkeley County Youth Fair uh, website, so you just click on that and it goes straight into the livestock auction page for the Berkeley County Youth Fair. That's the easiest, quickest way to find it, to be to bid on it, and or to become a, a market buyer. Just go over there right now and and bid on some animals, lots of them, right? And hey, we have the poultry show coming up a little bit later. We're gonna do some indoor projects right now. Do you know tomorrow we have indoor exhibits, the horse show and the dairy show. So, so much more left in this youth fair week virtually. We are just moving right along. And Hannah, Miss Berkeley County Youth Fair 2019 is in the studio to do a few more indoor projects with us before we hit the nine o'clock hour. Hannah, you ready to share some more projects with us? Absolutely. Okay, great. Starting off, we have number 260, Faith McDonald from Wetumpka 4-H. And she will be receiving a first premium. Don't move on until we see her project. All right, give me one second. 260, Faith McDonald. All right. There we go. I know I uploaded that. <laughs> Where the heck did, there it is. Look at that. Up next, we have number 280, Julie Snyder from the Mount Airy 4-H. She will also be receiving a first premium. How creative. 
I'm assuming that's all of her awards over the years. It is. Oh my goodness, what a great way to save, save and savor your. I would say, and it's nice to see them actually keep them because yeah. I know, like, from over the years. I mean, look years, at all those ribbons. I mean, you could just lose one or two. Yes. It looks like she very much treasures hers. I think every kid has a stash of them in their tack box. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we have number 318, Sierra Dixon from the Superchargers 4H with another first premium. So this is actually a little look sideways. Okay. So she actually created a bookshelf uh -huh. out of a guitar. I like that. That's very creative. So that's showing where you would mm -hmm. attach it. A lot of effort and thought go into these projects. Mm -hmm. And we're still in the self-determined category? Yes. Okay. Up next, we have number 454, Colin Fry from the Arden 4-H with another hey, first premium. Colin so Colin turned in one of those sports videos that we talked oh, about. Okay. So he took up an interest in golf this year. Uh -huh. um, so he goes on to say that he has a little bit of, you know, practice with it, but he's not a professional. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, this is, it, this encourages them to take that next step and learn a new skill or a new game in this sense. Um, a lot of these kids that do some of the more in-depth self-determined projects don't necessarily do outdoor projects. So this is a good shot of him teeing up. Yeah. Next is number 337, Ashley Mullis from the New Seekers 4-H with a second premium. So, and I'm going to explain that a little bit. Um, so Ashley is very involved with Relay for Life mm -hmm. as well as her whole family. Um, so she decided this year to highlight that in her project. That's um, a great idea. And the judges absolutely loved the project that she turned in. So we were very thankful that Did she shared she, that with that us. We only get to see the front part. I don't remember how many no more photos we have okay. with that one. Um, Just, there we go. Here's the second one. My apologies. In the next I'll say, and that's her oh, story look. of how she's involved uh -huh. or why she's involved. So Aww. a lot of effort, a lot uh -huh. of, you know, a lot of passion, a lot yeah. of feelings come out with some of these. I like that. Up next, number 230, Brandon Willingham from Southern Cross 4-H will be receiving a third premium. I'll say, so you will see another one of those where we ask them to show some pages in their book. Um, so this goes on to explain um, that he is studying a different form of martial arts. Um, mm. So it goes on to list his instructor and some of the things that they would say. Uh -huh. Um, and I believe some of the photos that he submitted, he actually shows some of the stances. Um, and he was actually, um, you know, willing to share this. That's what these pictures are of um, during our 4-H roundup. Oh, um, so we held a roundup this past year, mm -hmm. um, probably for the first time in 10 years, maybe five, 10 years. Um, and he was one of our um, skilled entries that came in. And he did very well. Hannah was at that, too. I was. <laughs> I dragged her to everything. <laughs> Up next is number 412, Ashlyn Trotter from the Four Fingers 4-H with a third premium. I'm saying in this project, she made salsa, and I can attest to this family's <laughs> cooking abilities. It is very good salsa. Okay. Then we have number 190, Dylan Palmer from the Wetumpka 4-H, and he'll be receiving a blue ribbon. And then finally, we have number 231, Brianna Willingham from Southern Cross 4-H, also with a blue ribbon. And she shared this during our 4-H roundup as well. Um, it was actually a puppetry presentation. Aww. So she was able to come up and perform on the stage with this. Puppets. That's great. And I believe that is the end of our self-determined section. Wow, and that's perfect timing, really, because it's 8.57, and we had on our schedule to uh, launch the poultry show at 9 o'clock, so we're right on schedule, Matt. We'll be back after this word from our sponsors to introduce you to this year's 2020 poultry show. This portion of the Youth Fair brought to you by Parsons Ford. They became number one by making you number one first Parsons. Stop by and visit them. They're located on Route 45, Shepherdstown Pike, just outside of Martinsburg. Back with the Poultry Show next after this break.
WV Medicine joins with the community in celebrating the hard work and dedication of all the youth in our area who will be a part of the first ever Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. WV Medicine applauds the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board for making this virtual fair possible and doing their part to protect the health and safety of our community by not having a traditional fair at the fairgrounds this year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. WV Medicine is proud to be a blue ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. Orsini's not just an appliance store anymore. They're your one-stop resource for all home needs, whether it's custom kitchen design, countertops, or cabinets, or check out their new sleep studio with Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Stearns and Foster. For all of your outdoor living needs, Orsini's has Gladiator Garage Works, Traeger Grills, Barbecue Accessories, Barbecue Rubs and Sauces, and every flavor wood pellets. Visit their brand new 8,200 square foot showroom at 360 Hack Wilson Way, 304-267-7251, Orsini's.com. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. I'm Natalie Tennant. As West Virginians, we'll get through this crisis together. We've been knocked down before, and we get back up. I've been there with you, and I'll be there again working for a better future, like I did as Secretary of State. By modernizing the office, I saved you money and gave it back, lowered fees and helped businesses create jobs, and made voting easier. We need that kind of leadership again. It takes courage, vision, and cooperation. I know we can do this, West Virginia. I believe in you. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. Our dad taught us a lot about the law, but he taught us even more about life and people. He taught us to treat clients like family. At the Skinner Law Firm, the firm our father started here in the Eastern Panhandle, we still believe that. We also believe that everyone has the right to be protected from those who don't play by the rules. We believe it's about helping people. Call us at the Skinner Law Firm, where we treat you like family. Welcome back into the 2020 Virtual Berkeley County Youth Fair. Mac Crawford here with you for TV10. We're about to get into the poultry section of the evening. Woo. Calm down over there, Mikey. This portion of the program brought to you by 60th House of Delegates District Democratic Candidate Brad Knoll, who wishes all of the best this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair participants. Now back over to our host for this week. Mary Beth Blair. Well, as you can tell from that cheer coming from the background, this is Mikey's favorite uh, show. So he is, can we call you the chicken man? Uh, for the <laughs> that was my nickname. Oh, really? It was See, at fair. I knew that. I was a diehard chicken showman. Oh, my goodness. So, said, so you understand what that means, right? They're my Does favorite. anybody understand what that means? That means you are going to get so many chicken facts yes in the next half an hour so get ready get your notebooks out because i think we're in for a treat i'm excited to see what all is in the poultry show and with us is the chair of this show and that's miss cindy rains it's good to have you here with us thank you for being in the studio we're going to start by showing the awards that will be given out and announced tonight well they won't be given out tonight but that's what's 
what the uh, exhibitors are vying for. We're going to pull that up here in a second. And then afterwards, I'm going to throw it over to Cindy, and she's going to introduce who the judge of the chicken show the poultry show, you called it chickens. And I need to get back to the formal name, Mikey. Well, I only the ever showed show. chickens. I never did the other forms of poultry. Okay, okay. So. so here we go. Let's see what the exhibitors are vying for. Those are the awards that will be awarded tonight. And at, we had t talked about this earlier. They'll be given at a different time. Um, there'll be That'll be on our uh, Facebook yes. or website. We'll let you know when and where and all that good stuff. So that's how we've been kicking off each show throughout the week is to show the awards. And then immediately after that, we'll throw it to the chair of this show. Miss Cindy, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Good. Well, it's good to have you here, Thanks. and we're anxious to get into this segment of the of the show today. So uh, tell us who judged this, and um, and then we'll move into the Class 9. Our judge um, is not a local judge, okay. but he um, has a lot of experience in judging. He isn't a professional show person, which was a benefit because he appreciated who our kids are. Okay. Which was... Um, Really important because he works with kids all the time, and okay. he understood that these kids. But he's a high school teacher, okay, um, as well as being a, um, a poultry judge, okay, and chicken enthusiast. Ah. He is a chicken enthusiast and a and a student enthusiast. So he was really impressed with our kids and the fact that our kids were so little and knew so much. So he was um, he was a big help, and he was he was really awesome. And again, his name is Steve Hebner. And hopefully we can have him come back sometime because he did a great job for our kids. Well, good. So that's great to know about him. And how did you get involved? Is this have you, is this your first year as the chair of the poultry? This is my second year. Second year, okay. Um, I got involved in this because I'm a mom and I have uh -huh. four kids, and they all grew up at the Berkeley County Youth Fair. Right. Amazing kids, I'll Aww. say. Amazing. They're yeah. amazing. Just like their mom, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. So many of them showed chickens. Uh huh. Um, we have lots and lots of stories of our kids growing up with Mikey in the poultry <laughs> barn. And, and I knew Mikey when he was much younger. And um, we always joke that as Mikey grew, his chickens got smaller. smaller. <laughs> ah, they did. So what was the reasoning behind that? Because I got bigger. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Thanks, no. Mary Beth. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It was actually both. Blonde, it was. Blonde moment. I, so I, did, blonde hair. I did purposely start okay. bringing smaller and smaller breeds of chicken just because after the first year it was like, I oh my gosh. there was gosh. a really serious answer behind Oh, absolutely that, not. There isn't. I should know there's nothing serious no. with you. Okay. Nope. All right. On to our show and class nine baby chicks. I have a feeling I'm going to be getting saying all a lot. So, so when we say baby chicks, oh, so they're I'm, not actually the one day old chicks that you're thinking oh, about. Okay. Um, so but we I start off. they're still cute. You think everything's cute. But anyway, <laughs> so we start off with pullets and they are birds that are up until they are laying. Okay. So a pullet can be one day old or it can actually be up to, correct me if I'm wrong, 13 weeks. Usually we go by five months. Five months. Or laying. Okay. All right. Well, I'm ready to learn. Here we go. Cindy, are you ready? I think I'm okay. ready. I think what we have five in this class, correct? That's correct. All right, let's see what they look like. Okay, so our first exhibit is from um, Emma Lore. She's number 56, and she's with the Mount Airy Winners. So the way this works is we have the requirements were that you show one picture of three chickens together. Okay. So that you can see what what the three look like together okay. and see if they look alike and if they look like their breed and that uh -huh. kind of thing. And if their size matches as well. And then we need to see a picture from the front and then a picture from the side. So these chickens are called Black Noir, which means black chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy. So these chickens um, were owned by her. She learned okay. how to hold them and mm -hmm. how to care for them and she learned all about raising chickens. So even though, um, do you know how old this exhibitor is by chance? Who was it? Emma Lure. I know she's not a first year showman, so she's at least 11 or, no, she's older than that. I would say 12, right around that age, I'm 12 to 14. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. 12 <laughs> to 14, you that's that what I'm going because with. These kids are amazing. Yeah. Yes. Things that they actually know about their animals. So um, that was Emma. And next we have her sister, Kaylee Lure, who's exhibitor number 96. And she is also from the Mount Airy Winners, and she has Americanas. 
So fun fact about Americanas, they actually are, usually you can tell the color of that the eggs are going to be based on the earlobe. Mm -hmm. um, so if they have a white, off-white, they're going to have white eggs or pink even. Um, if they have a brown, red earlobe, they're going to lay brown eggs. Mm -hmm. um, but Americanas, all, you know, are one of those that we would call an Easter egger, meaning that they can oh. actually lay blue to green eggs. So thus, that's where we got the whole Easter, Easter egg. egger. Okay. The Fun judges' fact. comments. I'm sorry to no, know. The that's... judges' comments about this were that um, the individual that she showed was um, very attractive in its coloring and its pigmentation was good. Um, those happen to be they happen to appear like younger birds, um, and the coloring in the group might have been a little inconsistent. So that's all I have for the judges' comments for her. Okay. Okay. So our next one is Leland Shoemaker, um, number 214 from Swan Pond. And he's got light Brahmas. The okay. judges' comments again are that individual is a great looking specimen. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say very striking, yes. very different. I don't think I've ever seen one like Say that. Say for a striking fact, uh, oh. <laughs> 2004, uh, they actually did a full DNA sequence on chickens and found that it is the closest living relative of the Tyrannosaurus rex. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. I don't even need my papers at this oh point. Oh my gosh, here we go. All right. Okay. Um, exhibit number four is from Junior Sloanacre. Um, he's from Valley Star 4-H. The chicken that he's going to show is called Cluck Norris, which <laughs> I thought was great. This picture I love of the three standing in the front. Mm -hmm. I think that could be... That could be printed out. That's a beautiful that shot. That is nice. He should enter that in our photography and, contest. And just to note, this is the fourth one in the class, but the actual exhibitor number is what, 281? We called it number yes, four. Yes, I'm sorry. So, oh, no, yeah, everybody, I, that's my one little yes. correction. I try to stay on top of that because uh, when you're listing several, sometimes you do that. And for everybody people's choice. Has, yes. So I'm just doing that. Yeah, I'm Thank on you. top of that. Yeah. What a, what a pretty chicken. Yes. See, <laughs> can I say that? You can say pretty chicken. Oh. The judge happened to say it's a good looking set of hens. Aww. The confirmation and the feathering were all good and mm -hmm. the pigmentation was good. And that means that the legs um, look nice and yellow and he's got brightness around his earlobes mm -hmm. and around his eyes. Or her, actually, sorry, her eyes. And I think that, like you said, how that first one you could almost frame it. It's all about presentation at this point yes. because it's a picture of them. So if right. you want them, I mean, just what this exhibitor where they posed them and what they put as the background really helped to it does. to make you look at the things that are important and pigmentation is essential okay. in the poultry business mm -hmm. um, because you can tell a lot about what they're being fed and if they're laying or if they're in molt Thank based you. upon that pigmentation and their feather condition of their feathers okay okay and our next um, exhibit is from grayson anderson number 350 um, oh my goodness. Grayson has that. some dark brahmas. <laughs> that is an interesting looking chicken, or at least from that view. Agreed. Oh my gosh. Do most look. chickens have feathers on their feet? They do not. No. Okay. So that is breed characteristics. They're judged on that as well. I guess it's not, they're not feet. They're what? It's feet? They're is feet. it feet? Okay. <laughs> chicken feet come from somewhere, bub. <laughs> I thought there was a more official name for chicken feet. Yeah, it's chicken feet. Okay, okay. The right. funny part is, like, we're saying how much we love them. There's actually a fear of chickens. Mm. So, electorophobia. Electorophobia. <laughs> really? Matt's yep. afraid. So I, I had a dream when I was a kid that oh, I got no. my eyes pecked out ah! by a chicken. Ever since then, I don't get anywhere near. This is the closest I'll get to a chicken. Oh my so, Mary God. Beth is going to have a petting zoo on no, her front yard. No, no, and no, Matt's no. going to wake up to a yard yep. full of chickens. There you go. Yeah. It's like a kid fear that never went away from me. Yeah. Not, not a fan of chickens. He's going to be dreaming about chickens tonight. Well, that's the class. That's all five, that's correct? That's the class. Yeah. So, now we'll hear the. Are, do you have judges? Oh, I you do have read... a few judges' comments. Oh, yes. On let's this. hear those. Um, he said the individual was an impressive specimen. Um, but as a set of birds, the consistency of size varied. Okay. And some of the breed characteristics varied as a group. Okay, gotcha. 
how can they have that influence on that as a as someone who's raising them? I mean, that's not that's kind of right. the luck of the you're, draw, you're right? right. Okay. So it's a matter of what you actually okay. draw. Gotcha. Very good. Okay, so at this point, you're going to announce the placings and ribbons. Okay, so in first place, which is our grand, we have um, number 281, Junior Sloonaker. So that's the ones you like so oh, much. Oh, yes. That, yes. And as the reserve pullets, we have number 56, Emma Lore. Very nice. And the Grand Champion Award, they will be receiving $15, and that is given in memory of Junior Miller. And for the Reserve Champion, they will be receiving $10, also given in memory of Junior Miller. Well, thank you very much to those sponsors of those awards. And now we have Class 10 Laying Hens, and we have nine exhibitors. We do. Laying Hens means just what you would think, that they're laying eggs at okay. this point. And Typically, if we had a regular show, the judge could handle them and see if they're laying and, oh. and, and just evaluate the overall um, health of the mm -hmm. birds. But they, you know, that's an impossibility exactly. with pictures. So the one thing that you have to do when you're evaluating to see if hens are laying is to see how much pigment is still left in their legs and in their feet. And we call that bleaching. So that's okay. one of the things that I'm going to say a lot with the judge's comments, okay. you know, like good bleaching or lack of bleaching or something and like that. And that relates way. specifically to the feet and Legs. it is a, it right. is a characteristic that is important. Right. Do you want bleaching? What, what are we looking for? What, what is the um, indicator of a good, healthy chicken laying, chi laying hen? I'm sorry. That's okay. It's all interchangeable. Yeah. Okay, good. So <laughs> at this point, if a hen is laying, then some of the pigment is going to come out of the hen into the egg. Gotcha. So you do want bleaching. That's a good sign that that um, a hen is actually laying eggs, and that's what you want. All right, I have to ask the question. You'll probably it's probably one of your fun facts. Why do we have so many different color of eggs? I know we had the Easter eggs from mm -hmm. the one particular breed, but so farm eggs. When I get my farm eggs, which I get, usually they're all different colors, which. I usually think is just in my own mind, I'm thinking that's a sign that's good, but I don't know if it is or not. Should I want all brown? Should I want all white? Does it matter? So much like some of the terms that we use in the association world, um, color of egg has nothing to do with the internal parts okay. of it. So eggs are pretty much eggs. So whether okay. it is an eight, you know, an eight gram quail egg all the way up to a pound and a half mm -hmm. ostrich egg, they're going to be the same makeup. Okay. Um, so then what makes a good egg and a bad egg. Can you? Good egg and bad egg. So a lot of people uh, with backyard birds, that's uh -huh. what we usually refer to people who uh -huh. aren't in full production. Um, they will often sell off the farm eggs. Uh -huh. um, you can usually get them somewhere between 2 and $4 a pound. Uh -huh. Or a dozen, sorry, not a pound. Um, <laughs> we switched animals there. Um, but a lot of times what people don't realize is eggs have something called a cuticle, which is a natural bloom mm -hmm. on them okay. that keeps them clean. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you pull them fresh from a hen, they'll have spots of dirt or litter or, or something on them. And you can actually leave that on there. As mm -hmm. long as it's not like caked on or in gotcha. what you want to do, instead of washing them, you just want to brush them off with mm -hmm. a, a dry towel first. Mm -hmm. um, leave them set until you're ready to use them mm -hmm. or sell them. And then wash them with a paper towel or okay. a cloth. You never actually want to submerge them because eggs are extremely porous. Okay. So, and they, with that semi, semi permeability, um, a lot of bacteria can get in them if you wash them too soon and let them sit. Interesting. All right. But I will say you can taste the difference between farm fresh eggs. I can. What do you, what you don't think you can? Uh, so I, I can go back and forth. Okay. Um, a lot of it has to do with feed actually. Okay. Um, so you'll notice that a lot of times that farm fresh eggs have a darker yolk. Mm -hmm. um, and it has to do with the levels. Um, there's actually a big term called xanthophyll as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that is the amount of pigmentation that they actually get from the food from the sun. Okay. Um, so a well, lot of people, I know there's a lot of science I'm behind it. I'm an egg connoisseur. Absolutely. So. <laughs> I would say you should try to poach quail eggs. If you can do that, you are like the egg master. Oh, okay. I'm hearing that song in my head. I'm the egg man. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's get on to seeing our laying hens class. Okay, so for hens, like you said, we have nine exhibitors. So the first one is Avery Lark. She's number 13. She's from Southern Cross 4-H. And she's got mm, a Yamsimani. 
A yamsamani. Yes. A yamsamani. Okay. Which means black chicken. And you can see that there's an individual black chicken, and, and then there's a set as well. Um, and the judge's comments um, was that the individual is really nice. Mm -hmm. Um, as a set, there were differences in size, confirmation, and the coloration of the comb. As you can see in that group of three, the comb is red in the one. Mm -hmm. So that is a characteristic of the breed that they are breeding out to make the chicken pure black. Okay. And it is called hyperpigmentation. Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have Emma Lore. Did I get that right? Yes, Emma Lore, number 56. She's with Mount Airy 4-H, and she's got barred rocks. <laughs> and this, our judge replied that, that the pigmentation was good, um, but the size of the three hens were inconsistent. Okay, next up we have Kaylee Lohr, number 96, also with um, Mount Airy Winners. Um, she has barred rocks. And the judge said this is a good set of hens, only lacking in maturity and overall bleaching of shanks and feet. Next up is Carly LaPole, number 235. And she's got red sex links. She's from Blue Ridge 4-H. And you can see in Carly's, um, she, last year she did extremely, extremely well with her chickens. Um, and this year she's got a mixed set. Mm -hmm. um, that was the only thing bad that our judge could find uh -huh. with them. However, that's one of the requirements of this, sure. is that you have a, a set of identical birds. Um, and his comments said, nice birds. Unfortunately, it wasn't a match set. Yeah. But individually, they were all beautiful. Okay, next we have Jennifer, Jennifer Faircloth, number 276. She's from Muscleman FFA. And these are her birds. I think these are red sex links. Oh, these are production, production reds. Production reds. Production reds. And, and what that term means is there are different breed characteristics, and production reds are bred just for the production of eggs. Thank you. <laughs> the judge's comments on this is, again, a very nice set of hens. Overall size and consistency was impressive. Mm. Yeah. Jennifer loves her birds. And the way she's holding that is actually the correct way. Oh, really? Um, you hold their uh -huh. heads towards your elbow. Uh -huh. That way they don't get caught on anything as you're walking. Uh -huh. So great showmanship tips right there. There you yeah. go. <laughs> From the chicken man himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we have... Olivia Ogle, number 305 from Sulphur Springs 4-H. And she has Austrian Lorps, black Austrian Lorps. And you can see they're very much like the black chicken from mm -hmm. before, except that these are um, have a little different body. And you can see they have red combs and beautiful animals. Let's see, he said, our judge said a decent group of hens. The size of the group was inconsistent. Um, the body of the individual um, was a bit small. But overall, a nice set of birds. And she displayed them very well as well. How cute. <laughs> so that was Olivia. Next we have Grayson Anderson um, with Arden 4-H Club. And he's got Buff Warpingtons. And again, we needed to have um, a picture of three hens that were all alike. And the judge's comments was that it was kind of difficult to determine a set of three right there, but if you pick mm -hmm. the best three that you could completely see, they were they were beautiful birds, but they were all a bit young in this class. These are supposed to be mature laying hens. Okay. 
Then we have Cheyenne is next. Cheyenne Burtz, number 453 from the 4-H Horse Club. She's got Rhode Island Reds. The judge's comments were that overall they were nice birds um, and the bleaching in the shank was lacking. Okay, and our last exhibit in this group is from Justine Burtz. And Justine is from the 4-H Horse Club. And Justine had sapphire gems, which is a very unique looking bird in this class. The judge said, just simply based on some of the pictures, it was difficult to determine the maturity of these birds. And the plumage was somewhat inconsistent with coloring, which is so hard to do in some, sure. in some particular breeds. Okay, and that wraps it up for that class. Excellent. So now we get to hear how they did, hear their placings. Are you, do they also receive ribbons as well? So placings and ribbons and who takes home the big prize? Right. So our grand champion, Lane Hen, is Jennifer Faircloth, number 276. And for reserve, we have um, Kaylee Lohr. Um, let me see if I can find Kaylee's number. 96. Thank you. It is 96. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Okay. And for the Grand Champion Award, they'll be receiving $15 given in memory of Robert, Robert Withrow, excuse me. And the Reserve Champion will be receiving $10 also given in memory of Robert Withrow. All right. So does that wrap up our Class 10 Laying Hens? It does. Okay, so we're going to head into a quick break and come back with class 11, 13, and four, 13, right? Two more classes we're going to introduce you to and some other big awards, and that will complete our poultry show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with you in just a few minutes. The level of care that I got at WVU Medicine was top notch. If you're not progressing in healthcare, you're falling behind. It's really an integration, looking at a clinical care network, looking at the good people who can help push the envelope and raise the bar for delivering quality healthcare product. To have my life back is absolutely a blessing. I am beyond thankful for WVU Medicine. I absolutely 100% have my life back. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. They're my closest friends. We've been through a lot together. Seeing our kids off to college, Kelly losing her mom, my 50th birthday, I trust them with so much. So when it came to my finances, I trusted Kelly's referral to her Ameriprise advisor. Beth gives me the comprehensive advice that helps me feel confident my financial future is secure. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. Ameriprise Financial. It's one of the toughest times you'll ever face when someone close to you passes away. It's a swirl of papers to sign and arrangements to be made, all while you're dealing with grief. At Brown Funeral Home, we encourage you to pre-plan. Pre-planning not only makes things easier for you, it protects you from rising costs. At Brown Funeral Home, our families are precious to us, and so are yours. Brown Funeral Home, in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. Floodwaters can spread E. coli bacteria. Here's Bill Kearns from the Berkeley County Health Department about what to do if your well is tested positive. If it's just a one-time contamination, you can superchlorinate your well, which we have instructions at the health department they could call and talk to us. You're providing uh, an excessive amount of bleach down the well. Then you do a runoff to get that out of the system, to get the bleach through your lines, get any contamination out of there. You do a runoff of so long, and then you can have it tested again. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg. Call 304-263-5131. 
The historic McFarland House Inn and Restaurant is excited to introduce a fresh new summer menu and an all-new curbside menu. There are so many incredible new dishes to explore and enjoy from Chef Walden and some fan favorites that will remain by popular demand. Check out the new menus on our website at historicmcfarlandhouse.com or our Facebook page. You can dine inside our charming historic home or outside in our beautiful garden. Call 304-263-1890 today to reserve your table or to place a curbside order to go. Welcome back into the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. Matt Crawford here with you for TV10. This portion of the program brought to you by 60th House of Delegates District Democratic candidate Brad Knoll, who wishes all the best to this year's Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair participants. Back over to the hosts as we continue the poultry section of the evening. Mary Beth Blair. Once again, learning so much about a new animal breed here tonight with our poultry show. We have our get- species. Did I say breed, what I said? Not breed. A breed. Sorry. Okay. Thanks for correcting me. <sighs> All right. Mary Beth, we were doing so well. But we, we changed gears. We did. So you didn't I forgive you. Were, there were new new words. But I'm, I'm quick to forgive. So <laughs> we just got through baby chicks laying hens. And now we're going to do turkeys and exhibition birds. And when we get done announcing all of those placings, we're going to announce a grand champion, reserve champion. And we're also going to go back and tell the placing or the ribbons for all of the poultry um, exhibitors. So if you're wondering if, you're, if your bird hasn't yet, if, if we've already done your class and you didn't know what ribbon you got, hold on. We're, we're going to say those all at the end of this show all together. So stick with us and we're going to head into, Cindy is going to introduce us to class 11 turkeys. So turkeys and fancy fowl are going to go under the umbrella of fancy exhibition. Fancy fowl. I like that. <laughs> so we're going to announce our, our turkey our, our turkey exhibit uh-huh. and then our fancy fowl exhibits, and then we'll okay. get a grand and reserve out of those two okay. combined classes. Got it. Okay. So the first one we have is from Tyler Stevens from Swan Pond 4-H. He's number 482, and he has royal palm turkeys. Oh, look at that. So these are the only ones that aren't chickens. And I have a really good turkey fact. Turkey fact, I do. Back in 1784, Benjamin Franklin wrote a letter to his daughter um, saying that he disapproved of having the bald eagle as the national symbol. Um, And actually on the fifth, it took up to the fifth attempt to approve the national seal with the eagle. Um, And he claims that the drawing that had been produced looked like a turkey anyway, and that such a (laughs) bird would actually be preferable to the eagle. So which would you rather have, the turkey or the eagle? You're asking the chicken. I would. Again? So technically, <laughs> I would rather have um, Seabright little. They're little, little tiny chicken. We don't have one in this uh-huh. year's show, but Seabrights literally could like sit in my hand. Oh. That would be my favorite. That would be a great symbol for <laughs> I our think great it would. country. It would. <laughs> a little tiny chicken. I mean, it's big in its own world. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> No, I'm really a fan of those eagles. I like the but eagle, too. But I'm just saying, if I get to pick. <laughs> okay, okay. Mikey's world, Mikey's rules, you know. Yes, exactly. Okay. So back to the turkeys, it says um, from, our, from our poultry judge, he said they're stout-looking hens, and they're a very even set of birds, and he liked them a lot. Oh, good. So, Great job. So our next class is our um, fancy fowl, and we have two exhibits in this class. First we have Briley Anderson um, from Valley Star. That's number 466. She's showing silkies. Um, the only um, things that I have that t- t- I could say here is that they're a very nice looking set and the individual was very nice looking as well. Um, the only negative was that he was unable to tell the difference um, and the size based on the pictures, but that they were a very nice looking set of birds. And next we have Bryant Anderson, also from Valley Star 4-H. He's number 469, and he has Saramas. Saramas. They're my, like, second second favorite. favorite. Second favorite? Seabrights and Saramas. Hmm. He only had nice, the judge only had nice things to say, which was very nice set of birds. 
so looking at our turkeys and our um, saramas and our silkies, placing first with the grand and other fowl is Bryant Anderson with his saramas. And the reserve champion was Tyler Stevens with his turkeys. Congratulations. Great job. And the grand champion will be receiving $15 given in memory of Barbara Withrow. And the reserve champion will be receiving $10 also given in memory of Barbara Withrow. Very good. Thank you for that. Now, do we want to go back now? Is this... I would like to. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back. So for those of you watching, we're going to go back and just to the beginning of the poultry show and, and we are going to... Um, say all of the exhibitors, numbers, names, and what ribbon they received. Here we go. Thank you. So placing first in the pullet class, again, was Junior Sloanaker. He's number 281. Um, placing second, he also got a blue ribbon as well as his grand champion ribbon. Um, placing second in the class was Emma Lohr. She's number 56 with a blue ribbon. Placing third was Grayson Anderson with a red ribbon. Placing fourth was Leland Shoemaker um, with a red ribbon. And placing fifth was Kaylee Lohr with a white ribbon. And that was class nine baby chicks, right? The pullets. <coughs> the pullets, yeah. okay. Okay, moving on to the hens. Um, placing first in that class um, was Jennifer Faircloth, number 276. She got um, the grand champion laying hens as well as a blue ribbon. Placing second, we have Kaylee Lohr. Mm -hmm. um, she's number 96 with a blue ribbon. Placing third in the class with a blue ribbon as well as Emma Lohr. She's number 56. Fourth in the class, Cheyenne Burtz with a blue ribbon. Placing fifth in the class is number 305, Olivia Ogle, also with a blue ribbon. Sixth in the class is Carly Lapole with a red. She's number 235. Placing seventh in the class with a red ribbon is Avery Lark, number 13. Eighth in the class was Grayson Anderson, um, number 350 with a white ribbon. And placing ninth in the class is Justine Burtz, um, number 460 with a white ribbon. Okay. Congratulations to all of them. And did you, you, did you already give us our turkey and exhibition bird ribbons, or do we want to say I didn't. Now? No, okay. I would like to do those. Okay, great. So we have Tyler Stevens with us, turkeys. Um, he got first place in his class with uh -huh. a blue ribbon. Good. And then we have brother and sister, um, Briley and Bryant. In their classes, we got Bryant in first place. Um, and then he had a blue ribbon as well as the grand champion, Other Fowl. And then Briley got a red ribbon. Very good. Well, there you have it. Our 2020 poultry show is complete. Congratulations to all of the exhibitors. And thank you so much for being here. We're almost done. Oh, we're almost done. We have done. the best of show. And then we're how, done. How did I miss that? Best of show. Okay. So well, it doesn't best, say that. Oh, I'm there sorry. it is. For I best see. of show, we take the grand from each of the three classes. Okay. Got it. And then we determine the best of show. And to determine the reserve, we're going to pull up the reserve of that class and yes. then compare the rest. Okay. okay. Everybody, I'm sorry at home. I, I, it's getting late. I'm getting tired. <laughs> and I missed the most important award in, this, in the category. I'm so no sorry. No excuses, Mary Beth. We need you sharp at okay. all times of the night. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Drum roll, Mikey. I was like, we have one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> your, your wish is my command. <laughs> so our grand champion, which we call um, the best of show, mm -hmm. that's the overall winner, goes to Jennifer Faircloth, number 276, with her laying hens. Oh, great job. She'll be receiving $25 from the Marlowe Rotan, and also a best of show banner from Jeff and Billy Joe Ryman and family. 
Very good. So now we're going to take, um, to determine the reserve, we need to take the grand champion of the pullets and the reserve champion of the hens and the grand champion of the other fowl. Right. And so the reserve best of show goes to Junior Sloanacre, number 281. He has his pullets with that picture that we loved. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. There it is. And he will be receiving $10 from Brandon Campbell and also a banner from the Knott family at Shepherdstown Pharmacy. Very good. Thank you to all of the sponsors of the awards. Now we are complete. Now, now, now we, we are, are complete. Congratulations to those last two winners, the Grand Overall and Grand Overall Reserve. Great job. And that, folks, is the 2020 Poultry Show in a wrap. So we're going to go to a break and come back and finish out the night with indoor exhibits. And, um, yeah, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Section 16 you, coming up of those indoor exhibits. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. This portion of the show brought to you by the Berkeley Morgan County Health Department. Stop by and see them at 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg. Or phone them at 304-263-5131. Back after this break with more from the Berkeley County Youth Fair. If you need to speak with a lawyer about an insurance claim or motor vehicle wreck, at Mansion Ferretti we rely on 100 years of combined personal injury and trial experience to win your case. There is no charge for meeting with us, and there is no fee unless we win. Mansion Ferretti excels because we are local, experienced in our courts, and always working hard to develop the personal relationship with clients that makes a difference. Call us at 304-264-8505 or go to wvjusticelawyers.com. At Mansion Ferretti, it's about seeking justice for you. Is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rear view mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Orsini's not just an appliance store anymore. They're your one-stop resource for all home needs, whether it's custom kitchen design, countertops, or cabinets, or check out their new sleep studio with Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Stearns and Foster. For all of your outdoor living needs, Orsini's has Gladiator Garage Works, Traeger Grills, Barbecue Accessories, Barbecue Rubs and Sauces, and every flavor wood pellets. Visit their brand new 8,200 square foot showroom at 360 Hack Wilson Way, 304-267-7251, Orsini's.com. Congratulations to the participants in the Berkeley County Youth Fair. What you are doing now is so important. You are our future. As the chair of the West Virginia State Senate Education Committee, I am working to ensure that you have the opportunity to be the best you can be. I am rooting for you. Paid for by Rucker for WV, Lynn Statton, Treasurer. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. WV Medicine joins with the community in celebrating the hard work and dedication of all the youth in our area who will be a part of the first ever Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. WV Medicine applauds the Berkeley County Youth Fair Board for making this virtual fair possible and doing their part to protect the health and safety of our community by not having a traditional fair at the fairgrounds this year in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. WV Medicine is proud to be a blue ribbon sponsor of this year's Berkeley County Youth Fair. Welcome back in to the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. We have one section that we're going to get in 
before we wrap up the Wednesday night edition of the Youth Fair. So, Mary Beth, we're going to close it out with one more indoor one exhibit. One more indoor exhibit, section, uh, I believe, 19. And uh, on the website or Facebook, somewhere along, somewhere out there in technology land, someone asked about the clover buds. And that's the section we're going to do right now. So we didn't get to them last night, but we have time to share with you the clover bud project. So I hope whoever that was, you're watching, because here we go. Mikey? I do. I do have some Clever Bud projects for you. Yay. So the first one that may be loading up. Well, if we're loading them up. What? I'm good to go. Oh, oh you are. Okay. Right. Well, I was going to say, tell us what the Clever Bud is. As long as it's number 234, I'm ready to go. And tell it us is. what the Clever Buds are So for those of us who don't know. Clever Bud is like a junior 4-H member. Okay. So they are age 5 to 8, and they take the general Clever Bud project. Um so really what they do is they submit a picture of them, much like the This is 4-H project. Uh -huh. um, but what they do is during meetings, they have kind of a separate second meeting, secondary meeting, and they do kind of arts and crafts and gotcha. different things to kind of build them up to when they're ready to participate in a full-fledged 4-H meeting. So it's just something to help get them ready. Yes. All right. To get them ready for a regular 4-H. And meeting. they all receive a green ribbon? Yes. Okay. So they actually receive, we actually have special Clever Bud ribbons that they'll receive. Oh, that's great. So really tonight is just about showcasing yes. their work. Okay. Absolutely. Let's showcasing see. their picture. So first should be number 234, Cameron Grove. And again, we ask for some information on each of them. And a lot of these tend to be younger siblings of our participants. Next up is number 278, Miss Josie Robertson. Next up is 326, Mr. Titus Flint. Did you already say what the theme of what like their picture is in there? What are they so supposed to choose? So there's not a theme for this. Okay. This is kind of their funnest. Uh, funnest not a word, but their <laughs> most fun funnest. thing that they're doing. So. You can say words that don't. You know, I do it, so you can make up your own words, Mikey. I don't want to read it on the media. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, know what I'm looking at in the picture. Like, what are they showing me? Lots of different things. Okay. Lots of different things. Next up is 406. Rella Emmerich. Actually, Gabriella Emmerich. Next is 467, Mr. Micah Carr. Number 472, Blair Roberts. Number 475, Benjamin Bentz. I finally get it. I'm like getting really close up to the screen now, Mikey, and I can see it's a, what I'm reading it now. It's, yes, this they is really all neat. put on some of their favorite things to do. Okay. Number 476, Ms. Brentley Fields. I'm going to say her, Casey Fields, that is her daughter, the one that dropped off some of the cinnamon rolls. Oh, okay. Or the cinnamon buns, I should say. 477, Brian Van Dyne. Number 478, Carter Roberts. <laughs> and we should have one more entry, Autumn Thomas. And those are the Clever Buds that submitted posters this year. Wow, great job to everyone. Absolutely. Super, super duper. Good job, Clever Buds. Yeah. Well, so is that the, that's the only one we can we really have time to do because what we have left in indoor exhibits are large categories. So we have 15, 17, and then we have like 6 and 7 or we I think 17. We today. did 17. Okay. So All three parts. Well, we have What do we have left? Section 6 left to do. Okay. We have section 7. Those are both planned for Thursday. Okay. On Friday we have section 8 that is planned. And then at some point throughout the rest of the week, we do have what I believe is the baking in section 15. Yep. Right. And, a th and, and also Friday, as we have been saying um, off and on, is the style show 
and small pet show on Friday as well. Yes. And yeah, so tomorrow, are we? Uh, do you want to go to a break and then close? We have one or more break wanna... to get in. Okay. Well, when we come back, we'll just close out tonight's show, live virtual show tonight, and just give you a heads up for what's coming up in the next day. All things Berkeley County Youth Fair. Let's go to a break. One more break before we close out the evening. Hi, this is Eric from Hagerstown Ford. I keep telling you that Hagerstown Ford has completely changed the car buying experience forever. And with a return policy easier than Walmart, Hagerstown Ford has a goal to deliver 350 cars and trucks per month. And when I say deliver, I mean deliver to you, where you are, just like Amazon does. And if you don't want it, return it. No questions asked. The only way Hagerstown Ford can accomplish this extremely aggressive goal is to make the car buying process fast and easy. We simply refuse to play the dumb back and forth games that most dealerships want to play. There's absolutely no reason for you to waste your precious time at a car dealership. I assure you, there is no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. that can beat our price. There's no dealership that will allow you to return your new car if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely has the best price. And we'll bring the car to you. And if you don't want it, return it. Period. No questions asked. There's no reason to buy anywhere else. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience and get your new ride delivered to you. Contact dealer for details. In our present crisis, we need inspired problem solvers. Not the kind of politics we always get from the politicians who take us for granted. Daniel Bennett is running for delegate because he believes that the problems we face will be solved by the hands, the hearts, and the hard work of West Virginians. You know that there's no more hardworking an individual that would work for you as your member um, in your district for West Virginia. I'm Daniel Bennett, and I'm running for a delegate to give back, pay it forward, and to be your voice in Charleston. Let's talk trash, because when it comes to trash, you have options. Panhandle Dumpsters is a local family-owned garbage hauling company serving both residential and commercial customers with weekly trash pickup, dumpster service, yard waste pickup, and ball pickups, too. Panhandle Dumpsters will give you a free trash can and provide curbside service for just $23 a month. Panhandle Dumpsters features a fleet of quieter, eco-friendly garbage trucks, thereby reducing the noise usually associated with pickup. Switch now and save up to 30%. Call 833-DUMP-STR, panhandledumpsters.com. Boyd Veterinary Service in Jaredstown is dedicated to the health and wellness of your herd, offering health and reproductive services and now scheduling flushes and donor housing for fall 2020 at our new donor facility in Jaredstown. Dr. John Boyd wants to thank all exhibitors for participating in the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair and wishes each one success with their projects. That's Boyd Veterinary Service, phone 304-279-0217. Three cheers for free delivery from South Berkeley Pharmacy to your front door. South Berkeley Pharmacy, home health care specialists, is more than just a pharmacy. We have the best gift shop in town, and nobody beats our service. South Berkeley Pharmacy, home health care specialists, southberkeleypharmacy.com. I'm Natalie Tennant. As West Virginians, we'll get through this crisis together. We've been knocked down before, and we get back up. I've been there with you, and I'll be there again working for a better future, like I did as Secretary of State. By modernizing the office, I saved you money and gave it back, lowered fees and helped businesses create jobs, and made voting easier. We need that kind of leadership again. It takes courage, vision, and cooperation. I know we can do this, West Virginia. I believe in you. Welcome back in as we close out Wednesday of the Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair. It is hard to believe four, four days nights. have gone. Four days, four day nights, afternoons, evenings yeah. come and gone. I know. And we are through Wednesday. And again, a special thanks. We've been going in and out of every break thanking sponsors. You've seen the commercials that have been playing through the Youth Fair, right. through uh, people helping us as the station help yes. put this on. But big thanks to not only everybody that's helped put this on here at the station, with the youth fair dawn and everybody right. that has made this possible and our sponsors we could not have done any of this 
without the help of everybody else. And I know in the first three days, we'll have to look at the numbers tomorrow. Yeah. We have not, on YouTube, again, we can't tell TV 10 numbers, uh -huh. but on YouTube, we have not been shy of 1,300 people That's any night. That's phenomenal. That is so cool. And upwards of 3,000 from night one. That is, that is incredible. Thank you guys for tuning in and sticking with us every night and um, hanging out, posting your pictures of your watch parties, sending in questions, sing, sending in fun facts when Mikey didn't have any. And um, we are just enjoying every minute that we've had with you guys this week and bringing you a Youth Fair Week experience. And we still have a little bit more to go before we finish up the week. As you all know, the livestock auction is open and you can bid on the 180 plus animals that are up and on there again go to the, go to the berkeleycountyyouthfair.org website and scroll down you'll see a red button that says uh, livestock auction it's very simple it'll take you right to that site and you can bid or if you need to register you can register to become a buyer and please go check that out and hey if nothing else just go and look at the site and see everyone who is in that market auction that livestock auction congratulations to all of the beef show and poultry show winners tonight and just all of the exhibitors tonight amazing amazing entries your animals were just absolutely incredible to watch it was it was just so so educational to learn about each different animal breed species all those words that i interchanged when i wasn't supposed to but you know matt we know what we're talking about but we don't we're, know what we're, we're rookies. talking about yes we are rookies but we are we are um yeah, we're, we're learning a lot. We're getting we there. Yes. And we're, I guess we're, they're going to have a quiz for us at the end of the week. I'm really nervous about that. But I want to uh, close out tonight's show uh, just thanking you again for tuning in and being so patient with us and sending in corrections when we make a blunder or miss something. We appreciate that, actually, and keeping us on our toes. And we appreciate your encouragement as well. And I just wanted to also remind you, people's choice for tonight's beef show, please, you have have to have all your award or all of your voting in by 11:59 tonight and um, then we will let you know who those winners were or who they are tomorrow either during the live I don't know if I'll know it that soon but probably tomorrow evening during the live not during the morning radio segment everything's kind of blending together at this point tomorrow I'm excited to see the horse show yes and the dairy show which is not cheese and milk <laughs> That's an inside joke tonight when I asked Mikey what all that entailed. That's what he was giving me a hard time about. But legitimately, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there in the community who have the same questions. If they've never been to a show before, they don't know. And so this is all about learning what the Berkeley County Youth Fair is all about this week. And again, honoring all of the youth, giving them an opportunity to show their hard work and dedication that they've put in this past year um, in 2020. When we couldn't have the fair in person, we are bringing it all to you in the first and hopefully only virtual fair. That's like our unofficial slogan. We need a t-shirt, Matt. And looking at the auctions right now. Oh yes, give I us an update. I don't have a overall number. Uh -huh. I'm sure somebody's crunching these back at the uh, back in the conference room, uh -huh. but they, the majority at least have a bid on them. There's oh, bids good. on almost every um, every steer in the cattle auction. Uh -huh. There's a lot of bids on the hogs. I mean, there, there's people are, and this is just night one. It's only been it's been open for less than three hours. Exactly. So to see the amount of bids that are already on is very encouraging. Encouraging. For the youth. Yes. Yes incredible so well thank you for those who've already gone and done that and if you haven't and you want to check it out again go to the website berkeleycountyyouthfair.org and that's really all we have for you tonight again thanks to the sponsors thanks to mike hornby for who's the owner of the station here and just uh being so gracious with this studio's time i mean pretty much everything has been youth yep. fair this week and what a dedication that was to our community um, turning the studios over to the berkeley county youth fair organization so it's been a great night. Night four's in the books, I guess, as they say. It has been fantastic. For Mary Beth Blair, I am Matt Crawford signing Bye, off guys. for Wednesday at the Youth Fair. Same time tomorrow, 4 o'clock, right back here. This has been today's coverage of the 2020 Berkeley County Virtual Youth Fair on TV10.
Glee County Youth Fair Board would like to thank the following sponsors of this year's Youth Fair. Green Level sponsors Gore's Custom Slaughter and Processing Incorporated and the Kingdom Animal Hospital. White Level sponsors Jerry Williams State Farm Insurance, River Riders Incorporated, Jeff and Shelley Shoppert, Eastern Panhandle Conservation District, Dunham's Mobile Home Park, Orr's Farm Market, and Winchester Equipment. And at the Red Level, John T. Gibson, DDSP LLC, Pittman Orthodontics, South Berkeley Pharmacy, Shepherdstown Pharmacy, and 